Peace, peace. Turn it one time. Hey, y'all hear me out. Let me know how my mic sounds. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, so I'm I'm using a new mic. Uh, I had a new audio interface. I got the uh, the Rodecaster Pro Two, and it' supposed to have these uh, Revolution preamps in them. You know, uh, so you don't need like a cloud or like a booster. But I'm going to be honest, I haven't played around with none of it. I just took everything out of the box, even this mic, literally. I don't even have a mic on the stand right now. I just took everything out the box just to do a quick show. I wouldn't, um, I wanted to wait until I completed the, the studio. So like today... Got to get the floor done. Um, Got to get the floor done. Organized the uh, the other stuff. Once I get the floor done, the LED lights around it. Um, get the paint up in the background. Uh, then I can move the throne, my little throne over, whatever, and uh, and then I can set up the tables. I, I got the. Um, the iMac 24, I still haven't even took that out the box. So between the microphone, the Rodecaster uh, Pro 2, I mean, all of it, it just been sitting in the box. So um, I said, man, I'm going to do a quick live. So I'm literally holding the microphone like I'm standing on stage. And I'm going through my old audio interface which is the M audio. And I probably only had that since what the beginning of the year, maybe like January, February. So I was using the Scarlet before then. Um, yeah, I was using the Scarlet before then. Then I, I switched over to M audio. Um, the, but um, the, the roadcaster, you know, this is what everybody using. Even my microphone. I, I didn't switch my microphone. So before then, I was using, which is a good microphone, uh, the RE320. The RE320 um, uh, DJ Academics, uh, Dane Calloway. Um, it's a few people um, use those. But I, I went ahead and got the sure. I got the sure microphone, the, the big one, the uh, SM7B. So we're trying to step our game up, you know, um, as far as production. Taylor say, uh, what's your cash app? Uh, what you, where you from, Nigeria, nigga? What you, what you trying to? No, nah, I'm fucking with you. Cash up on the screen. Shout out to everybody. My bad. I hadn't been. Um, she said, you sound clear. Oh, okay. Um um well that's a good thing um that boy from florida said happy 420 taylor out of south carolina what part of south carolina are you from kill 314 in the door you ain't pregnant this morning huh oh the fucking with unscramble mind ain't none of y'all wait uh, y'all pop y'all playing bees this morning then y'all yeah, 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 yeah. That, that plan B ought to be to dissolve. What time it is? Noon? If you got up at nine, they say you got to put something on your stomach before you pop them, though. Yeah, you don't want to be feeling sick. You got to put something. Y'all was over there with unscrambled mind last night. Uh, y'all uh, get a little bacon eggs on your stomach and uh, then pop your plan B. Okay, okay, T. James, I see you. What's up with it, AC? Though, cigar, uh, superior in the building. Yeah, man, I'm I'm so confused over here, bro. Especially with this this Rodecaster Pro Two. I don't know what to do. I mean, it look it look good. It got all the lights on it, and 
you know, and, and it's it was expensive. Damn near thousand dollars. Uh, the microphone was was uh four and some change. So that was just for them too. Uh, the computer was fourteen hundred. The chair was a thousand ball. The the picture was five hundred. Uh, what else we got, man? I got man, I got so much. It's gonna be live though, man. Uh, I can't wait. Um, by next week we'll be done, and I want to go ahead on and knock out the first lecture. You know what I'm saying? In the studio, we're gonna be cammed up. By then, so. I got a TV. I ought to show it to y'all, right? I had got a fire stick TV. Now I don't watch TV. <laughs> but I thought the fire stick TV was was similar like to the fire stick remote. You know, you hook it up and you get to watch all the movies. When I was in Dubai, <laughs> when I was in Dubai, bro, the the, the only channels they had was like CNN that, that you could watch, right? And all they was talking about was how many people was dying. So you got to remember, I didn't experience uh, COVID in the States. I don't know what happened here. I don't, I can't even fathom it, right? So I'm on the other side of the world. And I'm just watching CNN. And, I, and it was getting depressing. Every time I turn it on, 100 niggas then died. And I'm like, man, listen. Um, so... You know, I had my partner Yak. I tried to get her to send me one. She was in the woodlands when the target couldn't find them, right? It was like he got an autumn and all this here. So I'm trying to get somebody from the States to send me uh, uh um a fire stick. So I end up going to um I think it's Carrefour and um in Emirates Mall. And to me, it was like a Walmart. You know what I'm saying? It was similar to Walmart downstairs. Well, no, you gotta go. You do go up the stairs. Hmm. Well, you do. You it depends if you're coming out of the uh, the car parking garage, you would take a Escalade and then you come out on the next floor right there. Uh, yeah. So I mean, they uh they have a fire stick, and they saved me. You know, I was able to watch movies or whatever. So I see the fire. They got a fire stick TV now. So okay, okay. And so uh, I get the TV. It wasn't that large anyway, like a 60 inch. So it's 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 mounted on the other side of the wall. So it's too far from me if I'm going to be on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a projector screen, maybe like an 80 foot, 80 foot projector screen, you know, 4K, 5K, whatever the fuck, the best one. And we're gonna do the lecture live. You know, I can hook it up and um put the projector on there, or whatever. And then I can stand up or I sit down or whatever. I got I bought me a new work chair. The other motherfucker, yeah, I used to hear it squeak doing the live. Yeah, I turn. <laughs> Don't let me twist and turn. That motherfucker get the squeaking. Um, yeah, I got got me a new work chair and everything, man. But uh, I want to get this um projector set. And how that set up. I want to be ready to go by Sunday, not not tomorrow, to my next Sunday. For as the lecture, for as the lecture, just got to knock out all of this, bro. Just today should be the last day of me working on this studio. I mean, the lights, everything should be up, but it looked nice though. Um, and I hope y'all like it because I. I done ran up them racks with this motherfucker. I, I done spent a lot of money. So I hope y'all like it. And also, um, the lecture coming up. I do want to say, man, next month, we probably, uh, not next month, June. We're going to cancel the June 10th joint. Hey, why my likes ain't up? I know we've been in here 15 minutes, bro. The lights, the lights are looking crazy. Ain't nobody shared the video out. Um, I want I do want to remind y'all when ain't nobody live. When nobody live, well, I don't know who all y'all watch, so but no, ain't, ain't too many people live, you know what I'm saying? I I know y'all was over there boy before I came in here now. I know y'all was sitting there looking and, and, and surfing 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit my like button. Hit my like button, man. Um, who was that? Two uh groove, it's a peace and love, Chief. He says 420 got mine rolled up. <laughs> See, nigga, I thought you was a church boy. Yeah, I thought you were grandma with I thought you were grandma's favorite grandbaby. Yeah, I thought you was the one that, that snitched on all your big cousins when they when they was fucking up and you was the one you just stayed in the house and sat there and watched TV with grandma. Yeah, I thought you was the yeah, you tricked me. Yeah, you tricked me over there smoking weed and shit. Uh you say baby don't want to uh let you baby don't want to let you come, man, cause uh until you get a degree. Yeah, you came in here and laid it on me, boy. Uh went country boy on me. And I fell for it. Yep. And you over there smoking trees on 420 today, huh? You over now, now you are, what else? What other activities are you into? Oh, uh, yeah, I thought you was a good, wholesome church boy, sung in the choir, and uh uh yeah, everywhere granny go, you go. You ain't cursed, then you curse word, manners, and you over the smoking tree. What other uh uh activities you got going on? You tricked the shit out of me. Yeah, I'm gonna be the first one to say you tricked me, nigga. <laughs> yeah, that nigga guy, he got down on me, man. That nigga talking about I'm rolling mine up now, nigga. That was bad. Worst thing you could have told me yesterday. Um, some, man, yesterday nigga hit my car. <laughs> he hit my car, bro. I'm sitting there. I couldn't believe it, right? One thing about me, bro, I, I I put emphasis on safe driving. I got a CDL, bro. I'm a professional driver. I'm a I'm a professional. I don't do accidents and all that, bro. Think about it. I will park. I got a big body, so uh, I'm gonna take over two 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 parking spots. Don't park on the side of me, bro. Yeah, um, so I'm sitting there, boom, the truck rock. I said, what the? I turn around, little motherfucker try to get away. So I jump out. <laughs> they try to get away. I jump out. Hey, hold on. So I couldn't get my door all the way open. I'm like, hey, say, say, uh, it was a little dude jumped out of the back. He was like, oh, man. And I was like, hold on, don't go nowhere, because I just needed him. If they would have drove out nine times ten in this generation, they probably would have left their homeboy, though. But, um, you know, once he got out, like, to check it out, I had him. It's like, all right, I got one of them, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I said, hey, tell the homie back up, because he's still pressed up against my shit. I'm like, hey, tell him to back up, but look. So uh they tin it up though, you can't even see it now. And um and I said, hey, uh, when he let the window down, I noticed it was a youngster, so my whole energy changed. I was like, hey, how old you is the homie? He's like, I'm 16. I was like, uh, what school you go to? And they was telling me the school they went to or whatever. He was like, I play uh DB. He was like, I play DB for such and such. He was like, yeah, I'm getting off of this. My scene. I'm like, um, long story short, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they Fender was hanging off or whatever. So I helped him put it on. I say, what y'all got going on? Like, man, I was running to the store for my mama coming to get something for my mama. So, um, I was like, man, y'all ain't doing nothing Friday, man. It's Friday, y'all ain't y'all ain't stepping out. He was like, shit, my chips fucked up right now, you know. Oh, uh, everybody was talking about going out to the movies though, so they went and handled their business, and I went and handled mine, and we kind of came out at the same time. So that's the little clip y'all seen when I recorded. I'm like, say they raise a little, because they tried to offer me some weed, right? 
the homie was like, man, that ain't gay. He was like, you smoke. And, uh, I can't take no weed from you, youngster. Uh, but um, I ended up giving them niggas some cash. And a nigga in the back seat gave him some cash. Um, and I was just like, man, y'all get all of that as a part of here, man. <laughs> you know, uh, it would have been anybody else. They probably would have called a lot. The nigga probably had a burn in the car. Ain't no telling, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm just like, hey, man, because when they did it, it was so loud. Boom. Everybody looking. So now people coming outside the uh, strip miles and they looking for it be a, a big scene. You know, I start acting like I knew him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, shout out to them little youngsters, though, man. Uh he said, my OGs, they didn't want me getting in the game. My daddy, OG, I smoked while doing homework, drawing and driving. My family just kept me out of it. Now, that's all good. Period. He said, that, that clip should have went viral. Uh, I had some guy come on there. Uh, he was like, nigga hit my car out and you gave him cash. I would have never gave him a wire of cash. I would have just paid for what I, that's why, that's exactly why I said they lucky it was me and it wasn't nobody else because everybody don't think like that. Um, Everybody don't, you know, and then they'll look at you and judge you off the top. You know what I'm saying? They weren't no bad kids. You feel me? Even if they were riding around and thugging and, you know, moving too fast, you know, it'd be lessons in life, bro. You got to slow down. Like I told him, hey, homie, you got to stay focused. You got to stay focused, bro. Be alert. You know what I mean? Um, I gave him some game off the camera, but um, it went from, a, oh, man, is this nigga tripping? And then, you know, then I step out the car. They don't know who in the car. When I got out, it's me. You know, and I'm thugging. And they looking like, it's, by, it's probably about to be a problem. And now how square business. Nigga, I jumped out that whole You know, if nigga hit your car, first thing you doing, you jumping out of you tripping. Come on, man. Nigga hit your car, man. You, you jump. You, the first thing is, oh, I know. I know. Motherfucking well. Nah, you you tripping. Understandable. But when I got out and it was it was, you know. Nah, man. Um man, don't even worry about it, bro. I'm gonna take care of it. And um in here, man. Um and you know, like the dude like what is in there? Well damn homie they had you know the school. They had an event, you know, everybody pulling up, everybody at school, somebody pulling up to the joint. And, you know, they ain't in no position to go. They ain't got no money, so you don't want them to go do nothing crazy. You feel me? Uh, man, I'm blessed enough to, you know, you know uh, get them little niggas $50 a piece, bro. That ain't shit. It was three of them. Them $50 a piece, bro. Man, y'all go to the movies, bro. Go up there and chill. They, you know, so it, you know, ain't no telling what they would have did. Or you have a person in their position and they feeling like they missing out and all that. Nah, man, no, uh, man, y'all. If I could have done more, that's just what I had on me, just on some quick type of here, nigga. Here, take your little ass home, you know. Yeah. Um. Nah, man, I I been there, bro. I I. I remember I was young. I wanted to go to Astor World and and my T Jones. I ain't, you know, man, I ain't got money for that shit. And it's not important to her, but you know, everybody gonna be there today. And I want to be there. I don't want to. I've I been there, bro. You know what I'm saying? So it's love. But um <laughs> them little niggas was like, hey, what's your Instagram? I said, I ain't got no social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they was like, what's your, I ain't got social media, little homie. <laughs> Take your little ass home, though. <laughs> yeah, 
look, it was me. It wouldn't. It would have been anybody else, even a nigga. They would have been talking about calling insurance and getting the law, police report, bro. Uh, nah, man, hell nah, man. Y'all hear him get up out of here and just in case somebody called the laws. Y'all, I'll take care of you from here, man. Real talk. Um, salute, OG. I'm born here. Say, get the likes up, family. Come on, man. The fact that people got to tell you to get the likes up, bro. That's some cold game right there on top of who live? Who you gonna go watch? What you gonna go watch? I'm gonna give a fuck who was live. The show still ain't gonna be better than this show. My question is who you gonna watch? You know what you gonna do? Go outside. Oh, uh, it is 420 though. Let me get my gas fired up. I'm 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 frustrated, man. I do not know how to work my Procaster Pro 2. I'm finna have to get on YouTube or something. Watch some little videos on YouTube. I see you have a, a, a joint on here where you can like have different types of microphones. Um, and you put in which microphone you had. Like I said, I was using the RE uh 300, 200, whatever that bitch called. Which was a good mic too. Um, but I, I always wanted to share. And uh we in the game now. We're gonna uh we're gonna get into some some news we can use. Uh those that's right, those it should be over 200 likes in here, man. Easy. Like what we doing. So uh I'm gonna play some um well I do wanna uh I'm I'm gonna go through this this old school, it's a classic. Then we're gonna get into some um Rye Hayes Bill um Dan Calloway Bill. And uh right now, right now the streets kind of dry. Uh I think the Pan Africans took a major, major hit um this past week as far as the validity of the things that they have been saying. I think it's becoming very, very apparent and very clear that the Pan-Africans do not have the firepower to stay in this fight. They do not have the resources to stay in this fight. Uh, right now, the Pan-Africans are looking for air support from white folks. <laughs> Real talk. At this time, Pan Africans are looking for white daddy to come save them. You see, off the top, uh, Big Six to the board. When we put Big Six to the board, how did Pan African history? I'm gonna ask y'all out there. What was the dagger for Pan African history? Let me see if any any y'all historians out there know this one. What Changed what changed everything for the Pan African? What was they kryptonite? Let me see if y'all out there know, man. What would Pan African kryptonite? What was Pan African's kryptonite? Who out there got it? Somebody out there, hear me out. Uh, what what was the straw that broke the camel back? And then Carter, well, you, you got half the question right. Nigga. You got half the answer right. I mean, <laughs> legendary top game. You got <laughs> you got the shooter. Uh you definitely got the shooter right. Uh but what what game? What 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 genealogy? Um we can say genealogy, but I'm gonna be honest. A lot of the people before I got here who was fighting with genealogy was was fighting with fake genealogy. Can we keep it real? How many people came out here and got caught uh, using fake genealogy, fake Indian ancestors, fake Indian chiefs, and and all? You know, and this type of work had happened because you got to remember a lot of people. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, and uh, I don't even think I never even seen this nigga before. Oh uh, yeah, 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 Mister Darnell. 
Mr. Darnell, uh, bars. There you go, right there. Black Europeans. OG Air walking in the building. Black Europeans. Big six to the board. Big six to the board. That's the foundation. Everything else. Every, big six to the board. It broke up everything else. Black Europeans was the straw that broke the camel back. It was it was no coming back after that. Uh genealogy, we gotta remember a lot of the people, like I say before I got here, they were doing fake genealogy. Man, they were using maps. They'll look, they'll find an ancestor and see the ancestor was in this area. They'll use the little map that tell you what tribe was in that area. And then they'll just assign you a tribe. <laughs> they'll just assign, assume, because you was in this area at this particular time that you not understanding migration patterns, not throwing in wars, not throwing in any of these things, no different than the 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 when the Pan African got to go spit on their dick, when they got a spit test, they got to what you tell them all it up, spit on it. <laughs> when they, that ain't no different than Pan African spitting on their dick, trying to see what who they dad is, and um, and we not even at, we not even throwing in the fact of migrations and. You know, shit happens. We ain't, we didn't, we just abandoned all that as if niggas stayed here this long. And uh, today, where you laying at then? So, um, yeah, I, you know, they, uh, man, listen, I could go further, right, of how much fake genealogy was out here. But I always tell you, I didn't, I didn't start genealogy. I didn't create it. When I got here, you know, the conversation was that I took it to the next level. Because niggas weren't doing real genealogy. Niggas weren't showing up with real ancestors or none of that. But what really hurt them, now, um, when genealogy started breaking they, they back, because you got to understand this too. How many people were saying they was full-blooded um, Indian? Black European, it opened up and it made people see things because at first, either you could be African, either you was African or you was all Aboriginal, you was 100% Aboriginal. <laughs> nobody thought about a Black European. This shit, nobody was thinking about that. So once they opened up the game and, you know, people started being honest, people started really looking into the to their genealogy, and seeing it what it was for, none of them other people before they were talking like that. So once I stepped to the Pan Africans, the things that they were using, you know, I just flipped it and and brought that black European history. So um, and it was it was nothing they can do about it. And so now we're in a day to well. They have to admit that that you know they've been running around all these years. You from Africa, like it or not, you African. <laughs> like it or not, you African. But today we find out they don't even know where the hell Africa got a name from. How can I be? How can you be so sure? Fuck you. How can you be so sure that I'm African when you don't even know where Africa got his name from? You don't even know when. Go back to 2021, making up African American. I was telling niggas what? When we introduced, we started breaking down and showing that black European uh, relationship over here. Everything that they fought with, they was coming out here 
And I'm gonna be honest, bro. They were beating up a lot of Indians and Aboriginals. Be honest, bro. They had you niggas in the headlock. What they'll put on them. Oh, y'all own slaves. Had niggas scared to claim five civilized tribes because <laughs> on paper it say five civilized tribes enslaved Africans. So it had had them niggas running away. A lot of niggas were claiming Eastern Woodland tribe, you know what I'm saying? Because you could you could you could go to Pinterest and find a black idiot. <laughs> Keep it gangster, bro. Keep it gangster, bro. It went that cool to be you no know, down south Indian, bro, when I came here, bro. And I said, can't nobody out Indian the down south Indian. Stop it. Stop it. We the closest thing to the to the to to the old day to the old way stop it nigga you grew up if you seen the 80s the 90s um you that was the closest thing to i mean especially if you go back the 70s the 60s and you know you that was the closest we got because you gotta understand you a hundred years removed 100 years removed, and I mean, I'm talking about, like, before uh, 100 years prior to that, you had, uh, you know, migrations. A lot of the migrations started to happen, you know what I mean, whether it, whether it was leaving from the south, going into the Midwest, uh, up uh, um, up north, up into, the you know, the Michigan areas, out of that, or pushing west, uh, going, going west, you feel me, Colorado, uh, California, all of these type of things. You weren't too far removed. So uh yeah, that was that was uh and now today we find out these niggas don't even know where the hell Africa got his name from. I remember uh this bill. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me take this down. Remember this bill, bro. It was uh uh Jabari. Was talking to Rob Bourne. I want y'all to check this out. Behind in the video, Shay Shay. Shay Shay come. I'm not saying I'm not saying you that he put the words in your mouth. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that it is related to the conversation. That Keep bringing that up. I don't. You know, I have some parentage, some family from Ghana um, in terms of DNA. I, I don't, I can't directly connect myself to a particular person in Ghana. Huh? I want y'all to listen to these guys. Ghana. Y'all heard him. He said he got family from Ghana. Now watch this out. Check this out. Line that shit up. What's up? 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 Too quick for him. Footwork too. Too superior. The ring got cute too. It's it's check it, Mike. Y'all clip this. Um, in terms of DNA, I I don't I can't directly connect myself to a particular person in Ghana. I now what I what we always talk about here. No matter what nobody say, we don't care about no anthropologists. We don't care about. Oh, uh, oh! Uh, none of these people, bro. We don't care about science. We don't care about none of that. Nope, none of y'all gonna move it off your square. Where, where you standing on your square? Bloodline, homie. The primary source is and will always be the people. Ain't no, ain't nothing else out prom, ain't no spit test out primarying, right? Because you ain't even complete. In order to complete that, that spit test results, homie, you gonna need to connect it with a person. And if you cannot connect it with a person, you cannot bring it in this courtroom, homie. And, and that's just period point blank. You don't get maxed out. You don't get maxed out, especially if somebody got their genealogy, right? Especially if somebody really on point with their genealogy and not the fake shit, and they step into you. See, I, I got advantage over a lot of these niggas because you know why? These people can say whatever they want to say, but one thing, what I'm saying, 
I'm not the one saying it. I can press play. I can make a phone call. My family is the one saying this. Right there, um, that separated a nigga from a lot because most people who come here, especially these Pan-Africans, especially these Hebrew Israelites. How many Hebrew Israelites y'all done heard or oh, then got put out? Cause they was out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, say, boy, your mom and daddy don't know nothing about that. How many Hebrew Israelites they got put out the house for Ron there talking crazy? How many of these niggas running around here talking about like sheep in the family? <laughs> because they the only one running around here saying these things. They're the only ones running around here saying these things, bro. So, so, so now, nah, man. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When they talking crazy and they family don't know nothing about that, right? Don't want to hear it. So right here, the boy, I mean, this is a cold one right here, bro. They don't know. We so, they're so sure that we're Africans, but they don't, you know, without spitting on that white boy dick, they ain't got a clue. And to put on top of it, the fact that you sitting here using this word, you don't even know where it come from. And then you turn around and say, Roman, well, Jabari would probably be okay with that because he grew up Catholic. <laughs> So he probably ain't got no problem with Africa being a Roman province, right? A Roman province who origins is Christianity. And it's funny that when the AME church comes and it has the word African on it, we always see African associated with, um, we always see African associated with Christianity. We always see Africa associated with Christianity. We will watch this African province uh, be Christian and fight against Muslims later on. Check. We'll see. These niggas are uh, Christian based. Always Africa, always have, and always will be Christian based. You niggas are Christian. Pan African Conference. What y'all in there with? Pastors? Man, name me another movement. Name me another group who got more Christian pastors. Jabari a priest. When he hold his classes uh, in the basement on Sundays. He nigga pastors. Free Masonic pastors. All of them. Stop it with the, let's stop it with the faking. Let's we need to stop faking. Hold up, hold up, right quick. Hey, I want to uh, I want to do something real quick. Uh, man, shout out to the homie James Taylor, man. The homie dropped a honey ball in the cash out. Oh. Uh, and shout out to the homie Gold Coast Scalper, man. He's jumping in the cash up. Uh, the homie James dropped the honey ball. Appreciate that love. Hey, I want to do this here too, man. Uh, man, I'm looking for Chris, man. Uh, uh, Chris, look at Christopher, man. Um, the other day the homie got a BCU pack. <laughs> I want to show you. Look, just check it out, fam. This is all you have to do. It's come here, you come to the site, bigchiefuniversity.com. And, uh, man, you scroll down to the bottom, bro. Just go all the way down the page. All the way down the page. All right. Come all the way down the page, and you'll run into this. Become a site member. And join the BCU app. Join us on mobile. Become a site member. Download the app for easy access. And then you just come over here. You get it on Google Play, Apple Store, 
but you come down here and and you um and you signed up. So so right here, family. Enter your email. Join our mailing list for updates on new merch and all this. Just enter your, your email and all of this here. Join up to the site and and then hit me and let me know. And that way I can get it to you. Um but yeah, that's that's that is just that simple, family. Uh that's to the homie Chris, man. Um oh shit, damn, I ain't on the screen. All right, my bad. Let's run through it real quick, and then we're going to get it to the bill. All right, you come to the site, bigchiefuniversity.com. What you do is you go all the way to the bottom, or you could just simply hit contact us. You know what I'm saying? But but come all the way to the bottom, and then down here, you'll get become a, a site member, join the BCU app, join us on mobile. All you have to do is just sign up. Google Play, Apple Stores, all of that. Join our mailing list. Enter your email right here. Subscribe. Here go the subscribe button right here. Once you subscribe, send me that information there, your email that you use, and then and I can find you in the system. That's to the homie Chris. Uh, we want to make sure we get you right. D to the O to the T. What's up with it? Sweet feather in the building. Kerry Bay, what up, though? The homie say, let's build another black street. Let's build another black Wall Street with your donation. With shit. Nigga, I don't get enough donation to build a, a black Wall Street. Um, yeah, I don't even get enough donation to build a street. Uh, nigga, what we gonna be on the dirt road and have tables? And uh, uh, vendors, nigga. Uh, yeah, nigga. I don't get enough donation to build uh, Wild Street. You, you want to know how, Brian? You ain't donated yet. Yeah, nigga. You ain't donated one time, nigga. Uh, yeah, Brian. You ain't never donated. So when you start donating, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll you know, I think we'll be all right. We'll be on the right track. Yeah, once you start donating, Brian, you and everybody else, I think we'll be on that road and we can actually make that, you know, manifest that what you're speaking on. But a nigga who ain't put in on nothing, damn, so, well, nigga, you know you ain't got a voice. Yeah, you know you ain't got a voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. You will not be in the meetings. Oh, uh, yeah, you ain't made not one donation. You want the Black Wall Street. Uh, we know you ain't going to shop, so you want us to go over these stores, and we know you ain't even going to come shop with us. Yeah, yeah, you ain't you ain't going to come shop. Nigga, we done been on double-digit tours. We ain't seen you. We ain't seen a lot of people. We can't even throw tours. I'm about to leave next year. And how many people said, all right, I'm going to wait till next year, and now it's going to be over with? Like, come on, bro. Stop it. It don't take, it ain't that damn hard to get a passport. Just going to tell y'all that. And even what about the domestic trips we have? Come on, bro. It ain't that hard to come outside. We do them on the weekend, so you can't say you got to work. Motherfuckers just ain't putting in effort. Nigga don't want to do nothing. Nigga feeling like we got forever. We ain't got forever, bro. This shit once in a lifetime, nigga. Um, period. Once in a lifetime, bro. You gotta see the moment. For real, for real. So, uh, brother Brian, when you start donating, maybe we'll be on that track. Maybe you will encourage others to do the same. Instead of sitting on your hands waiting on somebody else to do it. So basically you telling us to go build it, nigga. And then you just gonna come and um what you gonna do? Tell niggas you know us? You know them niggas that build Black Wall Street. I they're my people know. Fuck with Top Cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I fuck with dude. Real nigga, man. That's my nigga. One time in the chat, I had said something to him and the nigga spoke back to me. Real talk, yeah, real life, then. 
right hand on the Bible. Nigga, nigga spoke back to him. I said, what's up, Top Cat? And they said, what's up, Brian? Yeah, them nigga build Black Wall Street down there. This type of shit. <laughs> Ebony, I see you down there talking about I give nothing. I hope these niggas give me some of my money back for your birthday gift. Ebony birthday is, is Cinco de Mayo. Ebony birthday is Cinco de Mayo. I'm going to tell y'all right now, nigga. Nigga, I, I'm I'm not no rich ass nigga. I, I I doubt if I get half my money back. You nigga lucky I'm leaving next year, nigga. Or I would I would be totally different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you nigga, you nigga be jumping in the portal like uh Colorado Buffalo. Uh, yeah, Colorado Buffalo. Y'all gonna be jumping in the portal next year. I'm gone like Nick Saban. Oh uh, boy, what, what y'all gonna do? I try to build it up and lead the people in toys, but uh they always let somebody come and trick them out their spot. Like, how you gonna let a nigga trick you out your spot? Uh from BCU? You gonna let an outsider come on, bro? How many, how many times we seen that happen? You ain't even really have to do shit. Nigga just threw you the keys to the whip. How many times we seen that happen? And you down there, they screaming and hollering, you didn't ran, you didn't hit, you didn't ran into the brick wall. Out here taking outside advice. If outside advice had the answers, uh nigga, uh you know, everything wouldn't be on BCU shoulders. If we the only motherfuckers that who active, how can when that's like us listening to the guy Brian? He ain't never donated, but he said let's take the donation and go build Black Wall Street. That's no different. That's how you trick a nigga out of this. But that's no different than a nigga getting the keys to BCU and they really ain't even did shit uh, to deserve it, right? Get the keys to BCU and then let another nigga come crash, right? That come on to my and then a nigga finna go, you know. Um, so what we gonna do, man? Uh, the Juneteenth mansion party, bro. I'm, I'm gonna have to call it out, and let me tell y'all why I'm gonna keep it gangster. We're gonna call it out because I mean, we go to Mexico the next month, and to be honest, bro, I would rather see you in Mexico than in Texas. Because we we coming to Texas in November, so that's the one with Diane Calloway and the thirteen gonna pop out um, November. So uh, uh, Houston um, Juneteenth to be cool, but you know people have to catch flights, people have to buy hotel rooms. It'll be a registration, so you have to pay registration because. Um, nigga, we ain't, um, no, we not buying, uh, rent, not no mansion for you to come party. Nigga like Brian to just show up. Cause he, he, uh, he told my, his grandma was, said she was Cherokee in it. Nah, nigga, we ain't, nigga, we not here to get took advantage of. You got us fucked up. See, when you come to the Indian game, I always say this Indian shit is the hardest. Cause can't nobody help you. Can't nobody help you on this, bro. Nah, you can't cheat off the next person paper. Uh, the, the creator made everybody unique and different in their own way, homie. And so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're an Indian, uh, when you're in the Indian game, it shows because you can't you can't copy off nobody paper, homie. Uh, only way you can get away with that if you got the same mom and daddy. <laughs> If you ain't got the same mom and daddy, you can't copy out nobody else's paper, nigga. Bars. So, you can't ride out no nigga greatness. Gotta be great your damn self. So, um, we gonna go here, man. Um,
I wanted to play a clip, add a clip from. Well, why do mine for? Her? Cause they gonna go into the gullers. They don't go into the gullah wars. And I had Dane talking about the Confederate. I'm going to play this little clip real quick. It's a throwback. Old school. See if y'all remember. I spent a ton of time in both communities. My mother. I was just saying for my and I spent a ton of time in both communities. My mother apprenticed our last influence speakers. I grew up speaking my language and I was extremely fortunate uh, to go out and play professional basketball. And that's what I, would, I want to acknowledge is that I do have privilege as a man and I have, a privilege, I have privilege as somebody who went out and, you know, and accomplished these things to go and gain that privilege. And that's why I'm able to step into spaces and folks listen. But during this, during my journey, I've worked with other indigenous nations throughout Turtle Island. And throughout my journey, what I've, been able to do is have conversations with my my black brothers and talk about the history, talk about how divide and conquer has worked and it's showing today it has worked. And my thing is I'm not and, and I wasn't again, I appreciate you Glenn for, for jumping in and saying that because it wasn't an attack and I and I want big uh, big chief to know it wasn't an attack on him. Um, I was just saying in general because I know Cherish said that it was like a bunch of people who were uh, making fun of him or posting his pictures and stuff. So, so I just want to acknowledge it. Well, yeah, it wasn't like me attacking Big Chief. It was me acknowledging that he has done a lot for our communities, our people. And I don't think people who don't know him should be able to criticize him because he does do a lot. And he does give his heart and time to our people, our community. And that's it's, it's more of a passion thing for me because David Roll, David rolls with my, my network of carvers. All of my brothers, all of my higher brothers, our master carvers, our work is all over the museums all over the world. And David all right. So... Let me let y'all know what's going on right now. Right now, I am in Native American court. So right now, you hear these natives, and uh, they 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 want me violated, right? <laughs> I'm in Native American court. Uh, the Native Americans are mad because a white boy got took off on. White boy came in there playing Indian and got took off on, right? So the Native Americans, they got together with their little elders and all of this here. And, um, you know, they called a meeting. And um, I had to go. <laughs> so, 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 you know, they trying to say how much work that this guy put in. I want y'all to understand something. Um, I, most white folks don't have an identity, bro. They don't really have an identity. Um, the same thing happened to you, happened to everybody else, bro, because it happened by the same person. Can I can I get a bars on that? The same thing that happened to you. It's so easy for you to come out here and say how you've been misclassified. But I mean, you look at everybody that's here; they all been misclassified. Everybody been misclassified. Everybody been ain't no such thing as white people. When did it become white people? When did white people start identifying themselves as white people? Hello, some new shit, right? Uh, when Mexicans start identifying as Mexicans? If we go back to the eighteen hundred, the people that are saying that they're Mexican today they didn't look like the niggas back in the eighteen hundreds. Come on, somebody. Especially before 1848. Especially before 1848, they started signing the treaties. Um, so 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 when the same thing that happened to you, homie, you know damn well you ain't no uh black colored, no Negro, no African American or any of these type of things, right? When you go to go check on there, they got a whole thing Hispanic and all that. And they made all this shit up. What is a Hispanic? What's a Hispanic, bro? The same nigga that got you got everybody else too. Why would he stop and just do it to you? And that's what niggas try to make you feel like you the only victim out this story. 
Well, my point of bringing that up, uh, Native Americans don't know who they are. That's when you talk to them, they're very insecure people because when it comes down to it, they can't tell you anything outside of the white. Their story should be different than the white boy story. But we see that the white boy wrote their story and they just tell it back to us just how he told it to them. No different than when we see our African brothers out here. Our, 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 our uh, Amazon African brothers. Amazon Prime. Not, 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 not the Amazon River. <laughs> Amazon Prime, right? Spit test niggas. Spit on their dick niggas. Oh, sloppy head. That we're going to start calling them niggas. Sloppy head. Nigga got that sloppy head. They spitting. I ain't never seen so much motherfucking spitting in my life. These niggas ought to be on ghetto gaggers. All that motherfucking spit. <laughs> yeah, these niggas ought to be on uh, uh, ghetto gaggers, nigga. Uh, uh, yeah, these, these, these niggas, they throw fuck. All that spit. These niggas just steady spit. White boys say spit again. Yeah, these niggas, they throw fuck. Uh, uh, wet mouth ass nigga. So it, it's no different. And you know, um, one thing we was able to explore and point out was these niggas was um really insecure. I don't care how much confidence a nigga come up here talking about that he African and that you African and and we slaves and all of this shit here, nigga. Uh, I know they have insecurities because. This is not something that they came up with. This is something somebody else uh, came up with and told them. It's a story someone else created for them. Um, and when we look at white folks, it's no different. Somebody told white folks they was the king of the world. But when you look up invention, they ain't invented shit. So damn, nigga, how, how you get tricked into thinking you are the smartest? America has failed uh, since white folks been in office. We've been having white presidents and all that. They failed. You think, <laughs> you really think, uh, out of all of these years, through 30 something presidents, all these niggas were white boys, and America became a superpower in the world. Um, a superpower, bro. And then these same white folks. Uh, are out there performing the way that they are now. Listen, brother, all the major cities, um, all of the architecture and all that, all of that was already there before Europeans even got here. So my question would be, what the fuck did they do to make it great? We didn't see number war. And we didn't see them fighting in it. How we know? Go look up the mustard rolls, nigga. Go look up the military records. They tell you who these niggas are. So they show you that these ain't white folks fighting. You got granddaddies in the Confederate Army. You got granddaddies in the U Union Army. What they always tell you, the war would have never, revolutionary war would have never been won if niggas ain't fight. Um, uh, the civil war would have never been won. What they tell you if niggas didn't fight. So somebody didn't gave everybody a story. So what white folks did was if, when you look at white folks, white folks are on every side, right? White folks are the Indians today. White folks are the, the Irish. They're the German. They didn't took over all of these things, right? But if you know, if you understand and you know what happened and you know somebody gave them this, yeah, a nigga came in and gave, nigga, you a German, nigga gave him, gave it to him. My thing is, these punk ass niggas helped. And nigga, I'm going to spend the rest of my, I'm going, nigga, you niggas going to pay. You bitch ass nigga going to pay for that. And they be saying, hey, take it easy. On Dr. Ben, take it easy on Clark. Man, fuck all of them niggas. Wait till my lecture come out, bro. I am smoking shit. Native American. Because all of this could have been avoided. And everybody was 
Cause they always say, well, why wouldn't nobody never teaching them about this? Today they trying to come out and confess on a deathbed. These old nigga trying to come out and that tell you how Indian they is. But see, what I know is y'all knew this here back then when this whole little Native American switcheroo shit went on. We didn't have so many um American Indian scholars come out and give false history on the American Indian um uh, um um civil rights bill. Indian civil rights bill. The civil rights was the Indian, and I've been telling niggas, bro, chill out with that. They ain't listen. Y'all steady listening to these people who don't know what they talking about. I'm going to make it crystal, crystal clear for you. I promise you. Or I'm going to give you money back, nigga. So, white folks, um, they don't know who they are. And so when he say uh, this, that this guy does a lot of work, uh, uh, uh most white folks who play Indian, they do, they read more of the history than than you niggas. Who are the real Indians? They know more than you and more than the Native Americans. Uh, man, listen, a lot of the Native American, they always say, speak your language, come to five. Bitch, shut up. You don't even know what African tribe you from. You don't even know where to start come to five it. But this is my game. Most of the teachers, most of the people that teach the Native American linguistics are white folks. Playing Indian. Where you think the funding is coming from? You go to these reservations, nigga, you ain't never heard nobody sit there and hold a whole conversation in Native American talk. You ain't never heard nobody sit there and go back and forth, nigga. And these niggas only know a few words. Why? Because this shit, this shit ain't old. Man, these languages that these people out here playing like they're speaking today are not old. If I came out here, like I just told you at first, the same nigga that did it to you, did it to everybody else. So if we could come out here and say, nigga, Igbo, Yoruba, or uh, uh, Wolof, or uh, 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 Igbo, any of these other, you know, the popular, the, the popular terms. If I could come out here and show y'all that, listen, nigga, this shit ain't ancient. This shit is new. Then I could come out and if I, if I say these Native American languages ain't ancient, they new, nigga. I mean it. I have a perfect record, homie. If I said you in trouble, I promise. I. If I don't know it, I ain't going to say nothing. Boy, if I know it, yo ass is it. If I say it, you might well just, just know, understand that you're done. So I said Native American, this shit that these niggas around here kicking is new. Let me tell you how new it is. The fact, <laughs> the fact that you got to go to school and learn it. The fact that the government have to fund program for you to learn it. Check. No different than what they did when they brought Swahili, when they put Yoruba over here. This didn't happen long ago. Uh, it's people in the chat who are alive today, who was a, who was alive. I'm sorry, who was alive at that time that they started it. It's not old. It's new. The problem is. We have horrible, horrible representation. We have horrible researchers. We have horrible scholars. We have niggas who never came and, and, and did the research and brought their research findings. They just went off of what was already put there and regurgitated because that was the that was the, the way that it was taught in the Pan-Africanism. Like I always say, they always tell you what books they they, they recommend books to read. Chancellor William, Destruction of a Black Civilization. And I, I, everybody had those books. Black Man of the Nile. They, 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 they teach you what you're going to know. How you going to learn the way that you pro, uh, process shit and everything. But see, white folks, uh, this white guy, this particular white guy here, he speaks the language. Not only that, but he... He teaches the classes, right? So, yeah, he's a white guy, but 
he teaches the classes on this language and he speaks about three different Native American languages. He's not Native American by blood. But if y'all know white folks, white, white folks, um, one thing you 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 have to give them is um one thing that they're great at is um is adapting. So they will come in and adapt your culture. When last time y'all been to Cracker Barrel? Have y'all do y'all remember uh, uh a restaurant called Piccadilly's? What about Luby's? Luby's cafeteria. What was his name? Jack Luby or something? Hey, y'all talk to me, man. I, I need. To, they say the sound is that. Mic check, mic check. Hey, the sound out. Can y'all hear me? Mic check, mic check. Why would Roderick say the sound out? Yep, no, I see. Yep, no. God damn it, I'm confused. Skywalker and girly girl, get it together. No, what? Okay, y'all can hear me. Okay. Boy, one nigga can fuck the whole show up, can't they? <laughs> one nigga, one nigga fuck the whole show up. <laughs> nigga, how you know I wasn't in the good groove, nigga, and now I can't. God damn me, nigga, I done forgot what I was. I had some good shit on my mind. That nigga fuck, I really didn't lost my thought. Man, I what that nigga fucked us. That nigga fucked up the show. Boy, that nigga didn't fuck the show up, nigga. I, I just told you, nigga, I, I'm over here with new equipment, nigga. I don't know how to work it yet. So look, look, this what this is what's happening right now. So the white boy, he 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 um he's very important to these people and the major number one reason is he teaches them the language they're not teaching him <laughs> you supposed to come from the culture this is supposed to be you but you got the white boy teaching you and since he's teaching you he has a uh a sense of uh superiority in a way because you need this to even feel like you're really connected to the culture because without it, you're an English speaker, you dress like us. Man, I was over here talking about how the white folks took the, man, we talking about Lubies and Piccadillys, Cracker Barrel. I'm saying when you go in there and you look at they, they rest, they, they, they menu, all of that's uh, uh, what grandma cook at home. That's our shit. But white folks know how to adapt real good. And they didn't came and made it, uh, what they call it, southern cooking, home cooking. Home cooking. Uh, southern cooking. But the whole time is Indian cooking. American Indian cooking. Nigga cooking. Check. But they know how to adapt, right? And when you don't know, you could become a victim. David is in that, in that crew, so I'm very close to David. So that's just what I want to acknowledge. But the biggest thing is that we need to be having conversations, healthy conversations about these things. Because, you know, as Indigenous and you know, Afro-Indigenous man, you know, I've seen the divisiveness. And, you know, my very first instance that comes to mind when I was 15 years old, I left my village for the first time when I was, like, really left. And when I started playing AU, I played with the team all from Compton. And I spent that time in Compton the whole entire summer. And then I started, I went out and visited ODU in Virginia. I went to Memphis. And I started to really touch, really, really dive into my black side and really learn about that side. And I was very fortunate. And I'm very, very fortunate that on both sides, there's so much resilience and so much power that goes into both sides of my ancestry. So I want to acknowledge that. And I just want to acknowledge that we need to have be having healthy conversations because otherwise, like, we're doing what, Folks have said we're doing exactly what white supremacy was created to do. We're dividing each other and we're having very harsh conversations when we could be coming together and having conversations about how to mobilize and move forward, you know, so we can create health and wellness in our community, so we can create mental health resources. We're all, our communities are so damn traumatized. Like the last thing we need to be doing in 2021 is trying to traumatize each other even more. 
the white people have already done enough traumatizing. So that's why he said the white people have done enough traumatizing. Well, Dave, the brother you taking up for his wife. I said, what is Luby's? Dosi say Luby's is trash. Well, I don't know what Luby's you went to. Oh. <laughs> See, now they got Michigans and white folks and little kids in there cooking. Back then, Lupus, it was nothing but old. It's a, like a, it's a cafeteria. So you come down the line, you get your tray, and you come down the line. Um, but back then, it was nothing but, you know, it was nothing but, 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 but all the people back there cooking. So the, 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 the green beans, had uh onions and, and bacon in it and um and today if you go to the cabbage had bacon in it uh uh um uh, uh red pepper flakes and uh you go there today they got tomatoes in the damn cabbage diced tomatoes in the cat really really cause they got diced tomatoes I said who did this I asked it out on everything on, on my dead grandma. I had, I, I had to know who's responsible. Who got dice or cherry tomatoes in the cat? Who thought this was a good idea? They say Piccadilly's. I went to aunties and uncles. Um, uh, on Sundays, my grandma used to take us to Piccadilly's. If you're from Houston. You know, you heard of Dillbrook Mile in Humble. Humble attached to see the Dillbrook Mile. It was the Piccadillys in there. And my grandma used to always take us there on Sundays, Piccadillys. And they and they they very similar, Piccadillys and then um and Lubies. They 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 similar. What I want to say is that, you know, we need to find ways to respect each other and come together. Otherwise, we're just going to keep perpetuating the hate that was put on us, the self-hate that was put on us by white Hey, Corey said Paula Dean. And a lot of people say Paula, Paula Dean. Talk talk this shit. Uh, Martha Stewart, Paula Dean, all of them. Paula Dean. And they're stealing grandma recipes to the pies and all that. And they brought it out to the world as white folks. And this is what I'm saying. It was niggas on the block at this time who let this happen, who who helped it happen. So when you see these gatekeeping niggas and these niggas go dancing and they chilling and they and they ain't checking this shit. They going along with it. It's so many people who look like you and not for you. And they get support. I remember we go back years. Y'all remember Tiffany Haddish? Tiffany Haddish was popping. Kevin Hart, you know, these people, you can see everywhere, you can see them know, uh, I mean, everywhere you look, they was there. Commercial after commercial after commercial, and y'all talking about these niggas ain't out here getting fucked in the ass and doing none of these things that's coming out. Uh, they caught R. Kelly out there, found his tapes. R. Kelly learned that shit from them. How is everyone that's coming out of these circles, especially that's coming out of these areas, these errors are getting, uh, 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 I mean, Michael Jackson, everybody have the same cases. It's like they keep in the same company. I'm trying to think, nigga, if you sing, that don't just make you a freak. All of these people coming out. Oh, uh, Cat Williams said something. Cat Williams say, nigga, I did all that and I was able to keep my asshole a virgin, nigga. Oh, <laughs> No, he said he said I done all that. I was able to keep my asshole a virgin, nigga. Cause Diddy liked the party, and you gotta tell him no. Look at Diddy. Diddy know he in trouble. See, y'all go back there and y'all go play the game with these folks. How you down there getting down? Oh, Epstein, all of these people, everybody that getting these type of cases, when they catch y'all there, y'all are into the same. That's just, a, is that a coincidence? How y'all got so much in common? So how you coming out that era? Uh, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, when Tupac came out, Tupac found that nigga, what the fuck y'all niggas got going on? 
Shook Dre punk ass and you out of the closet. What what y'all got going? This shit been going down. Niggas been going along and they been putting these niggas out here. Steve Harvey. Man, go sit down somewhere. Tell your daughter, uh, let me fuck. Let a real nigga fuck. Tell your fine ass daughter to let a real nigga fuck. Uh everybody playing the game. So, 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 so. What what happened to us? Niggas let it happen. Niggas was down with it. Tiffany Haddish, what they do? They came out and got her. She ain't popping no more, is she? They caught that case. All of them into the same thing. Uh, uh, Jada and Will. Will spit TV shows, all of the movies, all that. Turn around, his first movie. He and uh, some white folks let him live with him. What's the name of that movie? White folks let him live with him and then they get fucked from the back. Um, Tupac straight up said he was fucking Quincy Jones' daughter. That nigga say Quincy Jones told him let him suck his dick. Pac came out and told y'all, say man, that nigga, that nigga Quincy Jones told me he want to eat a nigga dick. Nigga, your daughter eating his dick. LL Cool J, y'all know what they were saying about LL and and Quincy. Stop it. Come on, man. How everybody that's around y'all end up, you know what I'm saying, into the same activities. It's crazy. And my thing is, like, how y'all niggas let these folks trick y'all into this? Let walk, man. We're quick. Supremacy. So that's all I want to share is that I'm not up here to argue or attack or or fight with anybody. You know, I've I've been, I'm, I'm I'm fighting bigger battles in my hometown right now. Whoa, right now, Lux I just got done this. What I was doing earlier. I was doing it. Lux say Tupac too. Damn, what Pac do? Twelve young boys who are learning to cope and learning how to have conversations and learning their culture. They're learning how to language. I'm fighting big grassroots battles right now in my community. We're dealing with trauma. We're getting, we're bringing back our relatives to heal. So there's a lot of things I'm doing right here. So I don't have, you know, and, I, and I'm willing to stick up for my relatives and, and push and I'm never going to back down. But the biggest thing, especially in these communities, you guys, is that um, our, when we're having dialogue amongst our black and indigenous communities, we have to try and show each other respect and listen to each other and hear each other out and find ways for us to, to unite. Because, you know, white people say all the time, oh, let's unite, let's unite. no. The black and indigenous community, we need to be uniting. So that's all I wanted to share is, you know, I, I stand with everybody, you know, everyone everyone on this stage is brown. You know, at the end of the day, everyone is brown or black, and we need to acknowledge that. We don't need to find ways to stick together. So, again, I appreciate Tracy Keys. I am cherished. I appreciate you creating the space for me. I appreciate everyone um, listening. Again, again, I just want to support us having meaningful, good conversations. How about good Oh, um, um. Keys and Tracy, may I just unpack something really fast because I have so many people DMing me and it's getting a little bit stressful behind the scenes trying to manage a room that by all intents and purposes is a very intercultural room. So there's a lot of things being misunderstood and miscued as either. So I, I just want that permission if I can, but it's up to you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Take it away. Okay, so a lot of people pinging me about Okay, so, so firstly, when indigenous people say you don't even learn your language, a lot of the times you have to understand that with it, and this is just an indigenous perspective and then I'll go to a black perspective after that. When indigenous people are saying that is because indigenous people's culture has literally been attacked across the continent from 1492, which is the, the core of the language. So I want y'all to listen because Pan-Africans their first thing is, and they, <laughs> they first thing they want to tell you, say something to me, speak to me in your language. First thing they run up, tell me in your language. Listen, bro, I want y'all to understand that, unfortunately, you will hear a lot of the same insecurities. What do I call insecurities? Victim stories. 
you hear a lot of these victim stories when you hear the victim story you know that this is something that somebody gave you because it's impossible for everyone to have the same experience because if people was having the same experience back then you'll still be having the same experiences today niggas always talking about this is that by black folks but i'm pretty sure the supreme uh dude on the supreme court uh uh clarence you know i'm some i'm i'm pretty sure he never in his life experienced white supremacy or any of these type of any of this made up shit right you know how many politicians you know how many people in high places you know what i mean i'm pretty sure they have never experienced the things that you little ghetto ass niggas experience you under middle class poverty stricken niggas have experience i'm pretty sure but it's still a one size fit all story so when i come and say hey man this ain't nigga that did this to you did it to everybody so you screaming so loud to the top of your lung about you being depressed and this victim ass story when you look around everybody got a victim story everybody got a victim story except white folks white folks don't know who they are they have no clue if they did they wouldn't be calling themselves white how we know that because if you knew who you were you wouldn't be calling yourself black can i get a bars on that can i get some flames in the chat if white folks knew who they were i'd be calling themselves white folks the same reason why we when we hear a nigga today say he black in 2024 automatically we know that nigga don't know who his people no more or where he come from or nothing about his family history so why when it go for you it don't go for the next motherfucker go ask a mexican what's his fifth grandma name and what she was what she was living at go ask a mexican do they have deeds to the land nigga back to the 1800s nigga you are not finna get a yes out of them go ask white folks no my nigga you living in a whole nother world a nigga didn't trick you and you ain't even realizing because you screaming so loud that i've been oppressed as if you've been the only nigga oppressed in america the fact that you are not the only nigga that been oppressed in america but you in your mind have been taught that you the only nigga that have went through something and been oppressed in america that alone right there let you know that it was a nigga who came up with the story that right there alone ought to let you know that the nigga who came up with this whole story was a nigga not only that but like i said the same person that did it to you did it to everybody else you just don't understand it because you over here crying like a bitch and you don't know nothing about yourself so when we go listen to this native american what the native americans say they've been oppressed everybody got the same story mexican ask them they've been oppressed language a lot of the times you have to understand that with it just just an indigenous perspective and then i'll go to the black perspective after that when indigenous people are saying that is because indigenous people's culture has literally been attacked across the continent from 1492 which is the, the core of the language right so a lot of people especially that they placate to be the classism or colorism in indigenous community will talk over people who are who are really tribal and and are actually restoring the cultural norms of the people. hey the ruler that um 1608 treaty will become null and void in 1655 so what will be really important is not the 1608 but it will be the 1655 treaty so after 1655 if you claiming power ton power high ton or however you want to pronounce it it's a good chance that your ass might not be power hot ton so a lot of people don't know what happened in 1655 y'all look it up
treated 1655 with the power of Hodgson's, which is going to lead to a couple of years later, you're going to get the Bacon Rebellion, which is another treaty going to be signed after that. But the original power of Hodgson's were moved out of that area by slave raiding tribes that came down in 1620s. Wait a minute, time out. 16 it would have been a little later than that because the battle happened in 1655 but i'm trying to think of what year that the rick hawkins got down there or start turning up it, 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 it couldn't have been too too far from the from the uh the original battle but after that it was english kings english kings ruled uh i mean english chiefs ruled um on the power hottens after that in the 1800s um the u.s government deemed that the power hottens wasn't a, a real tribe that they were they weren't indian so when you look at them one of the the first contact nations here in you know the first contact nations uh, they didn't get federal recognition until what 20 2017 2016 type of they just got it and i can show you something on that too what's so crucial about that because all of them white folks uh bars people again and we're creating that continuity so you might hear retaliation like well who are you then you don't even speak the language right because they're feeling that anti-indigeneity come out and so it's not that they're trying to be anti-black i just want to put that out there it's that they're coming from the, the place of what do you mean like we're keeping our traditions alive we're trying to keep our cultural uh continuity and this is a tribal community member how dare you speak out of turn now, on the other end of that, and this is why I want Native community to really listen and pay attention. When you say things like that to Black Americans, who a lot of our times we don't, I didn't even know who my Black ancestors were until my 30s. We don't have that experience. So when you say things to us like, you don't know your language, I know where you're coming from, you know, because you're coming from that, you know, usually urban or classes setting where they're like trying to put tribal people down. But when you say that in an inter intercultural space towards black people, they can perceive that as anti-black because they don't know their language. So it's like almost like victim blaming or, it, well not it, it, it is a form of victim blaming, you know? Yeah. So I just want indigenous people to be mindful when they tell non-native black community members, you don't even know your language, don't look at them as like a, another tribal native nation or, or another community member, Josh and on another community member. Try to understand that, they, that our black ancestors came here, our languages were taken, a lot of our culture, we, a lot of us are intertribal from Africa. So we don't even have like a consensus on the, the language. So I just want us to be mindful that this is, this is not necessary. All right, no problem. All right, so. And we're going to turn this over to little um... census on the the language. So I just want us to be mindful that this is this is not necessarily something that's anti-native or anti-black. It's just we're coming from two different cultural perspectives right now. And so I just want to explain that for people in the audience. Different cultural perspectives? Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure the meal that you just ate tonight come from our culture and. What 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 is this cultural shit? I don't want to hear none of y'all talk about no culture because y'all do not have any culture. Uh, unless you are nomad. Audience and for people that are on stage to so just be mindful of each other's traumas. Uh, and I hope I explained that well. I am really trying hard here because this is a lot to unpack. So just thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. I. Uh... Before we go into this next, um, our next guest on this uh, little, um, I want to say podcast, this uh, broadcast, let's say broadcast, um, I want everybody to remind, um, to, to remember the words of Damon and everybody here as well as Brooke, is that we got to be respectful. We got to listen 
and we got to also, um, you know, keep things civil. And we're going to turn this over to um, Big Chief Top Cats and invite him to speak about what was going on in the other room. A lot of us were in that room and we heard what was being said and we just want him to break it down and what was going on. All right, no problem. And I just want to say, let's, let's, out of respect, let's do one mic. Let's... All right, no problem. All right, so uh, I wanted to start out by saying, uh, you know, they, I, I, y'all say y'all created this room for David. And uh, I hear a lot of people saying that they were present in the room while David uh, was speaking. Okay, so David came in, I brought him to the panel, and I actually stopped the queue and gave him a slot. Well, David's position was, it was a guy, it was an author in there. Uh, he had a book, and he was talking about his book in there. And uh, so the, that author was Horace Butler. Uh, the book was When Rocks Crowd. So Horace Butler was in there. And I probably should have played that clip first. They went crazy. Uh, this is when Horace Butler used to be cool with us. And then he got jealous, you know. Because old niggas want to run the show. And uh, we ain't heard from him ever since. I, uh, Yeah, ever since I made him get his ass away from me. We ain't heard nothing else about him or his book. Yeah, Horace Butler. I'm talking to you, white boy. David had some uh some kickback to the book. So we let him and the elder have a dialogue with each other. In doing so, David uh felt the need to point out the fact now I get this to Horace Butler. I like the Horace Butler because he liked it to fight. He went turn it down no phase. All them everybody that had something to say about his book and all of that. Uh, you know, cause I try to jump in, I take the fade for him, and he'd be like, "Nah, how many fades I got? In? One, two, three, four. Line them up. Come on." I give him that. I can't take that away from OG. Uh, he was gonna scratch when he came to that book. When Ross cried, it was a lot of people felt like they could debunk it. A lot of people felt like this was wrong or this was pseudo. But when they got in there with him. I I I give him that man. Hey, I'm a real one. When they got in there with him, it that all that shit they was talking, it ain't look like that. Rob Owen, I got a clip of Rob Owen and him going at it. Uh, Red from Houston. Red, that nigga beat you up. Yeah, <laughs> that nigga smashed on Red. Oh, uh, came in there with them questions, nigga. I, I got the tapes. This is just my little old oil car that I got in. These, these, these my little personals. I got to tell you, the nigga smashed red from Houston, man. Southside red. Down them. Coming in up playing them games. He, I got him beating up Rob Bowen. Fact that we had no qualifications of having this conversation without an American Indian prison. A native. So David came in the room looking at it's a bunch of I'm gonna call it what it is a bunch of niggas in here talking about something they don't have no qualifications on speaking on. Yeah, so David got what he was looking for. And so somebody yelled out the fact, is he a white boy? I didn't say it, but somebody in the back crowd said it. One of the reasons was David kept David uh position was that white people came and colonized America, and somebody said, Damn, ain't you white? And so that's where it that came from. But uh, it was uh, our position wasn't uh, to knock anyone else's position. Uh, our position is merely to uh, for our position to be respected the same way that everyone else wants their lineage to be respected. Um, hey, oh boy, say it's one of his go-to books. When Ross cried, bro, you'll never win a fight with that book. Can't nobody win a fight with that book but Horace. You'll never win a fight with that book. See. I fought Horace. My first time meeting him, I downed him. Man, that's on everything I love. Why you think he started liking me? That's what made him respect me. He wasn't trying to hear none of that shit we was in there talking about. He came in there and I drowned him. I put him in the water and drowned him. Period. 
Uh, rocks cry. I can't fuck with American bloodlines of the gods of civilization. Can't nobody go source that book and use it. Um, because it's a lot of things he, he didn't have a, a proper understanding on. And what y'all need to understand is he wrote it from a Christian perspective. This guy is a Christian. He wrote it from a Christian perspective, bro. That's why he's talking about the black King David and the black, this black, that, and then <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, source that up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, y'all, y'all know me. I, 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 I spent a lot of time with Horace Butler. I know how to get him. I know can't none of y'all fight with that book like he fight with it because he gonna use some things that's not in the book. His understanding changed once he got around us anyway. So the, the shit that he learned being around us. That's why he came out and said his next book was going to be, you know, basically on the, on North America. Cause he, he really kept you out of North America, bro. If you're reading the book, I'm trying to figure out how the book going to help you out, niggas. Half you niggas ain't got a passport and you ain't been to damn sure ain't been to Peru. You ain't been to Mexico. So I don't see how the book can help you niggas. If you ain't no Christian or Hebrew Israelite perspective type of nigga, it ain't going to help no Indian. He don't know nothing about uh, uh, North America. That's that's that was his weakness, and he 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 probably won't admit it. Maybe he will. Um, I got a tape on him when he gave me high praises in that uh, one day. I, I got the tape. Um, but it was a lot of things he ain't know. So I, what I would say is, um. Can't nobody fight with that book but him. You know, that's what I seen. It's, this is not an Abo movement or anything like that. I, I don't know where that came from. Um, me, myself, uh, personally, uh, I feel as though everyone has their own story. We all have our own unique journey. And um, and I get everyone that right to uh, identify with uh, their family heritage. You know what I mean? But uh, in my case, uh, it's not a guessing game with me, uh, my family. Yeah, I've asked people not to talk about David behind his back while he isn't here to lift him in or defend himself. I personally know David, and I said earlier that I'd like the colorism to stop between, you know, melatonin levels, because I assure you, David is a Shemshia and Clinkett man, and it's not up to you to define who is and isn't. And I'm speaking as a Yen Yedi Shah, matriarchal woman of my clan, Gunish Chish for being on stage. Can you explain to me, Big, what your group meant when you called Native Americans $5 Indians? No. <laughs> ah, can you explain to me, Nia Shah? Uh, she probably like Rod Hayes. Uh, Rod Hayes talk about raising the matriarch and the um the mother clan. Listen to this white lady tell me, uh, sports Nia Shaw, and then they then they always go off into a, a English word after that. And that's why I keep saying, bro, how y'all let nigga play with y'all? <laughs> These nigga don't know they like, ain't nobody sitting there having no full conversations all day in them languages and they didn't come out of missionary or boarding school period you lying you a bitch if you lying lie why would you have programs in 2024 where you're trying to teach native american look i got another video i downed this native american right he thought he was hip he thought he was cool. He was hip. And uh, when he got real, the nigga will tell me, hey, man, I'm a card carrying member. I said, I don't fuck about that card, nigga. So, but one thing out of that conversation, I downed him. Uh, but one, one, one thing out of that conversation that was important that he brought out was the fact that the language, they teach you the language. 
You know what I mean? You go to the, at school, you get a you get a a, a, a tribal name. Uh, little bear and you know snapping turtle and you know they they give you they these are things that are happening at these um these programs that are being funded uh you know for these particular reasons but these are things you should learn at home right could we learn our shit at home the shit we talking about we learn it at home Uh, they are going to school, but the dude, he, uh, I, yeah, uh, he tripped out. Nigga asked him what, uh, what Thanksgiving happened at, he said, California. They thought, Calif- they thought Thanksgiving happened on the West Coast. Because they have no, you got to understand, Native Americans are coming from what is, 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 is what was descriptive as Plains Indians. So they're coming out of the plains area. So they took all of those. I tell you another thing: the only plain Indians were 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 called tribes. Nobody east of that was called tribes. We never we never had tribes. So niggas be like, "What tribe you from?" We 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 never had tribes. That that we never was identified as tribes. We had chiefdoms. If you say tribes, then a person that know better, then they'll, they'll automatically feel like you're talking about a Native American. If you say tribes, you're talking about Native then. We had chiefdoms. Um. Anyway, but the homie, uh, old boy, one thing he pointed out was that uh about the languages. How he got his nickname? Like he was like, like I can, I can, I can't speak the language fluently, but I can say like greetings and you know this is some um Rosetta Stone shit. You know they they teaching these niggas this shit. They don't. It's not a uh, coming from the soul. A nigga don't have a full understanding on it. Is so that's how the white girl gonna hit me up. Jeez. And, and, and then start talking English. They got one or two good Indian words they remembered, and then they go back to, they revert back to English. Americans, $5 Indians, you should be on stage. Can you explain to me, Big, what your group meant to defend himself? I personally know, David, and I said earlier that I'd like the color. Hey, I'll get my likes up. Get my likes up. You know, melatonin levels, because I assure you, David is a Shemshia and Clinkett man, and it's not up to you to define who is and isn't. And I'm speaking as a Yen Yedi Shah, matriarchal woman of my clan, Gunish Chish, for being on stage. Can you explain to me, Big? What your group meant when you called Native Americans five dollar Indians? What did that mean? Please explain. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, no problem. Well, uh, it's it's not a secret. Uh, I, I hear y'all speaking about um, anti-colorism. Uh oh. Come on, bro. I'm. <sighs> Come on now, man. Man, this white bitch series, or uh, uh, what? Is this white bitch series? No, this hoe didn't. Let me tell y'all something. Man, my mama taught me, say, man, don't never let nobody play with you. Man, this bitch out of her mind. This a white hoe. Cherish, I know this hoe. Right? Bitch, uh, she stopped putting up her profile picture. She laid in the tanning bed to that motherfucker damn near turned red like a tomato. Oh, uh, listen, bro, I'm mad, man, 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 man. Oh, my fuck, man, people, people don't even understand, bro. When I say I'm gone, how many hours did I really gave to the game? My impact, even in the Native American community, I made them respect me. They know, big T. Oh, of course. But check this out. 
like I say, everybody got a victimhood story. But I'm, you know, you you not finna come in here and play victim on me. Don't never let no nigga play. Bitch, you a white bitch, you a colonizer. And you gonna stay that. Period. So, I'm finna play the race card on them. Of course, nigga, what you thought I was finna do? Nah, these nigga looking at me crazy. Hey, what? Hey, nigga, I'm finna play the race card on that motherfucker. Hey, nigga, what? I'm finna go nigga on them. Why not? Why not? Listen, bro, or do you hear the conversation? You got a white bitch sitting here playing victim. I'm finna fall on the floor and, and play races and play the race card. Man, I'm finna fall on the floor. They hung my ancestors. Oh, they carried them over in a boat. They was at the bottom. They fed them. They fed them breadcrumbs. Yeah, I'm finna fall on the floor and, and go nigga on them. You don't never let them white bitch, bitch try to play on me. Bitch, no, you didn't. Bitch, I am a slave. Bitch, I'm a runaway slave now. <laughs> <laughs> See, because everybody, what people don't know, it, all of these people have been given an identity, so they have been given a story. All of their story comes with a victim uh, story in it. Niggas just don't know that, right? The, the most popular victim story is the niggas, though. So, yeah, you ain't going to out-victim a nigga. No, bitch. Bitch, I'm not a white bitch. I'm going to fall on the ground. Bitch, stay at home. Oh Jesus! Oh, oh, oh Jesus! Jesus! Yeah, I'm way in the water, children. Way in the water. I'm finna go. Oh uh, yeah, why not? Why not? And we in court, nigga. The jury looking at me. I'm already guilty. To proven innocent. <laughs> nigga, nigga, we got a, a case, nigga, these niggas that assaulted a white native. Nigga, they did took off on a white native. Nigga, I, nigga, we, nigga, they didn't call the commission, the BIA. Nigga, I'm in that bitch, nigga. Hey, what, nigga, what you want me to do? Nigga, I'm looking at life plus 10. Man, it ain't a jury in America, nigga, that's gone. Nigga, I'm I'm guilty to proving innocent, nigga. <laughs> Say, nigga, I, we got a case. Them nigga down the white boy playing native in that hoe, nigga. And that ain't trying to figure out what is a $5 Indian. Big. What did your people mean when they called David a $5 Indian? Cause them hoes would even give me a, a a a a public defender. Listen, fam, I couldn't even. I said, damn, y'all ain't got no 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 uh public defenders or nothing back. Man, them hoes wouldn't even give me a public defender, nigga, in the court, nigga. I didn't got a call. I called a case, nigga, for a, a white boy, nigga, a five dollar Indian, nigga. I'm on trial, nigga, Native American court, nigga. Bullshit, you not, nigga. Swear to God, nigga. I'm sitting here like, nigga, what I'm gonna do? Nigga, I ain't got no attorney, nigga. These hoes finna hang me, nigga. Nigga, I'm, uh, yeah, man, I'm going to the gallows, nigga. They finna, uh, hang my ass, nigga, at high noon, nigga. In my cowboy boots, nigga. Yeah, nigga, uh, so, so, uh, yeah, uh, I did what any, uh, great, uh, thinker, uh, any nigga would have done. Oh, uh, nigga, I, 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 nigga, I went civil rights on them niggas there. I say they sprayed us with water. Ho. I went mouth. I went Martin Luther King on they motherfucking funk ass. I had to, nigga. What I'm gonna do, nigga? All lawyers against me. I might not get to the mountain top with you. I have a dream. Yeah, nigga, I got the goddamn right. Y'all finna get up off me. Uh, it's not a secret how, quote unquote, Native Americans treat uh, melanated people. Okay, it's not a secret. And so, uh, 
Five dollar Indian. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Hold on, I'm sorry. I want. I want to answer your question. Black at this rate. One mic. One mic. Okay. So, uh, so with uh, the colonization of America, one of the things was colonized as well was the uh, was the tribes, and so. Uh, yeah, I thought that was colonizer talk. Gonna <laughs> shoot. When he's talking about the $5 Indian. <laughs> oh, girl, white lady told me, yeah, I thought that was colonizer talk. Bitch, I thought you was the colonizer. So, uh, what, what's, what took place? Uh, um, I ended up getting the public defender, right? Uh, Native American out of Oklahoma. See, the other natives, they was like from uh, Minnesota, Dakotas. Uh, New Mexico, Alaska, Arizona. They was coming out of them zones, more, more, more West Coast based. Uh, this one brother, he was out of Oklahoma. This this one native, he was out of Oklahoma, and uh, different culture. But they, you know, it's an all Native American room. This is where they build it. And then you got like older, the older homies in there, right? And um, I had kind of like had run-ins with them like before it went down, so they was they was they was pretty nervous about like bringing me up. It was one point like I was there, and they was like, you know, they trying to get his attention, and they like, hey, that's the nigga right there. Like he he steady coming out, <laughs> steady coming out of the mic. Like hey, listen, I mean, they go, they, that's him. Like let's get him. Uh, but the day elder, he he, you know, he had already rent had rented it to me, you know, a few times. Some more work. Uh, he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't get in the line of five. So they 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 went um political with it. They was like, if he want to come up, you know, we'll let it, you know, and um they wanted to just check my temperature. So uh, a a a, a, a guy to, uh a native out of Oklahoma, he stepped in, and uh, that's his that's his spear right here. Like that, it's it's actually a real thing. You know, white people did uh did sneak onto the roles. They did you know lie to get on the roles. They did murder indigenous women and and, and their relatives to get on the roles. Purposely uh, to to steal the mineral rights. You know, to steal the indigenous mineral rights that was there. Oklahoma was built on the death of the wealth of Oklahoma, the white people built off the theft of the mineral rights, and that was what happened. That that is the real story. And as indigenous people here in Oklahoma, I am in Seminole, so you know I, I can speak on that and have relatives that you know uh, study you know the roles and, and, and from, from the tribal roles, freedom, freedom roles, everything. It is that um, that with, how do we as indigenous people, you know? tell that story, tell that narrative to where we can have an understanding of that. Because in Oklahoma, we do know that there are white natives in Oklahoma. The natives talk about, you know, the white natives in Oklahoma that family members were never really native. And that's, that is the truth. That's a fact. But, you know, now, unfortunately, because of, of the politics, you know, things like that, we're, we're, we're left right now with what we got and we're going to build from that. You know, so it's going to take, it's going to take work but it's going to take these conversations. Um, I know, Cherish, you keep saying, um, don't mention um, your relative's name. Um, that's that's great. This this is primarily well, why they do it. This, this is my name, and I'm in the room. So no, I, Hold on, y'all, because old oh boy now... Now I didn't fucked around. They got a Native American. Uh, 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 uh. They gave me one of them public defenders. So I got a Native out of Oklahoma. Y'all see here a little more hip. You know, he a little more into the. You know, he he got he listen to hip hop and rap and you know he know uh 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 them Indians in Oklahoma got fat asses. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he jumped out there and he told them the real, no, it's a real thing. You know, we do know that white folks came and took, you know, got rich off the indigenous people lands and, 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 and I'm gonna be honest, uh, they, they was, they was not happy with, cause they like, who side you on? So I got a court appointed and he jumped in there. Um, uh, they were going to give me life. 
Oh, uh, but 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 uh the Oklahoma native, like I said again, two different cultures. The the Oklahoma, they are the you know, is what Washington DC is uh for Native Americans, right? For its political uh government standing, right? Is DC uh Oklahoma is what DC is is to, to the United States. Um you have you have the 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 plane the great the uh niggas coming out of the Great Lakes and that Canada and First Nations and all of that type of wait till my lecture, bro. Wait, don't don't fucking look at me, nigga. And all of these niggas that been running around here caping for these Native Americans and playing native with these nigga. Watch how I work, nigga. Yes, it's personal. It is personal, nigga. What I'm about to do, it is personal. And for all of these niggas that ran around here and they were pointing at these people and they were hoping these people was right. All these niggas out here following these people, telling us to go back and listen to these people. And 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 you're not even traditional, and you're not that's not tradition. Wait till I get through with that's not tradition. Wait till I get through with you niggas. That's not traditional. And we not just going to come out here and say this ain't right because we feel like it ain't right. No. We not even going to tell you that it's not right. We're going to come out here and lay down the facts on what happened. We're going to use names. We're going to use dates. We're going to use events that anybody can look up. You can Google it and you probably get 20, 30. It is so obvious, nigga, that the truth was hiding right in your face in plain sight. And that says a lot to a lot of these people. Y'all feel like a great researchers because they've been had this opportunity to do something about this. They've been, I mean, the information is hiding in plain sight. But that says a lot to these niggas who y'all feel like a great researchers. Best that ever did it and got away with it. So, uh, so check it out. Uh, 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 so Nancy is a. So okay, so 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 what happened was, damn, I forgot. So after they down, so you got white boy David, right? And then you got an essay. That's the nigga who teach the language classes, white boy David. And then you got an essay named Robert. I forgot about it, cause. You got an essay playing Indian name Robert, right? So Robert, the essay, he like, man, fuck all that. You know that we supposed to be getting down on these niggas. Oklahoma nigga then jumped out there and that sound like you riding for him. So the essay, he break a, a Budweiser bottle. He break a Modelo bottle on the side of the curve. And he want to come at the Oklahoma native with it. He on some fuck that peace shit, nigga. Fuck that peace pipe. Nigga, I want to fight. Them niggas just jumped me. We beat shit out of Robert. Oh, uh, yeah, we just <laughs> smoked that nigga game. In that. <laughs> uh, nah, we had a real army, nigga. We did roll call on them Native Americans, nigga, and fucked they head up. Roll call. Look at it. roll call and nigga everybody and we fucked them niggas up and then we stepped to them and we start asking them niggas what's their surnames and then they start trying to it, we start asking well why you got our surnames then they start trying to say well we was giving these names in school but well, damn did they give you little bear didn't they call you uh a uh, little bear and, and snap little red bear uh, Red Dove and all this shit, nigga. Didn't you get that at school too? So you just got everything out of school house, huh? Let's walk. I, I know. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you, uh, bro. So that's why this conversation was started, and it's, it's not a bad thing. It, it's a good thing. You know, I wish, I wish, you know, your relative was in here. Um, to, to you, Robert. You know, I know you went in there. Um, and and you know you. You know, you wanted to go in there for your own reasons. You know, I don't know what happened in there. I can't speak on that. Can I speak now? Sure, you, you can know, speak. Sure, why the, not? Big, big, 
the chief is uh, you know, for him to come in here and express himself is a good thing. This is how the dialogue starts. This is how the understanding starts. You know, <coughs> if we can start here in this room as opposed to well, how let me how, talk there. Let me how, let me let you talk. Set. Okay. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Is a want to fight me. See, the dude from Oklahoma, man, uh, like I say, these are two different coaches. Robert them coming out of New Mexico, Arizona. They Plains Indians. And the Oklahoma nigga, he, you know, Robert ain't feeling this shit. Nigga, well, let's rush these niggas, cuz. You over here, nigga, like, who side you on, nigga? Fuck you mean? White folks came in and stole. Nigga, my grandma white. And she grew up on the reservation, nigga. Oh, uh, fuck you mean white folks came and played Indian and got on the roads, nigga. You don't come out here and tell her that. Fuck it. Big chief type cat. Mono and mono. Come on, I want to fight you. So Robert want to fade. Mind you, both his eyes shut, right? Because <laughs> we just beat the shit out the nigga like 30 minutes before this conversation. <laughs> That's the reason. So first... They get a call in, white boy, white native got down, and he a big figure over there. And then while they I got him on the operating table, another one roll in. It's a Robert got down. And they asking, who did this to you? And they saying, Big Chief. Oh, <laughs> big Chief Top Cat. So uh nigga, uh two in a row. And then we down the white girl. Oh, no, nigga, we got to call court. Fuck going on? Indians, then down, they, they down, they real niggas over here. They, what, nah, who is this big chief guy? Mo, call court on me. We was in that hole deep, too. We had on me. We was ready. Y'all ready? Strap up. We finna, yeah. We finna go rock out. So, it's they want to fight. Uh, What's up, nigga? You ain't, what's happening? I'm almost done, bro. I'm almost done. Okay. So in saying that, this is the opportunity for that conversation to happen. I hope. Good chief, I'll let you talk first and then I'll follow. Well, uh, well, my position to you, I really didn't like how you came here and um played the victim role, brother. Uh you were stern in your stance and your position that uh uh we don't know our history and then we learned our history from books. Yeah. And so uh, I want to know where that came from, because it sounded like you pulled that out your gut, out your heart. You said that like you meant it, you know, and why, why, why is your position? Why do you feel like every black person don't know their history and they have that's, to get it out of books? That's not how I feel. Okay. Well, that was your position earlier. Sure. That wasn't my complete position earlier. Okay. First of all, I recognize <laughs> the black people. Okay. And second of all, I wait, wait, say that again. I recognize the black freedom. I'm not, a, my people wasn't free. Yeah, I know, but I'm just telling you, all of the black people, I got to be let me finish. Okay. See, this is how you got your ass whooped the first time, nigga. All that old loud talking and all that, nigga, you better keep your motherfucking voice, nigga, uh, lower your tone, nigga. So you can see the animosity, cuz it's come out of scratch. You know, nigga done blacked his eye. You know, uh, he got his homie them there. He really fucked up because they ain't jumped me. And they letting him get it. So what's up? So even Osceola, even Osceola, they say he was he was part black. He's not a free man. He's straight up Seminole. Okay, so just let me finish talking. You ain't got to tell me. I want to recognize any degree. Any he said they, they, they say Osceola. Uh, wasn't a freeman. He was, he was, he was, uh, he was fully black. Nigga, you ain't gotta tell me that, nigga. I know I can take you through the genealogy. I can pull the genealogy up and go all the way from his um his real daddy. All right, because the nigga who they got on there is his daddy wasn't even his real daddy. That was just the nigga that took care of him. That's what a lot of people don't even know. It's not his real daddy. That's just the nigga. So Peter McQueen them wasn't even his grandpa. I'll be honest, I thought that was but when I went through it and I went through the records of his son, them, this the family, they tell the story. That wasn't even his real daddy. That's the nigga who his mama was fucking with who took care of him. He's black of African relative or black relative could come good at any any time in the timeline. But 
what I was talking about about the book was the one gentleman was saying that the Africans came and built the the temples, okay, in Mexico, and then they called me a Mexican, then they called me a white boy. They asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all call cousin Mexican. Probably was me. <coughs> I be looking for any insecurity. Pull out the ass, jab to the body. It's go to the body on them. Oh, uh, then he called me Mexican. Then Nick called me a white boy. Osceola. even Osceola, they say he was he was part back. He's not a freeman. He's straight up Seminole. Okay, so just let me finish talking. Uh, I want to recognize. Any degree, any black or African relative or black relative could come in at any any time in the timeline. But what I was talking about about the book was that one gentleman was saying that the Africans came and built the the temples, okay, in Mexico, and then they called me a Mexican, then they called me a white boy. They asked me why am I so light? You know, I got a little bit of Irish relatives. I never grew up with no relatives other than Indian. So. <laughs> I was just saying, from my position, I didn't read about being Indian. I've been Indian since I was born. I didn't, I didn't have to research it, okay? So they were talking about researching their identity. They went past the one lady. They said, you know who your grandma is? Do you know your great-grandma? Do you know your great Well, I know all that already, so I'm already in the community. I mean, that part of the looking up who you are, the other part, of it, I appreciate them trying to do that. The other part of looking up who they are, they were saying they they were here originally before anybody was. It says that. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> he said, bro, y'all got these people out here tripping, bro. They can't believe y'all niggas said. These niggas say, man, nigga came out and said that they the ones built the pyramids and the temples down in Mexico. He said, then they came out and said they were here before anybody was here. Bro, do y'all know how that sounds to these people? They never heard nobody say those. <laughs> them, niggas, them niggas in that business, Jim, you got to understand, nigga, these niggas that grew up on this little reservation in these projects, nigga, and they went to these four schools and they really thought that they was the people. I mean, they looked around and saw and, and saw no signs of greatness. They looked around they, they reservation and saw no sign. I mean, it points to no sign of greatness anywhere around this hoe. Nigga, you eating. Bro, we had to teach y'all how to form. White folks didn't teach y'all how. We niggas taught y'all how. Don't worry about it. I'm going to name the names and everything. We we'll name the programs. Niggas had to teach you how to form. You couldn't even feed yourself. You couldn't even build a house, bro. Can't build one a day. <laughs> Say, nigga, we laid the railroad tracks, nigga. We put up the 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 the, the, the power lines and all of that shit, there, nigga. We built the streets going west. Nigga, nigga, nigga on the wall. Who's the niggas nigga of them all? We were the interpreters, homie. Meaning, we had the languages. This shit y'all got is some shit a nigga rode down to control you. Don't worry about it. Make it of a Native American folk. Big old Indian. Thirty ships from Africa, and they were here. They built all the temples. They built this. They built that. And they're talking like thousands of years ago. So they read in that book. So that's what I was talking about. I was talking about you, bro. All right. Well, I say this to that. Um, I say this to that. Um, well, uh, I don't. I don't agree with you know some of the things that was being said earlier. But that's all goes with respecting others. You know, opinion when these open spaces like this. So. I do give people the freedom to dialogue, you know, and have a conversation go on. So, because you had a, you had, you know, when we, we got the bills going on, everybody not with us. You know what I'm saying? So, you might got a pan African, you might got a, no disrespect, <clears throat> <an> Aboriginal, 
Meaning at the time, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they weren't studying with us. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was some wild shit was being said that a nigga didn't agree with. You know what I'm saying? I think even points that Horace Butler was making. And so it was so many people and it was a big fight. So you couldn't really tell. You know what I'm saying? So I had to put that disclaimer. Listen, man, everything that was said, I ain't riding with. Because I heard some crazy shit in there, too. So we're saying we do know that uh, people did come from the Pacific. Uh, there were uh, people that did come uh, uh, through, through the Pacific. And uh, there were direct ancient trade lines back there. We do do the history. We do understand that connection. All we're saying is our position is not being respected. And for you to come and jump to a conclusion that we're African or we're not indigenous to America or that because uh, we're dark skinned, we can't uh, have a conversation about American Indian without uh, one of you guys present. I thought that was wrong. And, uh, I didn't say that. Well, that was David's position. I didn't say that, bro. Yeah, that, that was David's position. But you came in and said that we got to get our history out of the book. Everybody's situation wasn't that. You're taking me out of context. All right, what about your, uh, you brought up the fact about your granddaughter watching TV and the fact she's dark when she come around dark people. You said when she come around our people, we make fun of her. Why would you say that, bro? Yeah, nigga, you want to play? Oh, you want to fight? That hoe swung at me. That bitch, <laughs> oh, you want to fight? Nigga talking about I put words in his mouth. Oh, yeah, is that right? Well, bitch, oh, uh, take this then. Didn't you say, uh, uh, you got a black granddaughter? Ain't your daughter out there taking nigga dick? Ain't your daughter out there taking nigga dick? See, this is why you really mad. Come on, tell us why you really mad, nigga. You got a black granddaughter now, nigga. Oh, boy. I, boy, I like them insecurities. I'm finna take it there. Oh, you on well, bitch, you want to fight? That whole swarm? That bitch told me I'm putting words in his mouth. Oh, bitch, you want to fight? Oh, oh, yeah. Ain't your daughter taking nigga dick? Ain't you embarrassed? You got to walk around and your grandbaby's a nigga. <laughs> oh, 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 bitch, you swung at me? Okay. What you said? When Mike, when Mike, when Mike. You said I was only one person talking. I did not say that. I said when my grandbaby was watching TV, she seen her black black relatives on TV, and she goes, "There's me, Grandpa." Whatever you're saying right now is false, okay, brother? The All right, you said no, 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 no. Got him on the back foot. <laughs> hey, brother, I said <clears throat> when she was watching TV, she said, "There goes me." I I don't I don't know what are you talking. He shouldn't have told me that. I said, oh, that hoe on the back foot. He trying to get up out of the... Go get him, Chief. When she comes around... Let me finish. Let me finish. So the other thing I said was I'm proud of her. And I want to make the way for when she when she grows up in the American Indian community that she doesn't have to face stuff like that. So maybe I talk too quick and that's what you heard. And then you know what happened next? No, no, no. You don't talk too quick. And maybe I talk too quick and that's what you... No, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. You know I got you, right? You, go ahead and talk. Go ahead. You know I got you, though, right? In the room said that my black grandbaby is more indigenous than I am because of the <laughs> African drugs. And that was just ridiculous. And then they called me a white boy, and they said, that that girl you're holding, her black american makes her more Indian than, <laughs> than ever. Holy cow, I'm the one trying to make way for my, my grandbaby. Well, we're gonna leave the uh, we're gonna leave all of that out. It's, it shouldn't be a personal uh conversation, you well, know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think it was open you game after you. you well, I think David got what he was looking for, you know, and um, because David uh, David started that, I gave David the mic, I wanted him to speak, and the things that he was saying, yeah, that I, 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 I just, Robert say, Did I get what was coming to me? Ah, uh, ah, uh, let me see. Ooh, you can't even open your shit, huh? Shit, say nigga fractured three ribs. 
Uh, did you get what's coming to you? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, if I was to do it over again, yeah, I think we'll fuck you up again. Yeah. Bad day to come through Indian territory. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't a good day for natives that day. Yeah, tell me more, Big. Yeah, tell me more. Yeah, well, I, I really can close on that, man. Uh, Rob, tell me more, so Big. That I gave David the mic. I wanted him to speak. And the things that he was saying, yeah. That, I, I, I just, Robert, let him speak. Yeah, tell me more, Vic. Yeah, tell me yeah, more. Yeah, well, I, I really can close on that, man. Uh, Rob, uh, my situation wasn't really too crucial with you. I think uh, I just wanted to, uh, more clear, uh, clear clarity on uh, what you meant by what you had said about we have to get our history out of the book because uh, you came in questioning our you came in questioning our indigenous. Uh, 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 status here, and I ain't, I ain't appreciate that because we were melanated. And this African thing, we we not coming from an African perspective. Uh, we we don't believe we are Africans. We are American Indians, and so that's a different. Um, that's not that. You know, we're not coming from an African perspective. Like I said, I didn't agree with what they got. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't agree with. Yeah, that's it. Was, oh. <sighs> Shout out to the Aboriginals. We love y'all. <laughs> y'all our cousins, but <laughs> goddamn uh, uh, Aboriginals made it hard to them. <laughs> they got to talk to <laughs> They got to say some wild shit. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, nigga. And now I got to sit on the stand and defend this shit. Yeah, this shit here, yeah, all of the nigga paperwork and shit, nigga, that you know, certain things was thrown around, and nigga, I'm in here, got a do- duck and dodge and defend this shit. Yeah, everybody else's opinions was there, so uh, I just leave it at that. Can I say something? What's up, Chief? Turn up. Yeah, so, you know, um, we had this conversation numerous times, and Ah, I forgot about this point. Here come Rob Bourne. <laughs> so, 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 you know what? Me and Rob Bourne was cool up until this point. This is how me and Rob Bourne felt like. Rob Bourne never gave me a debate, neither. He never gave me a debate. I'm trying to figure out why I ain't never get my fade. Yeah, big old Indian. But we was cool. We had a good relationship. Uh, he was all right, dude. Man, he was a cool dude. You feel me? We fucked with each other. You see, he come in. What's up, Chief? And now I'm I'm bottom kitten and 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 what, what, what bottom kitten and and all this type of shit, right? But you know that day I was Chief. Every day before that, hey, what's up, Chief? Oh, oh, okay. Because you gotta understand, bro. Everybody that was coming over to the island, they was they had to come through, bro. That was that was that was that was my land. You you step foot on the island, nigga. Everybody knew. Wasn't no secret, nigga. If you come to the island, motherfucker, nigga, it was the chief. That nigga, legendary top cat, and the matriarch was strong. We had a, a huge matriarch, and they can fight. They can fight. Couldn't say too much about them niggas. <laughs> a lot of them niggas had that pussy, uh, but the, the matriarch was gonna scratch. And uh, so this how you know me and this nigga ended up falling out. Damn, they don't even want to play it, but. When you when we enter these groups, uh, as individuals, you are a little unique in the conversation, which is why I talk to you, because you can actually prove who you are and what you are. You know that majority of those people in that room, when they come into these conversations... Nah, right, boy, don't do that, bro. Don't do that, man. Don't do that. Not right now, bro. Don't don't go there, bro. Don't go there right now, bro. Don't do that. Nah, 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 don't do that, Rob Boy, bro. bro. That ain't no good look. Nah, bro, I'm finna drop out, bro. Don't do that, bro. You tipping, man. You tipping. 
Nah, bro, don't do that right now, man. Nah, don't do that right now, Rob Owen, brother. So, <clears throat> what's taking place? You know, the homie, he coming up there. Me and him, cool. But he finna try to get down on Indians and Aboriginals in front of the natives, nigga. And while the natives right here, now, nah, hold on, homie. we can walk around the corner cuz and you can get all the fades you want. But not in front of them, nigga. Nigga, I'm big chief, nigga. I, cuz. Ain't no way that I can sit here and let you handle these people who I'm here in representation of right now talking to these natives. Now, as of now, I didn't help my, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, because they thought it was going to be something different. I was going to come in there all crazy and wild, man. Nah, man, we had great representation. They're even going to agree to do what? Discipline their own. All right? They're even going to agree that their people came back and gave them a story, and then they got them in some shit when really it was the opposite. They went over there and started some shit. So they're going to agree to discipline their own. Here this nigga come. Cause I'm not finna let you get down on these people. How in the hell I'm gonna let you get down on my people, then I'm gonna walk back over there talking about I'm big chief. So when y'all see the nigga on the internet and he going crazy and he talking crazy about me and they hate me and damn this and that, this is where it came from. We was cool before then. But I'm not finna nigga in, in the name of this Indian shit, nigga. I'm not finna let you get down on no Indian in front of no no Native American. Okay? That's just I, I that's not gonna happen. Uh we 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 gonna be uh seen as a power, as a as a force to be reckoned with. And um uh, any nigga fuck with it, the ground gonna shake beneath their feet. Period. And that's what, uh, you know, a nigga let the Native Americans know. That's what they understood as they uh, kept getting bodies in the trauma unit that night uh, from niggas coming over there and getting their scalp took out. Uh, so, you you know what I'm saying? You're going to push my hand. Um, you're going to force my hand. Uh, nigga, I'm going to have to make a war chief decision, nigga. And um, I'm going to choose my people um, over any nigga, especially if you ain't know, and you ain't know any, none of that nigga. And um, now, nah, nigga, it's wartime, nigga. As I said, nigga, the ground will shake beneath your motherfucking feet if you're going against this. So I gave the homie multiple opportunities to think about what he was doing. If not for anything, nigga, where well, your black power this should have kicked in, nigga. We not finna do this in front of these people. Period. You got white folks, natives, Mexicans, everybody going again. You ain't finna do that in here. Okay, well, fuck it, nigga. I'm going to down you too. <laughs> All, I, all I'm saying is this. I'm going to leave it at this. No, nah, bro. No, nah, don't. Come on, man. Let you, like we can go into a room, bro, by ourselves and do this. Yeah, okay. All I'm saying to you, my brother. I dropped out of there. <laughs> I dropped out of there. Period. This is what they say. They know that. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not following him. Man, come here. That's another stop. Come here, man. He both come. And you know when you hear the nonsense. So, I. Bro, that nigga, get out of line, man. How you gonna get in front of these white folks, bro, with all this bullshit? Because he's a bitch ass nigga, like fucking mud. I'm about to take a bitch. Buddy, nigga, come on, bro. We ain't doing it. When I see that bitch ass, who is that? 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 Who is that?
<laughs> man, that's right, boy, man. This nigga had a whole conversation with himself, man. Man, I, he know I live, bro. I'm like, bro, boy, what you, I know you ain't about to in front of these folks. Yeah. See, niggas don't know the history. Y'all niggas don't know y'all history. Go do your homework, nigga. See, I was chief, chief, chief. And then I, I, I'm bottom kitten. Chief, 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 chief. Let me talk to you. Because when he came to the island, where well, he had to come. They end up taking some Indians' rooms, though. <laughs> nigga ain't never handled those like that. <laughs> Man, I want to uh, put my brother Dane on, man. Let Dane pop his shit real quick. Let's walk. OCO, my brothers and sisters, relatives, spiritual warriors, and free thinkers. In this segment, I will be covering some essential information concerning the term more and what it actually meant historically and now modernly. This was a highly favored request from my viewers, and apparently there was a lot of confusion that needed to be sorted out here. Those of you who- hey, Hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a few people, bro. Um, shout out to Hamden, Connecticut, the homie Chick, uh, for the love and the cash out, and shout out to Empress Awakening. Keep bringing truth to our ancestors. Appreciate that love, sis. Hey, y'all, make sure y'all jump on the like button. If y'all enjoying the show, show some goddamn support, niggas. 420. At least uh, put a nigga on some good gas or something. At least get a nigga some good gas or something. It's 420. Who, in fact, follow some of the religious beliefs of what I'm about to go over would not need to cover up your ears at any time during this video. This presentation is strictly served for educational purposes only. And just like all of my previous documentaries, or even those that I will soon release here. God damn, CJ. Well, okay. This nigga got the name CJ or uh, Angelo. Uh, the wife came through the other day. Uh, and, uh, Angelo. See, I don't know what to call you, goddamn nigga. Uh, artist. Uh, man, hit me on. Uh, <laughs> Hit, follow hey can a moderator drop my uh my link tree down there moderator drop my link tree hey cj go follow me on everything man send me a message and um on on social media or something so i can you know i can get in touch with you i can pass that to dane and uh ride hayes for you man um hold up hold up y'all let me show y'all one of the joints that the homie did All right, so this right here, this is what the homie did right here. So shout out to him, man. Uh, hit me up so I can let them know. Cause Dane said he want his shit. <laughs> yeah, hey, Rod Hay was on the show the other day. I told him, but Dane said, yeah, he need, he, he, uh, he trying, he, he want his. Turn up. The information will not carry any biased formatted beliefs, guesses, assumptions, or opinions in any sense. So with all of that being said, let's begin this segment with covering the biggest elephant in the room. And that is, are the people of color that resides in America today, descendants of the people that were once described as Moors? Now, the answer to this question depends on which of the two very important key factors in regards to this question that an individual subscribes to. These two factors are based upon what an individual believes by way of their personal faith in various religious doctrines or what an individual knows by way of what they could actually prove realistically. And here's what I mean by that. This is a Cybertruck, and Tesla did over 2 million units in pre-orders, which could equate to... According to the 1828 Webster's English Language Dictionary, it defines the word belief as, quote, a persuasion of the truth. 
further stating that belief is, quote, a word that is used for persuasion or opinion when the evidence is not so clear as to leave no doubt. But the shades of strength in opinion can hardly even more vague is the etymology of the term more, which is, quote, North African, Berber, one of the race dwelling in Barbary, inhabit of Mauritania, Roman Northwest Africa, a region now corresponding to Northern Algeria and Morocco, also applied to the Arabic conquerors of Spain, being a dark people in relation to Europeans. Their name in the Middle Ages was a synonym for Negro, being the nearest Muslims to Western Europe. It was used indiscriminately of Muslims, Persians, Arabs, etc., but especially those in India." End quote. Now keep in mind that these people who reside in the areas that I just mentioned do not call themselves Moors. Also, they do not all speak one particular language, nor do they have the same cultures, history, or even dialects, nor do they refer to their continent as Africa, unless they are not speaking their native languages, in which this should all ring a bell here. A Lebanese college professor who was born and raised in Shimlin, Lebanon in 1886 and then migrated to America during the year of 1913 by the name of Philip Curry Hitty wrote a book entitled History of the Arabs that was initially published in 1937, stating, quote, The Romans called Western Africa Marantinia and its inhabitants, Mori, presumably of Phoenician origin, meaning Western, whence the Spanish, Moro, and the English, Moor. The Berbers, therefore, were the Moors proper, but the term was conventionally applied to all Muslims of the Spain and Northwestern Africa. The half million Muslims of the Philippines are still known by the name of Moros, given them by the Spaniards on the discovery of the islands by Magellan in 1521, end quote. So, if a person chose to subscribe to this alternative and extensive research as being truthful, then that means that the Romans referred to the so-called Moors as Mori, which has a historic Phoenician origin that means Western which does not describe a people by their skin complexion, nor their religious choice, but merely by their geographical location, interesting enough, which should make you ask some questions. Like, with this author, Philip Hitty, being born in the ancient Phoenician city of what is now known as Lebanon, would he really know the truth and if so, does that mean that the Phoenicians are in fact the people that will be called Moors by some of you today? And if you didn't already notice, there is no pre-existing records or documentation that indicates some form of a great migrational period. Hey, Mashiach. Hey, Mashiach. You know, with that long hair, you know, you go to jail, they'll fuck you in prison, right? You know, they'll fuck you, uh, when, uh, laying your hat on, on your shoulders and shit like that, huh? You know, you do know that, huh? Uh, Brother Mashiach, I bet you won't come, I bet you won't get on the panel. I bet you won't get on the panel. Uh, why, what you got your hand a ponytail? This nigga then then pressed his hair and um uh, flat ironed his hair today, y'all. This hoe coming in here. This hoe then flat ironed her hair today. I bet you won't hit the link. That's what I bet you won't do. And it's another one of these punk ass niggas that I'm looking for. 
Cause I went back and watched the joint Ruben, a nigga named Ruben. I'm gonna slap the shit out you too when I catch you, nigga. But look at Mashia Indigenous Resistance. Ain't nothing indigenous about a Mashia and a nigga that's complected your complexion. All right, nigga, you need sunscreen to go outside. Ain't no way in here you gonna be indigenous to a, a place, nigga. How, why God? Would would, would 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 bring you up in a place, nigga, that you can't even goddamn your skin can't even handle the motherfucking sun rays, um, nigga. I bet you won't come on this uh this panel, talk to your flap flap jack eating that nigga, uh 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 flat what's that uh <laughs> fry bread eating ass nigga. I bet you won't come on this panel. He said he could hear the 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 Swahili accent. You a stupid ass nigga. Swahili is not an ancient accent. Swahili is a trade language, and it is not. Oh, uh, it ain't get. Oh, uh, look, nigga, why you talking? The same time they was passing out Swahili in America, the same time they passed out them fake ass Native American uh languages. Uh, let's talk about it. See the same nigga that funded. The Swahili language here funded the fake ass Native American language. Stuttering African. Uh uh nigga, I need a new tie. Tie shop working ass machine. I need a tie, nigga. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nigga, I need six new ties for my motherfucking dually, nigga. That's what I need, nigga. Oh, uh, nigga, you feel like fixing the change in the tie today, nigga? Do you? <laughs> you, feel, you feel like changing the tie today, nigga? Hey, look out, nigga. Mashia, you feel like you feel like changing the tie today, nigga? <laughs> nigga, I need I need my motherfucking tie chain, nigga. You feel like working on the car today, nigga? I nigga, do you feel like fixing my roof? You feel like putting the roof up, nigga? What you gonna charge me? A hundred dollars? I bet you won't come jump on this panel though. Nigga, I need some tires on my motherfucking cars, nigga. Bring your answer lot of eating ass up here, nigga. Come on up here. Come on, Angelata, with your hair laid down, looking like your sister. And what her flat booty ass it? What her big titty flat booty ass it? What your sister stop sign body built ass it? Yeah, bring her flat booty ass up out of here too. Pancake iron and boy back body built ass. Nigga, the link in the chat. Don't play with me, nigga. I grab you by your motherfucking hair, nigga. I grab you by your motherfucking hair. You feminine ass bitch ass nigga. What you got on blush too? Bitch, you want to lay your hat on like a hoe? What you got on blush? Hit the link, bitch. Flapjack eating ass nigga. Acorn eating ass nigga. Come on up here, nigga. Use the white man bitch. That's why you got your hair laid down like a caveman. You hoes ain't got no signs, nigga. You ain't have no comb. You ain't have no brush. Nigga, uh, if you say comb or brush, they don't even, nigga don't even think about you, you or your people. You think about a comb or a brush, you think about us, nigga. You ain't got no hair product. We had to make shampoo. Bitch, you got all your hair, your hair in your head, and y'all ain't have shampoo, combs, or brush. Y'all walking around this hoe fucked up. No culture. Acorn eating that nigga. You eating berries and acorns off the tree, nigga. What you think, you're an animal? Yeah, nigga, so you want a goddamn little just like the animal eat, huh? Yeah, you want to... You out here picking berries and eating acorns like a motherfucking squirrel. Come on up here, Michelle, pussy boy. Come up here, I'm a gray by your hair. I'm going to hold your head down and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm just going to keep it real. You want to wear your hair like a bitch? I'm going to grab your hair and I'm going to hit your ass with uppercuts. So 
uh, nigga link in the chat. Or get your whole ass from around here, because y'all know I don't play with you niggas. Bitch ass nigga, go steal a bike for me. Better get up out of here before I call ice on your punk ass. Get up out of here before I get ice in here, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finna call Trump, bitch. That's why I'm voting for Trump now. That's why I'm voting for Trump now, bitch. Uh, this Biden administration and you hold it getting bolder and bolder. Bitch, come put some tires on. Bitch, change the tire on my car. I'm, that's why I'm voting for Trump now, bitch. We're going to make America great again, bitch. We're going to get that wall built. You're going to get your flapjack eating ass up out of here, nigga. Yeah, nigga. you going to get your uh, 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 Pico de Gallo eating ass up out of here, nigga. What Trump at? What my nigga Trump? Yeah, you gonna get your pico the guy yo smelling ass up out of here. Man, get up out of here fucking up my show. Scare ass nigga I ain't finna hit no link. I'll beat the shit out of one of you weak ass nigga. Fuck out my block. Somebody blow his brains out. Nigga ain't wanna come. He caught that pussy. You don't wanna hit the link. Uh down that nigga, make sure he don't come back around here. Fuck out my check. I thought you was a defense league, part of the defense league. Uh, nigga, come take up. Nigga, Trump 2024. Uh, bitch ass, nigga. Spanish cars, conquistadors, they call it the Seminole Wars. But the key reason they call it the Seminole Wars is what we need to be trying to figure out. Because mm -hmm. we need to find out what the word Seminole means. <clears throat> Right, and the root word is semi. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Semi mean part or half or almost. Okay. It's, it's a portion of something. The Spaniards claim they called us Seminoles because we were an admixture of tribes. We weren't an original tribe. It was tribes, conglomerate of tribes. Mm -hmm. Now, they was telling the world in the Seminole Wars, the black Seminoles was runaway slaves that ran away to Florida. Mm -hmm. Now, before we go any further with that concept, anybody ever heard in anybody's history book that the slaves fled south to escape slavery? Mm -hmm. I heard it. Where'd they go? I mean, that's not south. They said north. I mean, they mean they meant they said they escaped north. Yeah, to escape slavery, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is Florida north? No. Nope. Or south? South. <laughs> so all of a sudden, now they escaped into the south, and this is where the hotbed of activity is, primarily in the southeastern portion of the country. Mm -hmm. Right. So, do we got a map in that collection? Let's see. Uh, right here, I think. It's a map. Hey, shout out to Chris McBride um, in for the love in the cash app. That one of the maps you had? Mm -hmm. Showing where the uh, Seminoles were. If not, it's going to be explained in the uh, other posts anyway. Okay. You see that red line? Okay, you want to build that back up? All right. Hold on. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Scroll down under the key. <coughs> the Seminoles. Scroll down on the picture so we can see the map. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to let Y'all make sure y'all on the like button. The, 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 the uh, purple represents chicken. That's right. And the young elder. Blue represents uh, Cherokee. Mm -hmm. I want the people that's watching to see it too. Mm -hmm. Now I do want to say this here. I haven't seen this. Thought it was an interesting topic. I know Rod and Elder always do bills. Um, I, you know what? If I play this for the gully in the seminar with Rod, then I, you know, I play, I play one of my joints. I will let y'all pick if y'all want to hear gully history. Or similar history. I doubt if y'all heard 
we could do Gullah or Simon. I did both. Um, yeah, I did both of them. Hoes, so we'll, we'll figure that out. We'll see what they have to say about it, and then we'll um, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll add to the conversation. Is what well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 yeah, they That's got to be in yellow. Red is the Seminole. How they they coming across the Gulf? Yeah, how do they get across if they ain't got no boats? <laughs> but look where they going. You see where they are going, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the Trail of Tears. Mm -hmm. We was actually moving in the opposite direction of the arrows. And they was moving with the $5 Indians backtracking on where we left so that they can feel our um our encampments our villages and turn them into reservations mm -hmm. so this is the pattern that they shown they saying that we went west but when we read the story about the seminal wars we gonna find out which direction we was really going mm -hmm. and i ain't the one wrote this shit I ain't write this shit, Elder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing out what I see. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah, I got you. This right here, this right here, fire. This right here, something. This right here, something to think about. Mm -hmm. So we letting the people get a chance to come in. We at 85 now. As soon as we break a hundred, we gonna take off full All flight right. on this shit. All right. All right. So uh, the um, start is the pictures that's actual screenshots of an article that tells the history of the Seminole Wars or the Gullah Wars. Mm -hmm. So go to the folder. We had 90 of them. So this might give us right on time. Let me go back to the first picture with you start because they are in order how you sent them to me. Right. Let's go back. Let's see what the uh what the layout looked like. Then I can tell you where I need okay, to be. Okay, okay. All right. Let me blow it up. Okay, the reason why this picture is in here, you see the red circle right there? What, 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 what? The picture you was just on. Go back to it. Okay, right here? Yeah, we just gonna go through the pictures. All right. Because they all, them, they just in here for uh, reference points. Yeah, right there. The second one, go to the second picture at the top. Okay. Because you already had the first one was tied, right? Then the second one, you had it up, but you took it down. No, not that. Go back over to the left two pictures. I got it. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the other screens. I need to be looking at the same screen you on. Okay, <clears throat> right this is the picture you're talking about with the red circle on, right? Right now, you see what it's saying there? Yeah, it says uh, Oxman Bay praying in front of Mongolian. I can't see that. Okay, right. now blow the picture up so that they can see what's going on because you wouldn't know that this is not a pilgrim in the uh, so called Indian, except for the way that the Mongolians dressed over there was different. Mm -hmm. The leather they used was from the yak, which is a different texture from the leather we use from the bison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So mm -hmm. you'll see that they they uh, guard, it looks more um, harder leather. But remember, also another reason for this picture right here is I told you that the Moors was fighting Seminoles. Mm -hmm. I mean, was fighting uh, Mongols, and they was capturing them, using them as servants and slaves, and that's who they brought over here and passed off as fired all the Indians. Mm -hmm. This just showing you a Moor doing a lot in front of the Mongols that's obviously about to kill his ass. That's fire, man. <laughs> See what I'm up? Yeah. Okay, now, this picture right here is important. You see those swords on their hat? Mm -hmm. All of them were sworn by a death oath, including Kirkman Bay. Mm -hmm. 
but he couldn't leave Millie Hill in there because he was dirty too. Right? Was dirty. Yep. So uh, it was a couple of more people that left the Morris Science Temple after the funeral of Noble Drew Ali, but they became FOI later on. Hmm. But we're not going to get into that. That's going to sidetrack us. But the reason we got this picture is so you can see these motherfuckers are sworn to secrecy. That's Gerald Ford at the top right. See Kirkman Bay top center. That's motherfucking J. Edgar Hoover top left. Um, I think that's Eisenhower on the bottom left. And that's an actor. I forgot his name. But they all, that's all from the ancient. I know these are history of president. Sure. Mm -hmm. This is all the Arab, ancient Arabic order, the nobles of the mystic strain. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what that's all about. Okay, go on to the next picture. This is a crest of the black nobility. That's how black them niggas is. We black, but we ain't that black. Uh -huh. That's because their heart is that black. Straight chaos beings. But they ain't the chaos beings like we are. We chaos beings from the order of the light. Yeah. So they come over here with a different energy. Truman. That's the cross. president that's cross. Seen, the president the cross. Seen with Truman. Okay, now notice the colors. Yeah. Colors is always important. All right, let's go on to the next one. These are Mongols and Huns, or what it say at the top? It says that's Latin. We ain't gotta try to read it. It's Latin. Oh shit. Yeah. Look at the bottom of it, see if it got something written in English. No, nah, that's, that's the whole picture right there. Okay, now these are the same motherfuckers they passing off as five dollar Indians mixed with pale skinned Europeans. Okay, let's go. I wanted them to see what it they look about like. The type of uh, the type of race, but yeah, it says something about the type of race that what and I, I know this right here is like Latin is what Q is what typo, like type. yeah, other Asiatic continent, yeah, it's what types of races from the yeah. Asiatic continent, yep, yeah, that's what it's saying, yeah. I didn't want to translate it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> since, since you, you know, pushed you know, the issue. Off of overtime or just seeing different shit, I, I can just translate some of it because I know a little bit of Spanish. Okay, now look at these people. Yeah. This is a picture. <laughs> Your Seminole Nation fighting against the uh, enemy. This is what we looked at, like. This is how we dressed. Mm -hmm. That's right. The, he might now you notice we got different styles of dress, different head gear, yeah, because we a conglomeration of tribes right now. Mm -hmm. That's fire. Okay, let's go on to the next one. That's fire. How you got there right there? Okay, that's the map we went over earlier. Right. <clears throat> now, what this say? The goal of Seminole to defeat U.S. Army, Christmas Day, 1837, the Battle of Lake Oka Okeechobee. Okeechobee. Okay. That was one of the uh, one of the most definitive battles to curb the um, people being taken as prisoners of war and used as servants. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, anybody, um, if you know, you really wanted to go deep in, in some Lake Okeechobee history. Um, the other day, um, I think that was on the another panel, dude was saying that the Mayans had just disappeared. Fucking niggas just disappeared. So what do you know, magic? What do you say, these niggas, magicians? Um, again, when you go by just whatever a nigga tell you, you know, those are the results you get. Uh, Lake Okeechobee is, uh, was inhabited by 
people who were later called Mayans. Bloodlines of the God, part five. I mean, we go into an extensive breakdown. The areas, the tribes, who was kin, who was who, the areas that they controlled, everything, you know. Um, so when I see Lake Okeechobee, um, first thing that come to me is Mayan. Um, you know, the canals and everything that they built around that they 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 built those, those were man made. Uh they controlled the Cuba to um the Yucatan, the Gulf, the whole Gulf area there. You know, Louisiana. That's why you have Louisiana tribes in Florida, such as the Chittimachi, Chittimachi Indians. <laughs> well, you you have them um with you know territories in Florida. And not only just being there, you know, as let's say uh fishermen or uh, no, they are ruling class. They are part of the ruling class in the particular areas that they're in. You know, um and these are things that they go on and see it, you know, um a nigga put an African narrative on it when, when, you know, I don't want to hear nothing about a boat in Africa. Nigga, don't put African boat on side of each other no more. Ever again, nigga. Because remember, y'all walk. You niggas, oh, uh, I need a ride. Give you five out of room around the corner, ass niggas. That's y'all. Uh, catch an Uber, bitch. Yeah, next time, Uber. Instead of walking out of Africa, Uber, nigga. They got Uber now, nigga. That they call the slave system, which we're going to get to that in a minute, because we need to find out what they really was doing with this emancipation shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you, I see somebody say, Yamasi. I wouldn't say Yamasi um, if I automatically thought about that. Un- watch this here. Yamasi was a confederation. Two totally different eras. They're 100 years apart. The Yamasi is going to fight in the battle in the 1715. Well, in 1815, 1816 to be particular, you'll get what they'll call the Seminoles. So exactly a hundred years later, and exactly a hundred years later from that, that will end the caste wars. That'll be the last war that the Mayans fought in Mexico. So they're a hundred years apart. What I said about this here with the Yamashi, the Yamashi would necessarily be these people who are the Seminoles. The Yamashi control the area what uh, Yamashi were under attack from those that was coming out of Spanish Florida and also they started being attacked by those who migrated from the uh, New York area coming down into the Great Lakes coming into Virginia Settling down in Georgia, Savannah to be exact, the West Oaks, West Ibos. They fought the um, Yamasi. The Yamasi, the late 1600s, 1680s, you remember 1670, Charleston become a port. So you have Indian nations who, who control this area right here. This is very, very important real estate and it's ancient charleston was old they got an old volcano on charleston uh back in the game charleston was like a utopia there and this 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 volcano erupted in um you know um caused the migration from there but this is very important that's why you got it the battle of port royale 
and, and for the Civil War, once they overtook that for the Civil War, became very, very key. But we see through Queen Anne Wars, the early 1600s and everything, all the way to the late 1600s, that battling over this area. Well, uh, tossed in the coming 1670, um, later after that, you get the Goose Creek men coming over from Barbados. And uh, and they align, you know, with these uh, Yam Yamasi people who would in turn become slave raiders. No different than, you know, the area that a lot of them, they grew up young or probably lost parents, maybe lost parents to those wars of that era of, um, you know, the slave raiders coming down, the people who would later be called Cherokee turn up. Um, this Iroquois, uh, you know, speakers that came down. And and we we can see from the villages down there, uh, the names of the villages, the names of the river system, a lot of them were, that was how they differentiated a lot of them from the Yamasi because to be honest, people that came from the Muscogee Nation fought against the Yamasi before, see, it's hard. And I always ask the Yamasi this year, um, what, what band of your Masi where you from because they had different ones and depending on different areas that you was in because some people are called the, the you know they'll go down to Georgia with the Yamakra and they'll come up and so we, you can actually if you look on the Spanish maps they actually have the names of the towns that are there they actually have the names of the chiefs if you really was to go into it and, and looked into it you had a people called Guale, I mean, which meant just like people of the tongue. They had different uh like languages, dialects, but for the most part, the languages were the same. But you had people coming out of the South Carolina branch, they they were a little different because a lot of them people were already there before these. How, how can I put this in and just keep it gangster? The people that became Muscogee in the 1500s was a confederation of people that came together. If we're going to be honest, these people were, um, they were conquerors. And they, they attempted to conquer, fuck attempted, they conquered their region. So when you're going through parts of South Carolina and the Carolinas, and you are seeing these these names that uh that uh tie back to quote unquote what would be considered Muscogee languages. It'd be hard to put the 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 Yamasi with them because we know the Yamasi was fucking with this. They had um, the, some of the groups that have become Yamasi did have affiliation with Spanish. This is why if you can go through the Spanish records and see, uh, you know, you can get the maps and the towns and all of that. Um, but two two different time periods. So for as the Seminole, after the Yamasi, the, the Yamasi, what did they do? The Yamasi went, that's bloodlines of the guard for. The Yamasi came down into Florida. A lot of them left out of Florida and went into Cuba. A lot of people don't talk about that. They went down into Cuba. A lot of them stayed down in, and um, um, we we get, because they, they like to say after 1715, they were destroyed. Uh, that's not true. We find Yamasi. Uh, man, y'all gonna make me go through bloodlines of the guard, uh, fire, bro. And um, could we break it down extensively in that we show the migration patterns of the, those people that did fight those wars that were considered part of the Yamasi Confederation? Uh, we even bring them all the way up into now Mikasuki. If you talk about the Mikasuki, then we could we could talk about Yamasi and these people being the same. We got to remember that the Seminole 
the Seminole and the Mikasuki wasn't the same people. Even a lot of the people that called it said Mik Mikasuki. See, the niggas brought up what you call him? He called him a Seminole. Osceola caught him a Seminole. Osceola banged the Muskogee. You know what I mean? He was he, he spoke Spanish. He 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 was he was bilingual. But um, I might play a clip on that man, and we we can go down there because in that. You know, we also show that a lot of people like to say Seminole or Seminole and call it runaway. Well, actually, it meant the opposite. So, again, I think it's important if we can categorize who was with who, what areas and territories they was in. Then we can see what the alliances came in at. We can even go further and see how long the alliances were. But, um, the Yamashi did leave and did uh, band with others. Now you had the Stono, the Stono Indians who who had that area of what Charleston was at in that area there. They were known for the sweet grass baskets and all of this type of shit, right? Uh, but they had they had been having trouble with with these new uh, people that was coming over from Barbados and shit. They was having trouble with them. In the 1600s, before the uh, the 1701, 1703 Queen Anne War, before the Tuscarora War, 1711, 13. So by the time 15 to 17 came around, shit just exploded. That was the Yamasi War, uh, in which they a lot of them say it was the bloodiest war, but really the bloodiest war in American Indian history was the Natchez War with the Natchez down the French. That war was more bloodier than the Yamasi war, but they don't take nothing from the Yamasi war. But it do say a lot to those that was on the East Coast, those Cherokees on the East Coast. <coughs> because they are the ones who, <laughs> who helped them out. But again, if we could separate the nations down there, break them down, and especially to get to their origin, because you had... You had nations from Peru who ran, who ran, who had um, uh, villages or towns in Florida. Peru. I give you a, I help you all out on one. When you see the Moor with the Emerald Cluster, the guy holding the, you know, and they call, um, call him a Moor, holding, I um, mean, the Moor of Emerald Cluster. Well, he's actually a uh, mixed race. He's actually had Peruvian. Nigga mixed with Peruvian. Peruvian. Right? So, um, um, we get down there. I look at it a little different because you got nations down there who never had treaties with the Spanish, who never had treaties with the, in the English. Um, in fact, they were feared by these people. They were feared. They were revered. Uh, they spoke about the wealth that they had. They were cattlemen. So we know that that cowboy culture existed before then for his ranches being down there because we know as early as after the Treaty of Gent, you go to 1807 when they built the Federal Road, the same Indian agents that was a part of the civilization plan that George Washington sent down to the South well, they went down there and they wanted ranches and cattle livestock set up the same as the Indians had already had down there, right? So uh, we give an example with uh, uh, um, the Indian agent um, Benjamin uh, that came down there uh, and he was a um, agent to the to the Red Stick Indians. Uh, married Lavina Downs. Uh, well, he had a ranch built uh, by Indians, cattle, livestock, and all of this. Is showing that the cowboy culture was already present down there in the early 1800s. Um, but let's walk. Okay, let's go on to the next. One. Okay, now let's read what this say. It says the Seminole Wars, three related military conflicts in Florida between the United States and the Seminole. 
citizens of a Native American nation. Now look what it say, that this is important, which formed in the region during the early 1700s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That means that before the 1700s, what we know as Seminoles wasn't formed. Exactly. Okay. Right. Now look what it say. Hostilities commenced in 1816 and continued through 1858 with two periods of uneasy truce between active conflict. You see what it say now, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Now, this is, notice they call it the Seminole Wars. Mm -hmm. We ain't never had no truce with them motherfuckers is what they're not telling you. But let's go on to the next yeah, one. That's right. We ain't never back down. Go ahead. <laughs> Turn up. Now notice the name at the top of that. Yep. See the year? Yep. 1739-1858. Now read what it said at the bottom of the picture. The real, real some, I can't, I can't, is it the real, real reason, reason U.S. Okay, chattel slavery ended. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, so in the in the book Moors and Freemasonry, it say that the Moors was taking um, different people hostages, and according to their level, they would auction them back off. Hmm. Keep that in mind. Remember, slaves were supposed to be auctioned. Yeah. But now in the Moors, because of the war. Right in the Moors description, though they say they were captives in war that they was auctioning off. I'm, I'm going to put that up on our next one. I'm going to bring that book out so yeah, I can show fire. you what I'm talking about. Go ahead. That's fire. Okay, now let's go on in because we're about to start getting into some serious reading now. Into we got 200 people in this joint. It's getting down. It's going live. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, this is just another showing you the truth. 1739 to 1858 will be 1739 will be Stono. 1858 will be the the last the third symbol the end of the third symbol of the war. Um that's what I'm looking at. I don't know who made the meme. I don't even know if um because you got to understand through 1739 after 1739 you're going to go into the French and Indian war so the French and Indian war that's going to be 1754 to 1763 um after that you're going to go through the Pontiac rebellion then you're going to go through the civil I mean through the revolutionary war then you're going to end the Indian government in the North, right, in 1779. Then in 83, the Revolutionary War is going to end. 91, you get, you get your U.S. alongside your treaties with certain Indian nations who have control from of the trade routes going through from South Carolina through Tennessee over the mountains uh, to the Mississippi, right? And that's where the shock tide came into play for the Mississippi. But that wasn't being respected by those nations in uh, the Mississippi, especially them niggas out of Illinois. So after you get the Battle of Tall Timbers, which they're going to fight in the Northwest, you going then you're gonna get gent 1804, all of that, right? You gotta go through Illinois and those wars that took place through there. They had relationships all the way up to they didn't respect uh fuck the French and the mother niggas that was hustling in there. That was their territory. Um but we see that going up, but why that's going up, 1803 Louisiana purchase, um 1804, like I say, they they fighting in Illinois, nigga. But down in the in the Gulf from Florida, fuck this shit. Time out. 
got me teaching, nigga. I done already talked to you shit. What couldn't do you say, nigga? The work already been done. We ain't got to keep going over that, nigga. Just press play. The work I already done. Organized teach them of the team. All right, that was a powerful prominence and force. Um, and they had dealings with the French. When the French made to Fort Caroline, these were the people that 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 they were with. Um, they were assisted with. So it's gonna don't worry about it. When we come back, it's gonna be a bloodline tied up. Don't worry about it. Now, you have archaeology discover ceremony offerings and staircase inspired pyramid in um Chicola kit. Now, this is in Mexico. Very interesting because you have the staircase to this, this spiral pyramid monument in pre-Columbia, right? And it's found during the middle period. Now, they said it was abandoned after a volcano and they ended up resettling. Uh, the people had to leave and, and resettle. Now, you have this down here. These are the spiral pyramids. And as you see, the west side of the ceremony center, um, I didn't see the spiral pyramid go. You have to walk all the way around to come up. We see they put stairs there. But we have spiral pyramids down in Oklahoma. Uh, very, very old. Spiral mound. Shout out to them Oklahoma Indians, in Indian, man. All right. We're in Indian uh, territory. The story behind artifacts competing the spiral ceremony aligned with confederation of mound building nations, okay, called the Mississippian culture. Now, check this out. The other principal cities were in Etowah, Georgia, Moundville, Alabama, Cahokia, Illinois, near St. Louis, which was the biggest. The settlements rose to prominence beginning in 800 during a period of favorable time. Now, I want to show you this here. The women tended crop, crops like corn, beans, squash, all of this, you know, same shit the Mayans had. Now you have Spiro located in the Arkansas River and a natural passage between East and West grew a trade century. Now that's very important because when we come here and we look on the map, here's that connection. Everything they lined go Spyro, up. They go Moundville, Etowah, they go Cahokia. They go Cahokia. And we're not even understanding this is a whole empire that's taking place. Talk now to these uh, sophisticated cultures, they grew an influence in the Southeast United States from New Mexico to Great Lakes and formed Gulf Coast all the way to the Carolinas. Been speculated that Spyro people have contact with the mighty Aztecs. The Spyro had a highly developed religious center and effect political system that controlled the entire region. The complex was in use uh, in um, the culture, uh, they call it a mystery, but it's, it's really your history. Now let's check out the uh, Mayaka. Uh, um, now they were principal village in Florida. Try to us, uh, they they, they occupied the upper Saint John River. All right, now South Lake Noah was related to people called Dais. Can see them niggas be here? Yeah, they here. They be right around there. See, I'm from Texas. I'm way down here in Texas. But if I say that. Then uh 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 them niggas that come out the they know where the upper St. John's River at, right? They, they know where uh uh Lake George at, you know, they live it's right in their backyard. It might it might hit them a little different. They was along the Atlantic coast. Now the Mayaka, they were hunter fish gatherers and wasn't known to practice agriculture to, as, as well, uh like like the uh people that came before them, the Miami. A lot of the Tamukuan tribes were agriculturalists. They were seafarers. That's what a lot of people don't know. So, so I always like to tell the Hebrews, uh, they would have made horrible Hebrews. Cause all they eat is, is seafood. <laughs> These some seafood boy ass nigga boy. Uh yeah, they eat they eat uh crabs, uh oysters, uh uh, uh fish. You feel me? They weren't they weren't no agriculture niggas you, like that. You feel me? They spent most of their time on the water. And so uh, you know, when asked about the pirates, who was the greatest pirates, I chose, you know, um Rod gave a good one. He said the keys the doors, they were killers, they were jackers, they was heavy hitters. Uh Queen Elizabeth even had some heavy hitters. She had her pirates, Sir Francis Drake them. Let me. I'm. A, can I? Can I? Can I show him my? 
I'm gonna show y'all something in my genealogy. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm gonna bring something up in my genealogy, okay? That I had in there. Some I've been keeping in the back. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to find more understanding. And then I, I think I it, it'll break down the where bloodlines of the gods come from for as bloodline relations, right? But uh, I say this here. Um, all of these areas. If y'all see how many different nations are around here, right? How many different nations are around here, bro? Now, that's what. Um, get an understanding. I of mean, yeah, the Utina, I'm sorry. Um, who were a Tamukan people? In general, agriculture did not adopt by the tribes living in the south of Tamuka at the time of first contact. They um, shared um, traditions with the um, Saint John's um, culture with the freshwater Tamuka rather than the uh, AEs. Now the AEs people, uh, which they're still gonna be Ice. similar, uh, these Mayaka and the AEs people, they, they're still gonna have um, 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 similarities, uh, uh, heritage, you know, some right. of the heritage. Now these were native, these were native people that were paramount. Now what was interesting is that they share a language with the Chittimacha. Talk to him. Now, the Chittimacha, if you know the Chittimacha, and this is Florida. Uh -huh. Now, we see Calusa, Miami, the A's. We see them right here in this area. Pontano up there, Kyle. Pontano, these are all Mayan. Now, we Cali, see bro. Um, A's right here. Now, they share a language with the Chittimacha, Chittimacha. who are from Louisiana. What Chittimacha? So, we Ch find this Mesoamerican language in South Louisiana. Talk okay? To now, let me hear it get y'all out of here. Now, making um, all right. Now, in the recent newspaper, the Chittimacha language, uh, of the 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 Toto, we just gonna call them Totos. Uh, the find significant because has not shown the language in relative before, and also because what means understanding prehistoric of Louisiana. The results strongly suggest that the ancestors of the Chittimachi people uh -huh. arrived in South Louisiana after leaving for a long time in what is now Mexico. Talk to them. Okay, Chief. so we look at the Toto languages right here. And um, Chittimachi was promoted to be a member of the closest relatives of the Toto, uh, maybe the uh, Hawaiian um, languages. And right here we... Um, and if it, now you have the Chittimachi people, the Chittimachi, um, they they had indeed developed a highly uh, efficient wetland forest economy with the countless earthen and shell mounds. Okay, so just like we see with the shell mounds down in Florida, we're gonna find the Chittimachi down here building earthen and shell mounds as well. Okay, same and as we, we showed the, the connection same language and the culture in these people. And, and we was, started off in Mexico with the shell mound spirals and um Cuba. They know they got the even San Marcos, right? That they'll say the first community here, 1565, which would be built by the Tamuquan Indians, right? St. Augustine, which was built by material that came from Cuba, which was shell, uh uh, which was was they built in, in these shells. Somebody gonna say, well, they got shell mounds in China too. I know, nigga, we've been everywhere. And you ain't never there with your walking ass. Nigga still crawfish boiling and shit today. Nigga still fish frying today. You hear me? And so through seasonal hunting, they gather fish, crop, garden, produce a uh, substantial livelihood, rich material. Not only that, but melons, okay? They had watermelons. That Chittimachi was one of the people that was known for watermelons. And another place that we see the melons uh, being famous is in Florida. So is there a, a connection between those two? I have to look more further in there because I just thought about it while I was just talking. But the Chittimachi... That's a fact. Because if we go into the Tamukwans, Tamuk them niggas love watermelons. Them was some other watermelon eating that niggas. And they was out of Florida. Let's walk. Captives at Mobile, and um, you know, they'll end up going through a slave trade. So it'll be a war on the Chittimachi. During decades of this war on the southern edge, 
Chittimachi women and children became the core of French Louisiana initial slave population, while others were trafficked from the Gulf Coast to the Caribbean, all right, during the height of the war. Now, hold on, man. I ain't, we ain't gonna can't we ain't come to get all again. Can't let's just skip to the point to where you were talking about the similar news. Let's just skip that. We ain't gonna give a ball of the game. God damn, nigga. This nigga got this motherfucker dropping balls. And then on top of that, I'm trying to see is this the the joint. Fort Carolina, if y'all are not familiar with that, how we, we how South even South to it. South side of the Ultima Delta and Simon Jekyll Island. See this Darren and all of that. And so you got Tamuguin, and then you got Wale. Which, like I said, a lot of them niggas from the Gullah, Gullah, they gonna end up, you know, some of them will be known as Yamasi in those bands that was down there. Even though it's two different time frames, right? It's like talking about the toe tech, then you bring it up the ass tech. It's, it's like two two different time time frames. This was the king heart of Satoria. This is the what they call the moor with the emerald statue. So urban, what I was talking about earlier, this this right here, this is what I, this is what I was talking about. This is the picture of that guy, right? Now this, they they were the Satili people, okay? Now they were on the Santee River in South Carolina, okay? Now um the town of Sati Po or the place of Sati was the original capital. The heritage on the uh the Sati trace their heritage. Guess what, family? To the coastal desert of Peru, huh? Even through the Sato people in eastern Peru, oh, the cool. king of Sati, Sati Re would call themselves uh Parker Kuski, which means Parkers, or people of hybrid Peruvian, it's a Maya. All right, get out of there, T. Get out of there, goddamn it. Get out of there, T. Don't give them everything. We don't give them everything. Y'all know Big Chief got that it's in my blood in him too. That we ain't gonna give him everything. Yeah, Big Chief got that it's in my blood in him too. So you say the it's in my mixed with the pay rule niggas, and they rule the territory off the Santee River. That's what these North Carolina, these South Carolina. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying now. I get it. Let it leave them alone, man. Bloodlines are the going fire, man. Bloodlines are the going fire. I told y'all I went off in that bitch. That motherfucker got some of everything in it, nigga. In the ending was just so your mercy. Before we even get there, we know that. And this is one of the things that I used to get a Yamasi niggas trouble. I said, man, show me the Yamasi in in before the 1500s. Show me the Yamasi in 15. <laughs> but I knew what I was doing, right? Oh, uh, that's just like saying, show me the Seminole in the 1700s. So we'll see when these names get put these or these Confederates. Show me the Muskogee before the 1500s. Like, come on, bro. You know the Muskogee Confederation uh, is coming fifteen forty as a counter to this um, Castilian um, Iberian Peninsula attack. You know, on the goddamn ports die here. Cause these niggas, listen, bro. You know how many? First off, look, we just go by Florida. Ain't nigga all the way up that coast, nigga. Let's go from Jacksonville to Jacksonville. From since that's how they really count it, right? Jacksonville, Florida, and then you go up to Jacksonville, North Carolina. That whole territory they wanted it. So when everybody made they plots to come over here to the mirror, everybody went there first. French came 1563, Fort Carolina. That's what we were just breaking down. They was fucking with the Utina with the Tamuquin people, Tamuquin Indian. Now that's a confederacy because it's different forms. You got different branches out of that, but you got to know your shit. So, you know, I 
you know, uh, that's what Bloodline of the Go at Fire was for. We was going to go into it and break down. Instead of just saying Yamashi, we're going to break down the whole kingdoms, all everybody down here, who was running them, who they was fucking with, what they was tapped into, what they was traveling to. We're going to break down the Temuku, right? Instead of just uh, 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 generalizing, we're going to break it all down and spread everybody out and show everybody as individuals and 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 we find we start finding out like okay they got connections over here okay well there's connections here you got then you can see the connections in mexico you can see them in the gulf you can see them in cuba you can see them in louisiana you can see them in texas you feel me uh we're gonna break it down because everybody not the same everybody a different story but once you put those titles on top of a nigga then we all you know we lose we we step outside ourselves we become this um this this generalization this generalized form right how many niggas come off the santee river or banging santee indians today check how many niggas banging santee indians knew that that was a mayan uh nation come on now again earlier i said i hate to say it but these niggas was colonizers in the form, in the sense of conquerors, they they would kick the orders. So when earlier when I said the people that became Muskogee actually invaded niggas in South Carolina, in the Carolina, y'all heard me say that earlier, right? It ain't make sense. We gotta go to the, you know, we gotta go press play. I'm talking too much. You feel me? We gotta work. So, um. They would call that I have to say it because goddamn nigga would have coincided, nigga. If you look in the Mayan um oral story of uh, their genesis, and then you look at the the four four of the quote unquote civilized tribes, Shakta, Chigasa, we know their stories. The Kosati, the the you know, we were the branches that move west uh coming out of the land of the sun and all of that Corsati literally mean land of the big cat that's one of the names of it we come from where the big cats were nigga, the jaguars um so uh it, 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 it hit a little different when we when we go in the bloodline so so you can see how it's a maya is in south carolina and these people off the Santee River, which was a, a place, the territory that was ran by these Mayans. Man, I ain't gonna go uh, 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 bore y'all to death with, with all this, uh, but we did want to come get some work in, man. Uh, we, we, we been not on the block in a couple of days, man. And nigga probably think back in. Nigga probably think we lacking. And we really getting it cracking. Uh, man, I love y'all. As long as we got each other, we don't need nobody else. I'm gone, BCU. Hey. Usually my ex is enemies. But this is good for you Cause we didn't got closer now that you ain't with me All oh, that love that we had Ain't the way we go Hold on, they tell me I dropped the link In your family, love me like some family You know where you stand with me So when they ask, tell them Right now, right now Hold on, they tell me I dropped the link Hold on, pull up Link in the chat, link in the chat. Y'all want to get a pounder going with y'all? Y'all want to get a pounder going? We got 400 people in the building. Uh, we had 466, 30 of them niggas left. I don't know where y'all running to, nigga. Uh, ain't nobody live. Where y'all going? Bring y'all that back in here. It's 425 to dope up. Is y'all trying to get a pounder? I could really, what I was finna do, I was about to go eat. Nigga, I, said, I looked up, I said, damn, nigga, we been here four hours. I need to go eat. I know it's 400 people in here. Um, but we need, I need to go eat. 
Now, if if y'all gonna jump on the on the on the panel and and and, and run the panel while I go eat, uh, we can do that, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm hungry. I want some motherfucking burnt in brisket, nigga. It's four twenty. Devin Haney, uh, uh, Ryan Garcia tonight, and 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 they got LDBC out there in New York. Uh, um, they thugging. If it was in Vegas, I would have been there on every, on my mama, mama, nigga. I would have been in Vegas today if it was in Vegas. Um, uh, yeah, I would have been out there. Out, you know. But um, um, next time Haney fight in Vegas, I ain't gonna miss that one. Cause uh, I know I know LDBC gonna pop out, man. And I think that next Vegas trip, New York. I seen 78 time out the room. He ain't like the room and all that type of shit. You know, uh, Vegas, you know. And then Haney them, you know, the Haney's, they been out there in Vegas for a little minute. So, you know, they really going to be able to, uh, I don't know, 78 was like, Bill told me some places to eat at and shit. Uh, yeah, Vegas, Vegas going to be a whole different animal, though. So next, next one, bro, I ain't missing it. I know Black. He always be sneaking off out there to Vegas and pop up them niggas in the locker room on ESPN and shit. BFTB, I seen him out there, Lieutenant Drew Titan. Uh, man, next time Vegas, bro, I'm out there, bro. Y'all, y'all let me fucked up, bro. I'm, I'm, nigga, I'm in the city, nigga. Next fight, uh, after this, I doubt if they gonna get him, um, um, uh, Pitbull Cruz. Uh, I heard the Haney say they trying to set up. Um, the Haney's trying to set up a fight with Tiffany Lopez next. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that go. We got to get through the night though first. Um, but y'all be cool like y'all be cool, man. We gone. You always been a real one. Let it go. Let it go. Cross it. Bows it. Yeah. 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 And this this what I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this here too. Now y'all know y'all finna leave up out of here and be like, God damn, I should have been on the we should have got a panel going. Yeah, yeah, y'all finna get out of here. This should be boy the hoe. And uh they talking about great bill, and the bill could have kept going. I just need to eat. I just need to go eat real quick. Uh 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 I was trying to see who's gonna hold the panel down. Y'all gonna let 400 people. I mean, damn, y'all in that shit, nigga. It was 480 in here. Y'all wait till 100 niggas leave to decide y'all want to chill. Everybody just burned out. They pulled out the parking lot. Y'all let 100 niggas leave. This is what I be saying by missing out on opportunities. Y'all, y'all letting 100 trips pass. Y'all ain't been the one now, nigga, for the retire. And goddamn, that's what I'm saying. The more I ain't promised. Y'all let a hundred niggas leave a bunch this motherfucker, man. A hundred, a whole hundred. They could have been in the conversation. We got Sweet and Dread, uh, and Dread Son in the building. Turn up. Hold on, hold on, one second. Hold on, let me talk to you. Shit. Can we get some more people on the panel? Y'all let a hundred leave. Three eighty one is crazy compared to four. Oh, uh, and all niggas had to do was just jump on the panel as soon as y'all told me to drop the link. You know, I still had them in here. Like, I think like 18 niggas left. And I'm like, hey, come on, because I already know what's going to happen, niggas. They feel like the show is over with. We finna go home. Parking lot full. Nigga trying to get to the car for a uh, nigga being traffic. Yeah, y'all know when the movie go off, nigga, y'all ain't sitting there reading the clips and listening to the soundtrack. And all that shit, nigga. We could black folk, we know when the movie about to end. Oh, they caught the nigga, the nigga died, and you know, and uh, yeah, you gonna get up and start walking out. So goddamn nigga, you don't be uh caught in traffic in the parking lot. 
Uh, but y'all can turn up though. Uh, I feel you get something to eat. We got six people. I'm gonna tell you now if y'all gonna come on the panel, y'all need to jump on that now. Somebody might mess up. Hey, hey, this is Dre. Can you hear me? I'm uh, I'm real, real quick. I got uh, one question about the Seminole, and it, it's been a couple of different ideas I have heard presented on the channel. Like one person said that it was a Spanish word. Somebody else said it was not. And I'm just looking for some clarity. If uh, anybody can can share some discourse. Somebody said Seminole is a Spanish word? Yes, yeah, Sem Seminole. And then somebody else said, yes, yeah, Seminole, which would be like free people. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know one way or the other. I'm just asking like for some clarity. I don't know. Maybe they could be a topic y'all could talk about on the panel. Um, let me let me let me pin the link. Hold yeah, on. that's that. Yeah, that's a good start there. That's a good start. Though. Yeah, that's a good start though, Chief. It is. Sweet fella, you you driving the car, sweetheart? I got your back. All right. No, 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 no. Hold on, fella. <laughs> okay. That nigga <laughs> driving the car, cause Who he that? the one told me to drive the link. He let a hundred people out of here too. Who? Before he jumped on the link, I Who looked down you? there. I seen him say, "Drop the link." I right. dropped it. He let a hundred niggas go. I said, God damn. You right. Well, now, right, Feather. Shotgun. Feather was the first one to come up, though. All right, Ooh, that mean? Respectfully. Yeah, Thank Supreme. You. That nigga say, drop the link and let a hundred niggas leave out of here. They coming back. We need seven more. We'll right. be at 400. Y'all right. got to jump on the right. like button. Share the video out. Oh, we got to be a part of the conversation, bro. And Chief, hey, remember, bro, we used to be, we used to have 120 in the chat and we had 10, 12 hour bills. So, uh, no, bro, just on the body of work and, and then just the camaraderie amongst the people, bro, we can't just let 400 people just, we can't end it like that. No, nah, man, this brother came in, put his energy in, the people in the chat exercising their thoughts, bro, we can't just walk away and just let, like, we got it like that. It's man. great. But at this, I, I, bro, listen, I remember we used to have 120 in the chat and we go for 10, 12, eight, nine hours. You know what I'm saying? So to, to be able to have four, 500 people in the chat. I hear you. Peace, Chief. Peace, BCU. Peace to the chat and everyone in the panel. Um, it, I agree. Peace, peace. This was a fire bill. It was so much good information. Peace, peace. And um, to the question about Seminole, I don't know where people started saying that it was a Spanish word. You know, um, I would say that it comes from Semarón, you know, which Spaniards learned from the people here. And they used that word or they took that word Semarón and mixed it all up and put it in their language. But it's not a Spanish word. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense. I'm just, mm -hmm. I guess I was looking for maybe a source one way or the other, because so far I've just heard both sides presented, but I've not really heard anything else. Um, okay, so a source would be the Spanish language. Okay, so there's no word in the Spanish dictionary in their language, whether it's Castillo or whether it's Spanish from the quote unquote Americas, it's no word Seminole in that language. What would be in that language is Semarón. And those Spaniards learned that word Semarón when they came here and they heard people saying Sima Maron and they made that word. And I don't I can't tell you when in history um they started saying, well, the Seminoles got their name from the word Simaron that the Spaniards were using. You see what I'm saying? So if we're yeah. just talking about Spanish language, right? You go to a Spanish dictionary, you are not going to see the word seminal at all. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I'm uh, I'm gonna get out the way. Y'all, y'all chop it up. I appreciate you. Peace, peace. Peace. And I'm just gonna, uh, that's that's uh, can I let me take it back? Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just go got ahead. a quick thing for Chief if, if he's still on. Um, 
He, you know, nah, Chief probably going. He he's probably stepping. eating, bro. So all the questions, let's just keep it all right. within a group. So yeah, so we, any question we, you have that um you think maybe Chief can answer, let's give him that time. Allow him that time. The brother go and get something to eat. So let's just keep it. We on the front porch, brother. You yeah, yeah. So yeah, Chief, ain't, Chief ain't here. Now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We hanging out. Chief ain't here. So whatever yeah. conversation we have, even if it's um. Not even all the way correct, brother. We have, I, I do, I have the humility, and we all should have the humility that the way we understand it, if it ain't all the way, we at least halfway in the ballpark. You feel what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. Chief come back, if there's anything that he has a greater importance or knowledge to build to that and say, oh, well, really, it's like this, then we respect that. But right now, Chief, going to take care of his business, the brother hungry, so let, let's just keep it at family. One love. No, Peace, no, no, man. you good. You good, fam. Hey, because, uh, you know, I know it's some other people i've been i've been i've been with bcu for a minute now so for years so i know it's some other brain out there that can that can process information you know just as well or yeah know, and if I, we can't we'll figure it out together yeah yeah we you always do that <laughs> we <laughs> always figure it out together yeah, you know oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. sometimes i don't come out on said i might yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying but let me bet back bet back let me get you know what i'm saying so oh yeah yeah yes sir no doubt but yeah i i got um I got a usually every year or a couple of times a year, I do presentations with my job on um, on this American Indian. Um, I got another one coming up Wednesday, and I just wanted I I got a lot of information on it, but I just want to pick y'all brain. Um, the distinction. Hold on, they Rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my oh, man, go ahead, man. You coming here? You sound like man. Go ahead somewhere, Rod. Go ahead, hey, man, man. Go look, ahead, man. Go. I had to use my, I had to use my other, I had to use my other Go account, ahead, Rod, so, man. So, so you couldn't see my my Jaguar. So yeah, I can't. Yeah, reason. yeah, I know the dress, and I know what I'm looking for. I see that. I that, that yo. <laughs> go ahead, man. You go somewhere, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Look, you know, you know, I gotta put, I gotta put that accurate information out there. You know that. Now, sir, know. how the baby boy doing, man? <laughs> He good, man. He ain't playing this game right now. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Man, shout out, man. For they, the people that don't know, they don't know who our hell is, man. So, uh, yeah. But <laughs> you ain't know that, no, man. Shout out. Go ahead, brother. You be saying that like you. Man, come on, man. I hey, like I that, though. Step, Go ahead, brother. I had stepping on the low, man. I had stepping on the low. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, man. That's Rod Sim, man. Our hell, man. The real deal. You understand? Hey, hey. I don't know about all that, man. I'm trying to be there. I'm trying to be there. But uh oh oh hey before I get into that, yo check it. I got a homeboy that's from California. His family's from Savannah. I've been telling him, he's been with me, you know, this whole journey and stuff. And I've been telling him, you know, look into this, look into that. Well, the brother hit me up the other night, sounded dazed and confused. I said, What's going on? He sent me a copy of his uh great grandfather's Civil War draft card. And it said Chickata Indian on it. He been uh, in the Civil War in that draft card. Yeah, man. Let me yeah. ask you, Rod, not to break your wisdom, but mm -hmm. did you notice in that in those Civil War records it says citizens? Did it have citizens anywhere? Yep. Outlining that. Yep. Okay. Mm. Yep. I know. Go ahead. That. I'm. 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 I rebound off that. Go ahead, brother. Oh no, no, you good? But yeah, man, I'm just. I'm. I'm trying to. Like I said, I'm just trying to get some more information. On what y'all think for it. we all know the distinction between the five civilized, you know, the federally recognized tribes and the five federal recognized tribes, right? So I'm trying to be, I know I can't be but so politi politically correct when I right, drop it. Right. I'm going to piss people off, but hey, that's, that's what it's doing. And uh, you know what, Rod? What I found out is though is that with most um, Caucasian American descendants, is that a lot of them know the history, yep. and when you talk to them in a certain way, not being aggressive as to like just explaining it to them, because I talk to a brother, I say three, four times a week. He he, he says that he's a Scottish Irish descent, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm here, right here in Central Florida. Right, okay. I'm right here in Orlando, heart of the territory in Atlanta. I live not too right. far away from Narcusi, which is a Creek word meaning um, black bear, right? Right. And um, when I explain to him my my Scottish or my Irish connection to the Americas, 
right? Mm -hmm. And I say, well, a lot of those people are actually dark skinned people. Listen, right. buddy, the relationship that me and him have now, not that it was any type of inferior or superior thing, it's just that I've helped him grow in his understanding. He's helped me in becoming more hum hum uh, uh, humble. Right. You understand? Because I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm off, I'm off Cimarron and Curry Ford Road. This is the heart of the Okeechobee, what Top Cats were talking about. This right. is the heart and right there at the top of what started what people want to call Seminole. So that's why uh -huh. I have a, a, a gripe with people saying that the Seminole were Africans who came here. And when you look yeah. at this area today, we don't see the remnants of those people that they say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know same that? thing with That was the cause of us winning the wars. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's why I say, when, when you, I say who this is, RL, and I'm like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> you one of the ones who've been here from the beginning, almost from the beginning, and, and, and been put in that work. You oh, know? yeah. So, um, and no, it's, it's a very intricate thing. I found out that me and World and Thunder, I've been on BCU for two years. Come to find out, me and World and Thunder are cousins. We connect oh, this, but he's from my sport, Mississippi, Alabama area. I'm from the upper part of the Mississippi right. Valley. You know what I'm saying? Hollandale, Washington County, the heart mm. of the Delta, that black dirt. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's things that make us connected that the internet ain't going to never tell you, but it's only about us communicating with each other. And that's yes, why I know right. your work is solid right. because you bring it to, you in a corporate situation. You in, and, and you and I, I've watched it. I said, this brother, he don't say a lot, but He's always representing. Oh, yeah, no you know? doubt. So doubt. that's why I say when I said that. Yeah, no doubt, man. And and the thing is that being that I get to bring it in the corporate setting, man, it, it goes global. You know what I'm saying? So I got people in the Philippines and Germany and Switzerland and all over the place, man, that's hit me up out of nowhere asking me questions all the time. So, you know. And you know, if I I tell them if I if I don't have an answer, I'll find it for you. And that's why I reach out, you know, back to the fam. I reach back out to BCU. Cause we all here for a reason. We were we were all got here for a reason. That's a beautiful thing. In my case, I came around, I ain't even no book thumper like that. A nigga really in the streets for real. So when I kind of stumbled on Dane and then ran across top, this shit was like, oh, my goodness. And I'm already yeah. Indian. This is real, bro. How he break it down is ill. Oh, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt, bro. Facts. Without yeah, a doubt. I got some people out there in Alabama, too, man. They in Mobile. That's where my grandmother died at. Okay, okay. See, I, I always say it's the reason why. I got relocated out here to Louisiana, and I didn't understand at that point in time, but it, it becomes more clear every day why why I got relocated out here and why I'm out here. It's, it's a lot easier to get the work done out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, my granny, she died in Alabama, but she was from Georgia. But she died at, what, 98? She'd be like mm. 124 right now. Oh, wow. So you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Yeah. They tell they tell us all this stuff, bro, on the real. And there ain't none of this shit real. No, none of it, bro. It's, it's mind blowing. None of it real. real. I'm talking all about mind not. blowing. If it is real, it's switched around to a way to where you would never even think about it. Yep. Till somebody throw it in your face, like, hold on, bro. That ain't right. That's the pe I'm the people that you're talking about. When I told the lady that I was Indian when I was a kid, she yeah. looked at me like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Bitch, what you mean am I sure? You and don't look Indian. My... Yeah. How that... I... You said I don't? Look Indian. That's, that's what they would say. That's <laughs> yeah. what I've been told. Yeah. Well, that, that was you don't, like you don't the, look yeah. Indian. I was like, hmm? excuse me? That was from the little Tonto thing, what they was trying to throw at us. That's like the little narrative that they threw. It's, that's it's how the they pic... got us. Because the on the real, I really believe that. At I first, agree. I was I like, "Cause it's my granny tripping." My mama telling me, "Boy, we Cherokee and we Geechee and we all man." Well, hold on, how the fuck is we all this shit? And they look like this. Hey, look, the crazy thing is that you brought up Tonto, right? Because somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but Tonto in Spanish means stupid, right? It don't give me the line. So I'm what did? I'll, I'll, I'll say this about. I'll say this about this they, and that. 
And and the uh, what I say about Tonto is that it's when when the word was created, right? Or when that came to being a negative thing. Mm -hmm. Because if he riding on the same height as the level of the white boy, he's side by side, Batman and Robin, then how is he lesser than? You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So to me, a nigga to say that Tom, all right, first of all, T O N Tom, that's heavyweight shit. Yeah. Yeah. But again, man. So if you had a ton of anything, yeah, that's heavyweight. Yeah. Right. Every syllable thing. That's a ton toe. That means heavy foot. Your toe is on your foot. Yep. So that means the heavy foot one. Right. Yep. Right. So he's stepping. Yep. Right. So that narrative um has to be re-explored, right? And you own to something, and that might be that that might be a good presentation. Um because the way that they painted what who was Tonto and who yeah right right yeah and I touched on that a little bit this past year um with with well it wasn't so much a presentation I just got called out to to talk about you know my 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 journey in this and um you know I had pointed out the fact that the Long Range was based on Bass Reeves because a guy had put a, a guy from London had said something about it I was like well you I said, let me help you out. You do know so if Bad Freeze is the Long Ranger, why would he have a sidekick who's totally under a Exactly. Right, right, right. When he have somebody that's closely associated exactly. with him? Bro, that birds was, of a feather flock together. That so was why my, would this elite lawman go get us a, a, a come on, bro? A retard. Yeah. Huh? Exactly. And no, yeah. don't make sense. So they said time when they to, did oh, that the show. A that's a goddamn lie. When they did the show, because you know, uh, Prom did a did uh, the episodes last year on it, right? And they portrayed him, you know, as a runaway slave, like they always do. But we know the truth behind that. But mm -hmm. in that show, they still had somebody that was less than him being his sidekick. Mm -hmm. I believe he was showing Absolutely. him. And you know what I'm saying? Nigga don't know what you trying to do. Nigga might kick something over. He had a heavy foot. So you know what I'm saying? It was like he was retarded because the nigga wasn't doing what he should know how to do. But if we don't know you doing some underhanded shit, nigga, it might just blow your cup. Right. 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 And it's still a way, it's a slick way to still undermine. And when you think about um cinematography. And you think about mm -hmm. the message that's behind mm -hmm. it, right? Because remember, before mm -hmm. that, they had silent film yep. where you would just have right. to use your imagination mm -hmm. to try to figure out what the author was saying. Yep. But now that they said yep. it, now everybody's so smart. Oh, this is what it means. But you never, but we never looked into the account of the silent films, the mm -hmm. black and white films, where you had to kind of like put two and two together. Mm -hmm. right? And even that was hard because everybody didn't have TVs. Everybody wasn't mm -hmm. privy to that. Mm -hmm. so the statement that they was mm -hmm. making was to the white audience. So yep. when he seen it, he seen a white boy on a horse, and then he seen what was called an Indian. So this is the fool that followed me. So in a sense, what they're saying is, I'm the leader, you're the follower. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why, why would I take that? If I know my... Go ahead. Go ahead. I, no, I just... I was going to... like what I, I like that following thing, but that Joker element. He's playing the fool, right? He's silly. His character is supposed to be really bumbly and silly. The thing that you don't always see. I always like that. You always got to look. There's always a message when you see a Joker character, right? Mm -hmm. So he's playing, right. he's playing next to the master. Just like the king has a Joker. The Joker is going to tell the king everything he needs to know. But he's excused for his antics and his foolery, right? So he, he, his Them sidekick, bars. his sidekick, is a smart is, is one of us, right? Mm -hmm. He got to play the fool, right? So right, so so who's so, he, who's Dean, he getting his tricks from? That's brother his Dean, eyes, his Dean. jaguar. Hold on, brother you know? Dean, you made a great point. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dean. sorry. You made a, we made a great point. So why is he a fool? They never explain to us why is he a fool. So even if he uh, that breakdown right there was nice. Everybody yep. plays the fool. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes. No <laughs> to, the to the rule. 
Why Can I point something out? Peace food. to the tribe. Yeah. Oh, see, oh, I need to. Peace, peace. Hey, peace. one thing Dr. you forget, peace, famo, up? is um, it was always propaganda. Oh like yeah. A, a good three weeks ago, I did a video on step and fashion in uh, Diddy, and people forget that it all started with blackface. Yep. They all they always wanted us mm -hmm. to make fun of ourselves, but mm -hmm. our great grandparents had too much pride for that. So they took step in first it started with the uh blackface and white people would pretend to be us and then they would make jokes out of it. Even um the birth of a nation, when you look at the birth, it, it's always been propaganda to create oh, yeah. a scenario because one thing that you gotta remember, politics is a science. Marketing what? is a science, and and they know that a hundred years from now, two hundred years from now. Look at where right. we're at now is they know that the children are going to look back on it and they're going to be like, well, that's how it was. Think about love and hip hop. You and I both know that love and hip hop did not ever represent what was going on with like right. the real the totality cats. of the culture. Right. right. You know right. what I'm saying? And then you take that forward to step and fetch it. They made step and fetch it a, a brother from the West Indies, a millionaire making fun of us over here. Right. Exactly, and then and then and then look at how they took him down too. He got rich. He became, if you remember, he became friends with Muhammad Ali. And I yep. think the the thing that really really affected him was his son didn't respect him. He yep. had right. All he, that right. He was the butt of the joke of the the, the dominant society then. Yep. And yep. As soon, right, sir, as, soon right. as he got woke, they made his ass broke. They made him the exactly. richest boy in America, and then they made him just as poor as the day he walked in. Yeah, exactly. They still doing that to motherfuckers now. That's the same shit no, they do. It's what the what same saying? playbook, different same players. As soon as, uh, uh, when you, once you play the fool, and then you try to act like you got some sense, that's when they, it's, it's over with then. So everybody plays the fool in some form of respect. That's just a love old. But I'm saying, like, in, 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 to use it in the real reality of identification of who we are as a man, even as a woman in their feminine um, essence. But you'll play the fool, but don't mean that. And we have a saying like this in Mississippi. Fool me once, fool me twice. The third time on you. Now, oh, yeah. What happens that right, right. third time, whatever the get back is, whatever the get back is, I'm not rich. Hey, you can't hold me to that. You, know what I'm saying? you may have got me for some money, yep. but because of whatever has transpired, the get back for that, I may not want no money. Uh, Can someone meet your mic, please? Oh, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? So, go, um, nah, but go ahead, sister. Um, what are other sisters at? I don't know where the other sisters at. They're in the chat, live and direct. But uh, Dr. Reese Peace, he had started on something when he was talking about how there was one silent films or black and white films and then the evolving of it. So there was a time in the 50s and 60s, you know, when you would see the quote unquote Indian in movies and they would paint their skin brown with the makeup and nobody quote unquote white wanted to be the savage. Everybody wanted to be the cowboy. You see what I'm saying? So at this time in America, people were very clear on the description of Indians, their physical description, what they look like. You see what I'm saying? It did not look like, you know, these Native Americans and things like that today, especially the white folks. And then, um, you know, if you notice, like, through the years, that's when you see the switch. You have I and I Cody, who was straight Italian. Then you have Buffy St. Clair, straight Italian. They came out in the 60s. And then you move it on up to the 80s. Here comes the term Native American. And then was very interesting with the brother who mentioned Bass Reeves, because I watched it, Lawman Bass Reeves. And I love the cinematography, but the storyline has me hot because what I've noticed is that the the man that they casted to play him is African. And I'm like, mm. if you look at all of the roles during that time period right now, 
right? The main characters who during that time period were definitely Indian. They're casting Africans from London to play them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Look again at the switcheroo or the 52 fake out, you know? So within that, I, I, you know, I look to see who wrote the script and I think it's an Asian and a Caucasian. And then uh, the guy who plays Bass Reeves, he makes me so hot. I just, I, I do not like him playing that role at all. That not to break your wisdom on that, sis. Not to break, not to break your wisdom, but he also right. played a no. part in directing that too. Man, that scene where the the Seminole boy and I was like, oh, why is the Seminole all the way out there? But the scene where the yeah. Seminole boy got shot, you know, because he told him, no, don't shoot. I was like, yeah. man. That's yeah, something that that, that got me too. Yeah, that, it was crazy. Uh -huh. That's not how Indians would do. So even him uh -huh. being an African playing that role, he doesn't have the instinctive culture that that spirit of an Indian to even be like nah. Script. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. now we got to change this. But well, what about Cherokee yeah. Bill? Bill? Cherokee Bill in the in what about, was he in the? Uh, about Cher what about about the role of Cherokee Bill though? Bit in what movie or in this in the bathroom? I have to. I don't know if I seen that episode. I gotta go That's back too because I don't, I don't remember that part. I think, of I, think I fell off, but That's real. but you, you see who the judges uh, though, right? The, the harder they fall. See, oh, oh okay. That, that, there's no story. Oh yeah, right. Right. The bad three story. All those are the same thing, right? right. Mm hmm. Huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So remember, all these are connected, sis. All those films are connected, but each yeah. one is telling their own. Each director is telling their their, their version own version. The movie yeah. Right. But yep. all, right. all those stories have to contain Cherokee Bill, Bass Reeves. If that you got to you got to put Cherokee Bill in the story. The That's real it. Cherokee. When you look at the indigenous, land, check. Okay. Yep. Yep. So check. Without Bass Reeves, Bass Reeves, his story has to include Cherokee. It does because also in Bass Reeves, okay, so the the judge. Anytime somebody talk about, say it again, brother. We need to start having movie nights, man. Superior. We do. <laughs> we just had had one in a minute, but we do. You have to talk about exactly. Yeah, this is yeah. ill, bro. They doing this to our kids right yeah. now because my son be watching all of this shit, man. Well, hold on hey, that's why. I, that's Superior, why I sit down and I'm breaking it down to mine. Yeah, Superior, you in the Matrix, bro? You in and out the Matrix? But I like that he brought up that point yeah. about having to yeah. understand you gotta talk the about the fits into it. Oh. Mm -hmm. You there? brother he's gonna probably have to go out and come back in again yeah let's see talking about our kids watching these movies now like my my son had he had a test on he got a test coming up on the civil war and we already know the history of that you know besides you know along with the help of top cat and dane we all know the true history behind that so i have to make sure i'm like look you're going to take your test based on what they're telling you. But once you finish with that test, guess what we're going to do? We're going to sit down and we're going to break this down to what really happened. Right. Bring that test home. See, I, see I'm the type of kid. If I would have knew it, everything I knew now, I would have been in there kind of being disrespectful, they would call it. Like, man, that's not true. And you can't say that because, you know, they can kick your kid out of school for misinformation with the quotation mark. No, you know, they are doing you know what, they, oh, brother. Uh, you gotta have your hair cut to a certain yeah, end. yeah, yeah. Your hair has to be cut. Look at yeah, they they had, they made me cut my hair. So I was hair born in eighty seven. At that, you. you feel me? I'm I still him. <clears throat> yeah, we here. I can't. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I mean, that, it's just like his old school when we were in North Carolina. You know, they asked us at the beginning of the year. They was like, if there's any topic or discussion that we have for the year. 
um, if the parents have any issues, please reach out to us. And I'm like, yeah, I have an issue. I said, what are you teaching them about Thanksgiving? Right. Because my son is American Indian, just like his dad. So if there's some, I need to see the curriculum that you have, that you're teaching them for this. And we never had any issues when it came to stuff like that. They reached out to me and it was like, okay, do you think this is appropriate or not? See, they ain't coming like that. Not in California. Oh, no, 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 no. I know. Yeah, they that shot me. They, they did that in North take, Carolina. They, they tried to take my kid, bro. It made no, me go no. like hey, a whole bunch of I'll say this with as the, a uh, man. I'll say this, though, no, brother. Brother, I'll say this. As a man, when you go in there, you talk to them people and not letting our women go in there and talk to them. As a man, when you tell them who your child is, Mm -hmm. emphatically. Oh no, they very yeah. respectful when you go stand up. Exactly. You feel me? But at the same yeah. time, uh, how many of us is gonna stand up? Yeah. That's true. I, I, I'm from the heart of Mississippi Delta, and all it's about is ever being is your word is your bond. If we go down there, anytime my auntie went down there and ever said anything, so no matter who the superintendent of school was, who's on the board of education, when you demand or you say this is what I want for my child. They will accommodate, but if yes, you your child out there unaccompanied, and you're saying basically what you're saying is, I give you the governance. In my That's right. Yep. That's right. Because the thing is, they looking at the point. They looking at the fact that are you going <laughs> are you going to say something? Are you going to stand up for your child or not? Because if you're not going to stand up for them then we're going to do whatever we want to do. Exactly. When you let it be known yep. that, hey, I'm not yeah, planning exactly. it, then they're going to they gonna listen exactly. to what you got to say and they're going to follow by yeah. your rules. Right. Yeah, well, I, I didn't have right. a problem with you, that. They go out to the state. Bro. Once you release your child, once you do that and you release, you're, you're, it's a kind, you, you extinguish when, you're extinguishing um, guardianship of your child. So once your child yep. leaves them out that front yep. door, Right, yeah. they say like my daughters, they had to catch the city bus to get to the school bus. From that, bro, it's a transactional point. Shout yep. out to Dane Callaway. Yep, yeah, for sure. bro, you, for real. Been, right. once we, for you sure. have no jurisdiction yep. outside of the front steps of your door, your domicile. Yep. You're yep. expecting people to oblige you, and what they, what you think is law, homie. But it is, bro. You got to be on top of your children from a point. A to B. That's yes, boss. Yeah, and that's, that's what I do. That's what I do. And I'm thankful I'm that. I'm on them like that. I got kids. I got kids. I got daughters, bro. So I know bro, exactly what you're I've saying. I've never given control yeah. of the system to my daughters. I've never mm -hmm. given control of the system. Every step of the way, even if they go to public schools, hey, listen, what's she learning? And I teach my kids. Hey, yep. uh, oh, no, yep. that's bullshit, baby. They don't go in there. Right. They're not rowdy or ruling. They may shit through it. They may go through the class. Everybody got the same answer on the test. Shout out to Legend T Chopcast. Hey, bro, we can't all have the same answer on the test. No, because we ain't got the same in the blood. Yeah, exactly. I'll niggas get caught. So I'll put the shit down. Right. I I'll put it down and say this is the right answer. I choose to interject. If I'm being heard, I choose to interject. I think we're interconnected a lot closer than what we all think we are. Being That's that we don't listen. Being that we don't even hold the DNA. Um, uh like the dna like how could i put it the <laughs> the dna um genetic information if you will of our bloodlines i mean we could track it through genealogy but if we had an infrastructure set up to where you know like we had our own uh a dna culture, bank, a full culture you know what i mean yeah basically what it yeah. comes down to at the end of the day but i'm saying like we could have our own excavating teams we've already been everywhere you know what i mean especially here in the, in the in the americas you know so like myself man um i'm just a i'm a guy out here man just trying to make things happen you know in the midst of all of this like the the build earlier with top cats like i rarely i'm not I, I I don't have a whole lot of time, you know, to invest in um, listening to listening to us now making time. That's the important part, you know, right. because there's so many different platforms out here. 
right. know what I mean? But as long as you stay on that 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 quest for knowledge and truth, it will always guide you in the right spot. And I say that today when I turned on Top Cats, you know, and I heard them in the court case, like my G, I never, I didn't think that there would be drama like that. And he went to court and he was battling other people. You know what I mean? But that's what I needed to hear then to let me know, like, I'm there, you know? But I say uh, all it is to say that establishing... If we establish our own system, then we could basically break away. We could break away from all of this. And it's I know it's a one day at a time type of thing, and that's what type of time I'm on. You know what I mean? All right, Even so brother, this, 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 is a good, this is a good perspective. So let the sister Sweet Feather explain it to you from her own internal um, research and her analysis of her family, and then let the brother Dr. Dees follow oh, up. Oh, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Right? You don't need a bunch of people in your ear, but just hear what they have to say, family. Block out whatever you have been taught and just listen to their stories and synopsis right here on this panel. But y'all go ahead, brother. I, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, peace. Um, my first teacher is my mama. And in my eyes, she is what I would equate to a creator or a God. Before I even knew the concept, you know, from a religious standpoint of what a creator and a God is. That's so, the role of a woman. So everything that I learned was in my home. And so when I hear you brothers say that we need to build our own establishments, we've already had that. We come out the womb established with an establishment oh. already built. Okay. And we don't have to go recruit people. We don't have to go make announcements that we're going to build and this and that. You just do it. Every day that you live, you do your culture because that has been established. I think a lot of times um, we put 100 on 10 for things and we think too uh, philosophical about things because we start our paradigm, we start our perspective, and we start um, asking questions and answering questions from their perspective and their lens instead of ours. And they got it backwards, they copied us. We are the source, you see. So when you send your children to school, okay, you have to understand that you already have a school. They're leaving a school and going to another school, you see. When, if you seek to get a doctor, okay, you have to distinguish if that doctor is a healer or just a doctor. But understand that, you know, and I can say this for a woman, um, that when my child needs healing, it's going to start with me. So it starts with us. And um, I was a teacher in the school system, right? And I taught kindergarten through high school, mainly high school. And it was a policy of mine that the parents had to come and meet me, right? Before October, before the first report card period. So you have a lot more power than you think you do if you're thinking according to the way that they want you to think, okay? If you send in your child, your flesh and blood, your bloodline, your legacy somewhere for eight hours a day to get some colonial education and indoctrination, you need to go up there and see who these adults are. And you have that right. You exactly. need to go up there and meet these people. You have that right, especially if they're like, you know, babies from kindergarten to, I'm going to say, fifth grade. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you have that right to do that. And I yield to Florida. Oh, but you should want to, too. Thank you. Yeah, you yeah. should yeah. want to. I'm leading all, all mine. Let, let, me, let me interject on this, too, because, listen, fam, this is the conundrum or the dichotomy, right? So if you're sending them to somebody to babysit them for eight hours, right? So that's eight hours you're missing.
they still have to sleep. You the matrix cutting out. Yeah, you cutting out. But this is the thing, right? We're grown. Would you go into a place, someone says, well, you report to this warehouse, right? For eight hours a day and you don't go and size it up. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You don't go see what it looks like. You know, there are parents who have no idea what inside the school buildings look like. They have no this idea what the bathrooms look like. They have no idea who the counselor is. And a lot of times the counselors are Caucasian and yep. they are the Jewish people. Oh, here they okay? met. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that have so much sway. They're the ones that, you know, if they're sent there, they're the ones that can write their IEPs, the individual education plans. They're the ones that say, um, oh, they have this psychological problem and they uh -huh. need this type of drug or medication. They have so Big much sex. Okay. Right. And then the That's other it. thing is these records that they have for disciplinarian and things like that, where they have these uh, detention. They're not in jail, you know, even though we know that the schools mimic the jails, but uh -huh. no, 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 you can go in and you can tell these teachers, no, I want this language change because yep. when they write these forms, these pink slips and things, they have such language on there as terroristic threats for yes. school children. And that paperwork goes into a file and that file follows them. But it's, you know, you got to stand on Indian business. For real. If that's your child, okay, and they say that we don't possess human beings, I dig that. But you're not going to tell me that this child that came out of me is not mine. You know, sure. my children right. belong to us. They just tried like it. I belong they to tried my it with me. Mm -hmm. that. I would, man, yeah. try to make me go to an Indian court and everything. Like, man, hold up, bro. We got to go get lawyers and all that. Fuck mm -hmm. this. Y'all got the game fucked up. And it was just because my son walked to school. And he was like 10, I believe. But I signed the paper for them to walk. I got like four kids that go to the school. So what are you talking about? Right. Man, y'all fucking crazy. Don't play with me like a nigga stupid. But yeah. I was really, I was real heavy on Dane at the time. So I was knowing the gang of shit that they, I don't think that they knew I knew. Because I looked mm -hmm. like a gangbanger. Diggy sucks all this type of shit all the time. So I already knew that they was looking down at a nigga, but. Yeah, you thought I was stupid, didn't you? So we yeah. went to court. Yeah, yeah, beat the tribal court too. We ain't doing no plan over here, and ain't nobody taking my kid. And I'm gonna keep having more if I can. Stop playing with me. <laughs> <laughs> and see, I'm a single father, so you know, when, well, when up, I relocated from North Carolina from North Carolina to here, um, you know, he decided, you know not even a year after i had relocated out here he wanted to come out here with me so he's been with me ever since so i'm definitely heavy on everything that he's involved in school whatever the case may be they know his dad is right there where your dad at because we know he coming if he ain't here already he on his way yeah i ain't playing either mm -mm, not playing at all but that's big Indian business, though, right there, man. That's yes, how sir. you know who we Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Ain't nobody yes, playing yeah. with yep. these people. The ones that do be all scared and shit, them the ones that might be from somewhere else or might be cut with something else. Because nigga ain't playing. Yeah. I'm slapping a yeah. white boy in my school if you talking loud. <laughs> yep. yeah, that's, that's, oh, on the real, that's how I was with you. You feel me? I'm hey, man. right now, bro. You feel me? So, I believe hey, I'm oh, old oh. to myself, but everybody bro, still calling me. all the time. Hey, Try not to laugh, shit, nigga. Man, look, you, you slap the shit out of whatever color they are. It don't matter if you're a white boy, black boy, it don't matter. You yeah. slap the shit out of whoever is called. Yeah, yeah, fact, 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 fact. Man, yeah. weren't you raised that way? Man, I could, yeah. if I came yeah, home man, and I, 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 hey, I wanted to I, come on, man, if you were raised to fight, what? you stick up for yeah. yourself. Is that, you, then you, let, you better go. Don't come back home until you fight this nigga. Exactly. And then I'm going to come down there and whoop your ass if you don't whoop your his ass in front of me. Right? I'm going to whoop your ass. Exactly. Parents, come on, man. They, what did they say? It, it, if we find out you lose in the fight or that you didn't fight back, we going to whoop your ass. Exactly. Well, I, it parents. was really more like my, uh, on, you know, my, mom, my mom really into the Bible, so she wasn't really too 
rah rah. You feel me? But my auntie ain't playing for real. She don't want to hit tight. Don't let them. Yeah, man. What? Hold on. Pumpkin, whoop man, his man. ass. I'm about to fuck you up before she even says. Hey, that hey, exactly. hey, yo, people, hey, hold on, man, hold on, man. hold on, y'all, hold on, hold on. Time, my job. Let me. We got uh Hakeem in the building and Dosi. Let's see. What, uh, let's get them in the conversation too. What's up, Hakeem? What you got for us? What's good? Peace uh, to the panel. Peace to uh, the podcast. Uh, I, I mm-hmm. wanted to, uh, based upon this, this compulsory uh, education type deal, you know what I'm saying? When I was uh, watching the documentary that they put out about. Uh, Is you cutting out? You cutting out, fam. Hey, your mic, your mic, uh, what you at? Mic check, mic check. You hear me? All right. You can hear me? <clears throat> yeah, we can hear you now. You got to start over though. You were saying, uh, Dane put out, you were watching, um. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was also wondering, uh. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I was watching a documentary he put out about the, the, the schooling system and the compulsory education. Him and Tanisha Calloway was uh, talking about this, and I, um, I think he was the, um, also the one who was saying uh, we need to do something about trying to buy our names back, like uh, the, that, that, that the government owned our, our name. And we don't even own our, our, uh, our kids' name and shit like that. So even like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, to even be aware that, that we have the do certain things that they want us to do in order for us to not be considered bad parents and you know, trying to keep your kids out of uh, uh, out of school and then going to jail type shit. So I was wondering, like, how, how do you go about doing that in that type of situation where you, uh, yeah, we, we just homeschooling our kids and uh, getting out of that, that situation? I, I, I have to say, like the sister said, it, it starts at home. Everything starts at home, bro. Well, um, yeah, I think sweet feather, sweet feather homeschool, so mm-hmm. probably better tell him then. It, it, I don't want to butt in, but you know what I want to say about that is just, it starts with a good woman in the home too, because like Big one packs. of my one of my girls in Chicago, awesome. um, she <laughs> got she got licensed to um homeschool because she wants to homeschool home kids. And what happened was, is I don't know if y'all noticed, but they closed a whole lot of schools in Chicago. And it came to a situation where basically she be, she had to open up a facility and create a daycare and then create a kindergarten. Right. Because just to put y'all on game, you know how we talk about, shout out to Top Cat, how they talk about how these colleges and these schools were all originally started as missionary schools to basically just get us on this here program of the United States. And now that everybody is born and we've accepted this program of the United States, they're not funding the schools the same way that they used to no more. So we're pretty much coming into an era where the money is there. All you need is a group of people to say, this is my community. I want to teach the children in my community. And I guarantee you it'll blossom out from there because we we let's be honest we love us we if, if nobody else loves us we love us you know what i'm saying so if, if you get a group of people together that want to homeschool you i guarantee you would have blossom out into a, something that you can make happen That's so, facts. we need to talk about a bcu school yep. absolutely that's facts um yeah, different we, we could be all around the country homeschools world schooling they have this thing called unschooling you know um i can tell you from my experience the reason is that i wanted to optimize my time with my child um i wanted to be very particular about what he's taking in um i also didn't want to have to deal with uh the close relationship that a lot of schools have with the with the police because, you know, if a child is absent for a certain amount of days, they want to involve the police, they want to de- oh, yeah. involve the Department of Human Services because it's all linked, you know. Um, but most of all, you know, 
children don't need eight hours of colonial indoctrination. indoctrination. No, they do not. They do, they not, do not. not. And nope. for most people, you know, I don't care what age level they are, you don't sit a whole hour to a half an hour of instruction doing anything. You see what I'm saying? That's you know why it's hard for black children. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, I think our genetic makeup makes us to be learning physically. You right. know what I mean? Right. Uh, as far as with our hands, um, visually, like conceptually, with everything that that I've been through, you know, and I can say this as a testament to myself, you know, I only learn, well, I learned both ways by reading books and by physically doing the action, you know, and that's what it was back in the day. If you look at some of the records that, um, that, uh, we 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 lived we been we built a lot of things um out in the field if you will so mm -hmm. my my headphones died so i'm gonna plug them up real quick let me and just to just to piggyback off what you said i mean a lot of stuff that i learned from my dad and from my grandfathers and my uncles that was all hands-on they ain't give me no book or no manual and say, hey, read this and then come out here and help me. No, I was like, hey, come here. Let sure. me this. You don't know what that is? Let me tell you what that is. Let me show you what it looked like. You learn so to tell you how to do this. Yeah, they show you exactly. how to do it. Exactly. And there's this idea when you get to the college level that you are educated. You know what I'm saying? But it's like mm -hmm. Curtis Mayfield said, educated fools from uneducated schools. You know, exactly. Um, some of these so-called professors with all these degrees and things like this, um, while they are in school teaching this information and learning certain information, we're out here living it. Exactly. But yet, yeah. if you want to quote unquote go into these universities and teach that, they'll be like, "Oh, you don't have a degree," even mm -hmm. though you open up them books and they're studying us. They're studying what we're yeah. doing. You know, yep. so. I know that people have to do what they have to do. Um, homeschooling is a sacrifice that has a big reward. You see what I'm saying? And when you sacrifice, you're not taking a loss. It's like you were doing something for a greater gain. You see what I mean? So right. um, I know that people have to work. They have to, you know, support themselves. But I do encourage it because homeschooling or world schooling is freedom. It's the freedom that a lot of people, these Pan-Africans and armchair revolutionaries talk about, but they not really uh, providing information or building institutions to actually get the people there. I mean, they right. get into the bank. <laughs> but oh, yeah. That's about <laughs> it. You know. And not only does homeschool I feel hold like hold it's hold detrimental to Peace. My Peace bad one, Hey, Dulcie. Peace, sis. What's up, sister? Peace, oh, well, okay. Peace, sweet feather. Dr. D's superior dean. I don't know who else is on the panel. but I was just listening to the conversation insane. you guys are having. I definitely agree. I mean, when it comes to my son, I know everybody from the principal down and everybody who's going to be around him. So, But I want to transition to more like a world school unschooling process where we're really teaching our children the important things like gardening, agriculture, how to maneuver so you always know how to take care of yourself. Right. I think that comes at a, a more greater phase. Like, I think we should build this out like we do everything else when we deal with business. I mean, look, man, we like some of the wisest people that ever walked the globe. You know, cats hustling on the side. That's just lower level from what they teach and from their standpoint. But for us, it's a university. You know what I mean? So when I say that, I mean to say that building an infrastructure, you know, having a global institution is possible, you know, but we got to start from this day. You know what I mean? And I think even if a community... Peace, Yeah, I think it's uh, your mic, uh, knowledge. 
Hey, I want to shout out to uh Jay Good, appreciate that love in the cash app and Okra Bush, appreciate that love. Hey, y'all, if y'all just came in, uh, hit the like, make sure y'all jump on the like button. Peace to everybody that just pulled up. Um, shout out to the panel. Uh, man, y'all want to get on some uh Indian history or anything yes. in the world or something? Uh, yeah, I got some questions. Do y'all have any questions? Anybody um, in the chat? I wanted to share right. something. All right, turn up. Okay. okay, so um a lot of times when we look at um currently what seems to be trending in turn that's called ATRs or African traditional religions, um, African culture and spirituality. Um, I just came across a source, you know, I've been diving into it and spirit led me to it. So, do you know, in, I think it was the Lemonade, uh, album, the visual album when, uh, Beyonce was on the bus, right? And it was the women on there with the white paint over their body. Does anybody remember that? It had like the designs all over. Are you talking about stuff. like the African one, the swirls? Yeah. Yeah. That's what right. So a source that I came across and I will try and put it in the back. I'm not tech savvy with this just yet. But the Wei Wei people, also pronounced Y Y, they were airwacking people and they dressed and, you know, painted themselves and adorned themselves with that same painting. And they have um, evidence that shows how long they've been doing it. And it dates back to the BCs. Another thing that they also built, the Taino and Arawak people, are these stools. The stools that you hear people in Ghana saying are their golden stools. You know, that their nanas or their kings um, made and sat on. So I looked up to see you know, when that was dated according to the Golden Stool War, which was in the 1900s prior to that, which led up to the war was the 1800s. But again, the Arawak and people have these that are dated back to the BC time period. You know, so those are two little things I wanted to drop. Um, also, when you look over on the continent of Africa and you see people in a masquerade with like the rocky, it looks like straw and they're masked up. You know, a lot of times that they're taught that we're taught that that comes from West Africa, right? Again, the Arawak and people, you know, have been doing this in the BC time period. And I have sources to back that up. I will try and put it in the bag, but I wanted to share that. You know, Tatuba, they hey. uh, referenced amazing. her in, yeah, hey. in the American Horror Story with Angela Bassett. And talking about her being from yes. Arawak, and they did the same mm-hmm. white makeup. Yes. Yep. yep. When she went up to Salem, right, for those quote unquote witch trials, they accused her of being a witch. You see, so when we talk about spiritual culture, a lot of times, like the Yoruba, they have a word that says mojuba, that means, you know, give honor and give praise, you know, and they say it in front of the names of their deities when they call them out. But, you know, in the Caribbean, in the Arawak language, there's a word, Moboya, you see. And so we've been told that the the um, language and the praise names and the things are actually Yoruba or whatever, West African spiritual culture and things like that. But mm-mm. the dates are showing BC time period and we can date when these stories that we have been told that it's African culture is in the 17th well I'm not even gonna say 17th I'm gonna say 18th and 19th century you know I'm just tired of of the lies you see I don't care if you are Indian African Asian boo 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 you know is um, if we are a people, a spirited people, and we're supposed to have principle about ourselves, then we should have honor for truth and enough respect for truth. Wow, you man. see what I'm saying? No matter who we Gosh. are. And so 
um it's been so yeah, much hijacking got, uh, of that now got a genetic disposition to do evil um the one thing i just wanted to mention and then i'm gonna yield the floor is this in the, i want to go back to the bass reeves because in that story right what they're showing us visually the script that they're writing and um, the areas that they're supposed to be, they are really revising and revamping, you know, and reframing history or the narrative. You see, the mere fact that they cast Africans to play Indian roles, they cast people who are not of indigenous descent. Meanwhile, we're still here and they know who we are. Um, In the storyline, Bass Reeves was hired by Judge Parker Right, and then uh-huh. uh, Superior had mentioned build a Cherokee bill, right? So then uh-huh. they cast um, a Native American to play the Cherokee, right? Yep. And I don't know if they're making an inference that he's supposed to be Bill, but what's interesting is that when you read the actual story of that time period, you know that Judge Parker, right? He hated Indians. You know, Uh um, he murdered a lot of Indians. He led campaigns in the newspapers, backed up propaganda, hating on Indians. Um, He was the one who called for the hanging of the Rufus Buck gang. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that. And the Rufus Buck gang is the original RBG. Hey. (laughs) Hey Chief, you 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 up there? Hey, it was a. So I got a question for you, and I've been dying to ask you for like three years. When I did my first lecture about the Morris Standard, when I was done with it, you was like, "Sec, why you do that lecture?" Three years later, with all the stuff that came out, now do you understand why that was the very first lecture I did? Break it down, cause um, when we was in Houston. I think you said why you had started off. You brought that up because see, you remember old when girl statue, old girl who wrote that. Her name is Zella Zelia Nuttall, right? She's that was literally the only piece she wrote that pretty much had said more about anything, and she spent the entire rest of her professional career attempting and in my opinion proving that the indians of mexico and the yucatan were connected to the mississippian culture that is one of the most interesting in my opinion like if you want to read and and it started from that whole argument about the moorish standard because they like are they moors are they indians are they moors are they indians and the reality of it is, is both of those are exonyms, even Aztec is an exonym. They didn't call themselves Aztec. They called themselves Mexica. And then we go down there and, you know, I, you know, I went down there years ago to Tulum and Coba and they tell you about the astronomy and they know who we are. You know what I'm saying? They know that our people shared trade with them and we spent years proving it. And I'm, I'm just happy then like three, four years later, we can go back and we can look and say, this is something we've proven regardless. You know what I'm saying? If you know who the Pan-Africans want to argue about and they keep trying to connect us to Africa and I have no problem with that either. But the reality is if you want to compare cultures, when you talk about the rattlesnake and the feather serpent and the panther, especially like we share more with the Yucatan than anywhere else. You know what I mean? So, I mean, all I can say is it's a great day in 2024. They can try to fight all they want. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? I done had dudes come out. What up? I think I think they the fight got – I think the fight is out of them, especially with the fact that they don't know what Africa – what name oh. Africa come from. I don't really think that I was, think they're just dealing with the cognitive dissonance at no, this no, point. No, 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 no. It's different now. Yeah. It's different now because last year they was defeated. 2024, they had absolutely no momentum. Because you got to remember, they started out fighting each other. So this 
is like them trying to you know rebuild and put together a team you didn't even see old members come back and dress out like inky them and all these people and what we seeing is you know they know they can't hang Reggie straight up told me the other day, look, Type K, you know, uh, I know you gonna be on my heels, man. And, you know, just by him saying that, Jabari running, it's at a point they had nobody else to hold the line. Um, and they're realizing, you know what I'm saying, that, you know, the, when that Africa, when, when did Africa get his name? And they don't know that. I think that's, I think, them mentally, I think that took a lot out of them right there. I think that that probably was like the final one. How can you argue that I'm an African when you don't even know where the word come from? They say it's a Roman province. Bars. But that make it even worse. Yeah, Because it's not Rome is not Africa. So that make it even worse. And, and you know what? It's no. a Christian. It started off as a is it. A Christian uh, uh, province. Period. That's exactly what I was about to say. Yep. And a lot of what's lost is the equilibration between the words. What they're not realizing is is what they call in Africa is a Christian province. Uh, a lot, like when we talk about the conquistadors, uh, all of these are Ab Abrahamic inventions that we got stuck with. It. E even the concept that most people have of what a European did with the slave trade and all that, that was Christianity. That was Christianity. That was a Pope that yeah, did the dumb the verses. When you're talking about the conquistadors, those was Roman Catholics and you got to take that all the way back to when, what's his name? Um, in Constantinople, Constantine knew that he was losing control of Rome as a political entity. So he was like, in this how we conquer and he used the cross and they use religion to conquer the world. It go all the way back to there. And then what, what I wasn't expecting to have a problem with just to you know run it down is the Hebrew Israelites. Because I'm like, bro, if y'all study this, if you study what you saying, you know what I mean? It's like, how do you not see that this is a tool of oppression? If you read Deuteronomy, all through Deuteronomy, it says kill them, but don't kill them slow. Don't kill them too fast because the land is spoiled. You got to kill them slow so, you know, you can take care of the land slowly from them. And if they let you in their door voluntarily, they're your slaves. And don't don't even get into the time and all of that. It's like, how are people not seeing that this, this is Christianity? This is what a lot of what happened is what that's why you look at anthropology is um, what's his name? Um. Sahagun, Bernardino Sahagun. When you look at Christopher Columbus, who he got with him, Bartolomeo de las Casas. You know what I'm saying? All of this was Christianity from the jump, and people are still fighting over that same book. It's crazy, man. And that's why, you, you know, know I'm like. It is, though, it's, it's, it's more so of people fighting to tell the story themselves. They want to tell the story. Because the story that they're telling is just the story of, of America. So we when you break it all the way down, Christianity just uh they took our spirituality and story here and turned it into a religion. A lot of those bloodlines gonna go back to it. One thing that's real interesting to me is the Christianity that a lot of it was it was more than one branch of Christianity. So the monks, they practiced, they were Christian, but they practiced a different form of it. You had the Templars, they were Christian, but they practiced a different form. Even within their Christianity, they had to hide their true, what their, their you know, some of their deities, you can see it in the structures they created. Uh, in the in the in the in the stained glasses, uh, they would put up female deities to hide what they truly would. would they would use the female deities like the Black Madonnas and all that, what they call Marianism, but they would they they would hide the because they didn't practice the same Christianity as the church, and that was one of the reasons. See, they practiced the old way, so I mean, you go back to the Coptic coming out of Egypt, putting it together. 
a long tail, like you just brought up the the um uh constant uh constant noble you had the um the eastern uh branch we'll see when they both fall but the the true roman empire really starts with a person who wasn't even from rome and that was charlemagne charlemagne is the first he that's the roman empire we know the rome the real roman empire starts with charlemagne he's gonna come through and they're gonna unite really they gave him the uh the keys because of their uh power and they were able to uh defeat the, the um Lombardis and the different nations that were um you know enemies to to uh to their province and they brought them in through his, through his bloodline them or whatever but the first frank he married Clotilda, and that's how they came catholic they came over to the catholic side and united for uh yeah, you're right. yeah they shared enemies so then you go down to Pippin, then you go down to Charles, Charles' son, Pippin the second, and that's gonna be Charlemagne's daddy. Then Charlemagne came. Once he got it, they, they created what became known as the Holy Roman Empire. But they practice Christianity a different way. So that's why we go in France and Germany and not Russia and these different areas where they had bloodlines and colonies that these places will come under attack from um later on after that but they enemies directly were the moors and we see his grandfather down the the umiyah moors he gonna he killed the umiyah dynasty uh charles martel charlemagne grandpa pippin the second daddy so uh they were enemies against them but they had similar stories some of the the sciences that they had um um Charlemagne them also had. So we see through the medieval period or the cathedrals and all of these forms that was built, we'll see them hide a lot of the science in there. That's why Philadelphia, Mexico City, all of these places, they have these buildings and they have the, the, the Florida Reese and uh Mary Goes and all these different types of uh the Griffins and all of this shit here that became on coastal arms and all this type of shit. Yeah, he did. So the silks, the monks, the Britons, the um, these different people, all of them had their own um version of what they call Christianity today, but it was it was basically like a, a different form. But it all came back here. That's why damn near every president share a bloodline with Charlemagne, and they have to. So you talking about the the families that rule the world and the broader bloodlines and shit? These are all related. Yeah, yeah they are related. related. But, so so why why the Germans? Let me actually talk right. So why if you look at it? Because if you look at the records um, from the people that was coming down through the ports in Mobile, um, down there Louisiana on the Gulf Coast, when you look at the shipping manifest, you'll see that. A lot of those people who were of German stock ended up in some of the same areas, right? After um, Indian removal, those people ended up in areas out in Indian territory. Well, they um, were there before. Um, the, right, the, small number, right? Right. Go ahead. I, will, I wouldn't even say small number. I'd say they beat they beat a lot of people there. They they beat the French there. The Germans, the Germans, right? Yes. But see, I'm gonna show you something about the Germans. Come on, man. All of this here, they go, they go undercover. They don't get no case for enslaving nobody. They don't get no nothing, none of those type of cases. But they were present in Virginia, Jamestown. They was present in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. <laughs> you Philadelphia. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. They were known as Huguenots, right? Hey, fam, man, listen. Oh, bro. Boy, I know I got that genealogy, but bro, when you talk about the hidden hand, that was against the Germans. You feel me? Yeah, it was against the Germans. Hey, not to break your wisdom, because you was going somewhere. Um, But one tricky thing about them Germans, when you look at genealogy in particular, 
Two points. Number one, they range from brown to pale. You got black and white Germans. And number two, they were the type of people that would say they were something else. So they would be German, and if they was amongst Irish, they would say they was Irish. If they was amongst Spanish, they would say they were Spanish. German people right. get really traded. They was real nah, sneaky. They've always been. Now, I'm gonna show y'all. I'm gonna show y'all something too, because Ohio player, he say the Huguenots are not German. Now this is is true in the sense of origin. We know that they're gonna come out of France, the Huguenots, but right. they're gonna leave. And then a lot of them are gonna go to Austria, Russia, uh, yeah. Switzerland, right? Because I'm gonna show y'all something. Before they was calling it Germany, it was Switzerland. So that's how they slide them in. That's that, right, Switzerland right. Before they called it Germany, right, right. Germany right. is new. Right. Like right. Spain is new. Hey, it's no ancient listen. Germany. Hey, so you will see them come the here under the Swiss. Those would be the people that have become. Nice. Is this after? This is after the Holocaust. The Holocaust was niggas. It was all niggas, <laughs> man. Yeah, it was niggas. <laughs> yeah, them, 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 them niggas and trade niggas, niggas, niggas over to white folks. So yeah, in World War One, this is why they. This is what one of the reasons for the nineteen nineteen Pan African Congress, and them coming in nineteen twenty three. The whole conversation about niggas. And Africa not gonna come to 1923, but at that time in World War One, one of the things that the niggas from World War One can tell you that when they was going over there, that they was fighting niggas, and that it was niggas in Germany. It's Ooh, pictures of them. Uh, another Huguenot. I'm gonna show you another one. Watch this here. Oh, uh, how you play? You connected through this here. The Boers that went to South Africa, the Afrikaners, the Afrikaners. Uh, have direct lines with who? Germany. They fought with them in in the, in the World War. <laughs> yeah. You hear me? That's you real know? though. And I'm gonna show you something like through my genealogy. It even went back through there, like through France, right? So my people in France, they were dealers in France. When they got to England, right after the Catholics was pushing them out, when they got to England, fam, listen, fam, they became Morgan, and those are the same people that came to America as Morgan. But when you go back. Over to the original, it's dealers, right? The dealers, just like you, the store, all right? Real shit. But when you go farther than that, you're going to go back into that German ancestor. And then that, that shit dropped down to the Wales of England. A lot of people that are well stock of Dutch, those are the same. Some of those same families are the same. Those are original or some of the descendants of the Germans. Real talk. If you want a good book that opened it up for me is um Henry Kissinger the new world order and i didn't understand what he was talking about because when he first started talking about those groups of people he was talking about just like you said westphalia switzerland scandals vandals but when you put it together these are germanic tribes and that's why if you look at like the last 800 years in prussia matter of fact a lot of those german quote unquote countries didn't make it past hitler like a lot of those countries coalesced and became Germany and became parts of, that's why they have right, such right, a beef right. with Poland. Right. The, the, the black conquer. nobility family joined the they Nazi conquer. party in the First they, World that's War. That's why they say Hitler was trying to conquer the world. Yeah. 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 But see, you, know, you can't leave the Hungarians out. You can't leave the Hungarians out. Yep. Oh, hey, man, man. I what I was about to say, but I was about to ask. Yeah. I forgot yeah. what I was about to say. A, a top cats and, and a cat that just asked or uh, posed a statement, wouldn't that denote the same um, thing as saying that you're you're my brother's keeper? You know what I mean? If the Germans uh, sided with Hitler back during that time period, wouldn't that denote that? Like they had an allegiance or something? Well, it didn't have an allegiance because you gotta understand Hitler was, was with them at first. He wasn't the enemy. Until he, he um, he, say, he, he he created, he he built his own system, right? The same play that they wanted to run, or uh, equally, he did it for himself. So by printing money and not accepting their banks and all of this, uh, and he had the army to do it. Not only did he have the army, 
they had ancient science. I say that these motherfuckers had technology that they were in. Now watch this here. Where's that technology gonna, and that science gonna come from? It's gonna come from the original niggas who was there already. Now the, the black German. Hold on, watch this. I'm going somewhere because the last Mayan war was the 19 uh early 1900s in the early 1900s was taking place migration lowest migrations niggas lost their land in 1912 they ran tried to run every nigga out of georgia in 1912 then we're gonna go through the red summers 19 uh, uh through the through the through the 19 teens through the 20s we're gonna go through the red summers or these with niggas being moved off of their land. The dolls roll ended when 1907. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And then you're gonna go into the uh the Curtis Act. The Curtis Act came and cleaned Nin- all that land. The yeah, 19 Indians out yeah. who making hold on, then you got the reorganization act right in the 1920s. Well, they're turning niggas from that wind, plucking them in they play in the 19 what? All right, then. So, hey. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm almost, I'm almost done. Now, watch this here. Now, the Mayans last war was what 1910, but they'll give you to 1920. Um, and then you got World War One. you got this invasion in Europe. Um, what uh, uh, you got this invasion in Europe. So the same people that are running the play here in America, why it's going down here, and you had these migrations, and this, 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 at this time, they're just now bringing in the the white supremacy, right? After 1877 and the early 20th century, y'all spoke of it earlier. They, they on some shit there. Yeah, this is the second Ku Klux Klan. Now with this one, you got the, uh, immigration to Ellis Island. Now the clan is white boys that's coming over here, same as the niggas who they gonna put on the front line in the war. Yeah, yeah. Now, all of this shit is taking place. This this great migration, this great transfer of power from a, a nigga to a white boy put in place. But the white boy is of the bloodline. Europe, same okay. shit. That's okay. where you get clean. Yeah, yeah, century. The soldiers from World War One will tell you, niggas from Vietnam. My grandpa was still alive. My gra- yeah, my grandpa still alive too. When he was in World you, War One. Over there. It was niggas over there. 1898 to 1902, you had the U.S. Philippine War. When they got over there, they will tell you. Look in the records. They will tell you. My that grandpa was a Filipino right now on the dead homes. Shout out to David Fagan. He the nigga that left the the um buffalo soldiers and fought with the uh philippines he was right at home little poly life in the mountains they put a bounty on his head and never could kill him but go back into uh how black germany was even at the time of hitler and the real holocaust was getting them niggas up out of there yeah i'm, I'm about so to anything that i wanted man was the fact that i knew that there was uh, a type of Technology that they use to cause all of this. So, hey, yo, Mike, super, super low, fam. All right, hold on, hold on, real quick. I don't know if you need to put put it on speaker or get up close on it, or see if them headphones back charged up. <laughs> no, no, I had it. I had it set under the, the wrong setting. Ah, right, you good now? We can hear you now. All right. So the thing that I wanted to add was the fact that what you proposed just now is 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 factual you know um but what i i wanted to reiterate was the fact that behind all of that they were using great technology to to cause all of this to happen and i know a lot of i've seen something about this but what what was the great technology you're talking about Apparent, I don't know what it is, but all I could tell you is by the evidence that I see in these old videos. I'm talking about cities buried under mud. I'm talking yeah, about you the think you know about the new geo, geo yeah, well, 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 this here, um, the geological earth that we see. Technology, on. one of the things, and this one the military gonna play. You had the, the Spanish flu, yeah, I remember back then. 
this was a time where they were setting up, they was building the skyscrapers, where they were putting up the power lines and shit. Um, all this time. Also, after World War II was going to happen, you had Operation Paperclip. Operation Paperclip brought over who? The German scientists. Germans. Yeah. Right. And they yeah. Yeah. U.S. citizens. Yeah. Let's, let's put one more on that. I, I swear to God, I don't want to stop you. But um, you cannot forget that they brought over the impressions who created our school system. That's the same conversation we were just having about the school system. Our school system was created by Rockefeller and the Rothschild. They brought over the Prussians from the Prussian school system, and they created the general education system. They for just did a build on it. They just did a build on it on the real. Yeah, 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 um, that out. Those are German, you see, watch the deal, though. You, you got my bad. Uh, you got, you got, y'all got to watch who played a, a major part in it because our education is mostly is going to come from. It's either gonna be Protestant or you went to Catholic school. If you ain't go Catholic school, then nigga, you getting it from. And Rockefeller and them, they they Baptist, but they quote unquote Protestant. It's the same thing. Crypto. But Martin Luther is well really who gonna put down the um the the blueprint for as um the system on how Motherfuckers gonna be taught the the first Martin Luther not King but the Protestant yeah right, right. yeah they gonna go through his system he look look into them niggas and they actually are the ones that's gonna break it loose from the Catholic Church and create this system and really that's what you under Baptist and all of that that shit is Protestant the education is Protestant that's the Quaker that's the all of that shit there um um Southern Baptist Convention Martin Luther King. Uh, they calling it Baptist, but they hiding the Protestant. But um, yeah, that's who really gonna form it. But watch this here to that the people in France, uh, like I say, that's where the Huguenots gonna come from after John Calvinist. He who got his game from who? Martin Luther. Where did they go? They went to Prussia when they left there. <laughs> they went to Prussia with all of the money. Who did? Where did? So uh, let me ask you, Tom. Um, Hold on, hold on, watch this here. What did the Rothschild send? With Rothschild, they send they, they when they all went out. What's one of what's one of the places that they went to? Argentina. <laughs> nah, they sent them in a few places. Pressure, and a lot of it. These people never complain for nothing that took place in colonization, but they hold a lot of the wealth. They hold a lot of the power still. And they don't even have an arm wow. to pick it up. Wow. They don't even have a large enough arm. This shit really a chest, though. This <laughs> shit just not checkers for real. Nay, nay. That's crazy. Is. She got that Texas That's flag crazy. up there, too. Turn up, That's y'all. Crazy. Uh, I'm going to grab something to drink. Hey, 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 everybody. I'm about to drop down. I'm going to lift somebody else up if they want to come up. Uh, top, uh, Hit me up on the ground, man. All right, all right. All right. Peace and love, everybody. Hey, y'all hold it down for the Peace and love. What's up? Peace and love, bro. No, but I, I, I'll say I want to say this off the um, off the to piggyback off the back end of what Top said. Um, as far as the depth of the information and the detail and and how the brother Top is explaining it, it makes sense to me because just. The places that he's talking about in the time periods, like you cut out. I guess I take yeah. over, right? See, yeah. one thing, one thing, people. My, you, know, check. you back? Go ahead. Hello, hello. Yeah, you good. All right. One thing people forget is these is real people we talking about, man. Like these is people who had ancestors. These are people who had children. And you know, I, I didn't I didn't been around the world. I didn't been around some people. And the mistake that the average human being makes is they believe that everybody got a story like them. Everybody, you know, live a life like them. And it's people out here that's been living big for a long, long time. These and people don't plan on giving it up, neither. 
the, these people that we're talking about who built these school systems, trust me when I tell you that their children don't go to these school systems. These these people who started these corporations, trust me when I tell you they still own these corporations. And that's why you should go to a private school. You Even the become, private yeah, schools, you be, bro. You got to become part of something. They 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 part of something big, and they they really understood it from the beginning. So now that we waking up, it's like hopefully we all can get it fast. But like everybody say, each one teach one, and niggas when the lights come on, they just come on. You feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, once we all can get it, it'll be understood, and we will all be able to make a, a change collectively. But how they Let have the upper hand. It's just by us waking up right now, bro. It's it's big because the shit that they doing right now, you can see through it. Like, hold Let on, me tell you my personal experience with private schools, bro. I went to private school, my elementary school. I'm gonna tell you about me, and I'm gonna tell you about my cousin. I got tired of that shit. I told my mother in seventh and eighth grade, I didn't want to do that shit no more. I went to I went to public school, but I had the comparison point. And I remember when I went to high school, my guys that went to private school, they whole elementary school, they was lost. They didn't they didn't know how to build with normal people out here. Like they came out and they was trying to be super thugs. And, and it was I here because that too before. It's like, bro, you went to church every Friday. I know exactly where you're from. Why are you out here super thugging? You know what I'm saying? And then I got my other cousin. I love him to death, but they swore his whole life he was going to be a gang leader. And he went to private schools and elementary school, high school, and college and still ended up catching the felony. It's like, you know, you need, we need our community. We don't just need a private school just to be a private school we need our communities back we need our nations yeah. back real life real life we need to you be able to deal with each other instead of tearing each other down because that's all that happened with gang wars that is me getting into it with you over me being at a party and i'm looking at your bitch or you over there and you just said something to my homie at school or something and then this nigga fought you and i knock you down it's, it's tribal you know gang coaches is and see this with the you I'm just trying to relate it. That's it. I got you. I got you. And 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 I'm gonna show you something. This is what they know. They handle us like we are the Indians uh that fought against this uh US expansion. The the well, when you hear about similar wars and all that, they that's the prison, the pipeline. That's why they were mm -hmm. so keen on you know, you go you're gonna go to jail when Peabody and them introduced free education. And you want to know the craziest thing, Top? They still got their hand in that, too. So they, they getting paid under the table through the pipeline, too. So it's crazy as fuck that niggas is just be letting them build like that. They continuously fucking us over, and we ain't seeing it. So when you come with this information you be coming with, it's deep because you can see it now. Hold on, nigga. You played my granny like that, nigga, over this punk-ass mule in, in five acres. Now you didn't build the Walmart, nigga, and you sitting on 20 acres. We ain't even said nothing about it, so y'all could take it. In the we just, said Indian land. We was finna go to uh Kakakuku, uh Mound or some shit like that in Alabama. And, and then they hit me. I think it was Dia. She hosted it was like, uh, hey, this not the original one. They like remade it. It was like a, a Walmart or a Sam's Club. You feel me? And then they told the Sam's Club down uh, in Alabama uh, reconstructed the mother. I said, man, we ain't going to this shit, dude, man. Yeah. Family, <laughs> hold on. Do, do you do you know the ill behind Jekyll Island, bro? I know everybody knows the story about J Jekyll Island and how they the rich people plotted. What motherfuckers don't know about Jekyll Island is Jekyll Island was a Tamuqua tribe. Jekyll Island was Tamuqua territory, and when they killed all them Tamuqua and they pushed them off of Jekyll Island, the Rothschilds built their home village on top of that shit. Then we get see something with the doing. golf courses on the island. They doing it right now. Oh yeah, yeah it's a, it right now they got. I think Trump got land out there. Uh, they do that purpose, the man. They know what they do. Like, like, uh, um, yeah, they doing it up out there. But that was one of the. the that was the Gold Coast. That was the Gold Coast back That then. part, yep. And the Carolinas. Yeah, the Spanish discovered right gold in the Carolinas. Don't even trip. 
Nigga, we gonna do it up, nigga, like we supposed to. Ain't nobody scared of nobody, bro. And we been getting money. What's wrong with them? It's just that we gotta start saving and coming together and putting it together, bro, again. Because we was all tribe up. Nigga, niggas had somebody to go talk to, somebody to go build with, somebody, hey, man, come with me. That ain't happening no more unless you from somebody yeah, good. Or about the, 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 rep, the niggas in that era who was in representation, they go back to the tribal red shoes in the uh uh the shock time you know uh when they, they took niggas down there and put money behind them niggas yep. no bloodline ties to the tribe and gave niggas the keys because in the community they was able to provide and, and help out and uh you know help in these institutions and shit. so you you look at it it's uh push matata them and and different niggas are uh, uh, Kalita from the Kasadi. These niggas who sided with the, you know what I'm saying? Niggas in representation. When my people them was like, we ain't fucking with it. Kalita them like, all right, well, we, we fucking with it. And so now you got the tribe split. Uh, these niggas then went this way with the U.S. So it's all about the representation, even today in this era. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, what we going to do because we're here. And it's all about the representation. And when you got poor representation, you got to call it out. Look at the U.S. now. Trump called out John Lewis, said some fly. That nigga told that nigga, nigga, look how long you been uh, over these cities, nigga, and look at the conditions. No education. The schools told on. Sheila Jackson Lee said some fly. Nigga, the edu- oh, they closed down the schools. They'll look at the education level, potholes in the road. I, look at y'all infrastructure. I know you niggas ain't talking to me, and you niggas been here 40, 50 years. And so it's all about the representation. And we have been having the poor, we've been having poor representation this whole time. That's all it, that's all it's been. All of this shit here could have been stopped. I told Phil Valentine, nigga, put us behind the A-ball. You ain't behind the A-ball because y'all coming off the shoulders of them. We ain't coming off the shoulders of them. This shit here could have been took care of back in the 60s. Because that's when the flip came. Oh. This shit could have been done in 60. 69 is when they started kicking niggas out of the creek. This when they started reconstituting 79, they started reconstituting their constitutions and shit. All of this shit mm-hmm. here, and, they, and now niggas not a part of it. The Curtis Act, the Seminole uh, separate themselves from the Mika Suki and us. Now we freedmen and slaves, and nigga, we the one brought you bitch ass niggas down here. You niggas been under our uh muscle, G pass, and so uh the, the seminal shit didn't come to the 20th century. These are a lot of things that niggas uh 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 can't see or uh, when they when they flip niggas and now we you know that was the whole point of the 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 um the, the misclassification that was the whole point of killing Negro and, and all this type of shit here and coming with these new political names. And he knew this civil rights movement and all this type of shit. That was the whole cover up. Yesterday, a lot of motherfuckers was uh yesterday, uh Trump was in court yesterday, huh? Nigga set himself on fire outside the building, right? Oh uh, big facts, big facts on the other side of the world, nigga. You got this this Israel and them beefing on the other side of the world. All this shit here going down, and it's a distraction. It's a distraction. Nigga, they in court and a nigga outside on fire. Come on, man. Uh, hey, family. Whole... Now, see, this is why I got on the panel. I don't know why people didn't notice this. Today, 10 a.m. today, they passed that law talking about they got to sell TikTok. That's not the important part. You know what they stuck in that bill? $28 billion in support of Israel. Billion. Yeah. People don't even peep that. Like they put the TikTok though. Say what now? TikTok though, because that's what niggas go be boy. Come over here, and then they got the real shit. They just slid the money there. All this shit is a game, man. Uh, what Vladimir said, he said them niggas are puppets to it, but niggas not mm-hmm. understanding. This is where you go back to the bloodlines. Who is them niggas for the bloodlines? They nigga been there since. Motherfucking Bush, huh? Same nigga, right? Mm-hmm. How long he been there? Long time. He get older. Like, he older than old. Huh? And why that nigga even real? The, the nigga, uh, 
What the hell you look? Didn't know conspiracy theory. When, when Trump was running, they had found motherfucking spy devices. And guess who they linked it back to? Israel. Why, nigga? Ain't no uh, uh, repercussions come behind that type of shit. You know what I'm saying, man? It's, it's a dirty game. I don't even like to talk about that type of shit on here, but it's it's a dirty game. I, you know, I know the stay out niggas business. You talking about some real money? Uh, they the 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 the, the nigga for um uh Bowen, South Carolina. They say he uh unalived himself. Whistleblower. Oh. Yep, they come out yep. of the game. Yep. Bro, that these niggas are uh, goddamn me, uh, ordering parts from a goddamn uh, uh, jet ski company down in Florida instead of going and get the, the, the right material, to, you know what I'm saying? And so they cutting corners, and uh, these type of things was bound to happen. So now they got a new whistleblower that came now, they down him, and they got a new one coming. Bowen came out and said how much money they didn't spend doing this whole situation. Not only them, uh, United, they sales for the month. Go look at they how much money they didn't lost for the month. Uh, not only that, but more than any time ever, we seeing all of this shit going on with the airlines. Hey, this nigga top sound like Martin Luther King, B. Hey, it ain't. Hey, this shit here, bro. You gotta look. They sitting these niggas down. These airlines, you have the ability to fly into other niggas' country every day. Have you seen the glitches where the motherfucker just stop in mid air? Man, they got. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. that. Just yesterday, goddamn um, Southwest, uh, one of the motors blew out, nigga. Nigga, one of the engines blew up. I think they do. I think they just cheaping out on the infrastructure and trying to break us down. Exactly. You know, look at the bridges and everything else. Kill us all. The food bag. You know, they 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 different. Nigga, the food different animal. Let me tell you something. It's too much money for them to be thinking about us. Yeah, too much money to say. But they're not even worried about us. Nigga, we ain't got nothing. This is a a power move, bro. Right now, the world is in. Uh, who gonna be the next superpower? Uh, right now, I don't think people, that. Okay, so That's how many it. people dropped? I think it is because look at the border. 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 That if you wanted to buy something, even or even in Saudi Arabia, Dubai, any of these people, any of these niggas wanted to buy oil, you know they had to pay in U.S. dollars. In U.S. dollars, and, yeah, and they don't have to do that anymore. In the past thirty days, listen. In the past thirty days, um, the BRICS nations have got That's right, applications BRICS. from thirty-seven <laughs> different countries to join the BRICS nations. That's listen, right. They, they want that gold, bro. It's gold. right now. And so why you think Bitcoin is shot back up, right? Hey, y'all, y'all niggas been in your Bitcoin hey. wallets? That bitch just shot back up, didn't it? Yep. But don't, hey, don't, look, don't, hey. Look, you know, that, hey, look. Get in and get out. Now watch man, this shit, though. Right the now, the man that was in going. front of the Capitol building, though, was talking about that in his, uh, I, I want to say memoirs, because that's the only way that I could think. His, his uh, whatever disposition he wrote, he talked about Bitcoin and how they laundering money through that. And that's... Causing the destruction of America further. Well, at the same no, time, they want to get rid of cryptocurrency because all of them are using it. You got to remember that's why they fund them. under Go the ahead. black market. It was under the it was on the black market. One Bitcoin the, first purpose was illegal activity. Period. And when absolutely, and this, how, and, and, and this is how different nations in power were able to do it because you're not gonna see. If, uh, this is this is around the area of Libya, where Libya fell, right? And you had HC, which is say that demolition, right? And the whole thing out of this situation, right? Now, when they went in there, what was taking place at that time? A slave trade. 
Y'all remember all them Africans leaving and they had to pass through that and what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got slavery. Yep. Nigga in modern time. What was the pan they was getting caught on that boat? They was on that big ass boat in them containers. I remember that. The petrol got hey, hold on. They say I feel you. They say my mic messed up. Is it my mic? No, it's is it me? One. Yeah, it's you. All right. So what does it sound like? Loud. You just gotta turn it down a notch. All right. Let me uh yeah, the so, petrol, um, yeah, the petrol it, dollar um, over. That's when that's when Bitcoin shot through the roof at the same time that that slave trade was going up you know why because you're not finna go buy no slave trade with your credit card right you ain't gonna buy no slave with your credit card you ain't finna write a check for the motherfucker, are you you ain't finna go get a traveler check for the motherfucker, a money order so what you gonna do you're gonna go through the black market and that bitch shot through the roof bars now today is it's shooting back up because what the US dollar is shooting down. Uh inflation is crazy than the motherfucker right now, niggas. Oh, the pumps, you go to them hoes every day. And yeah, they one meal, one meal like eighteen dollars now. Well, let me ask y'all how many uh y'all states out there are talking about raising taxes. Um here in the city of Houston, they say they broke, so they want to ask the Houstonians. Or are they okay with them raising taxes? Bitch, they are raising not. in California. California went up like last year. Oh shit! See now, watch this. So we finna start seeing the trend. Now they want more money. When I say bad representation, because oh, uh, I seen the little clip the other day, and they was talking about uh the 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 uh Dubai, and they were saying when you look them the the family up, they only worked a couple billion. But they were able to build a, a mecca in the paradise and had this much wealth. It is not, it, you know. I seen this other clip with this dude told him, "Oh, uh, who richer, Africa or Dubai?" He said, "You know what's the difference?" He said, "The difference is the representation. It's not." It, he said, "Y'all have more mineral. Y'all are minerally richer than us. That's right. Dubai can't even grow their own products. They get most of their produce from Spain, right?" I, they get most of their produce from Spain, so they not even growing their own foods. They don't even have yeah. the ability to. They, they don't are, have a lot of nature. Either, do of the thing. And Dubai on like an island though. It's an yeah. island, bro, and it's like desert. a desert, right? Desert. Yeah. They didn't build desert. it up. They didn't build it up so much. That it's they, you know, it's real life sandstorms, nigga. Right now, it's underwater. Right, right now, it's flooded. Yeah, it's, it's flooded right now. Um and uh. If y'all see them buildings, y'all seen the one when them little kids was jet skiing through there? I know exactly what that is. That is a you gotta have some money to live over there. And look at the uh, you know, look look at how the houses look, bro. Them not them not like no million dollar houses, two million dollar houses, but malls look, look like palaces, shit. man. It's Crazy. look at the roads though, even the roads, and and I just I I look back, I'm like, man, these can't nobody do nothing better than us, bro. Oh uh, nah, man, these niggas ain't good with their hands like us, bro. But uh, those places they have, no take light. Our they have no light. No light. The full no light. Well, no they didn't get the technology man. away, right? So if you know the era, even them trading with people like Israel and the, in in Britain for so long, even our military. So we yeah, they have Marines in in the UK, or uh, you got Royal Marine, British Mar Royal Marines, and all that. Oh, uh, they not equivalent to us, but they getting the same training. Oh, yeah, uh, my, my, I don't want to speak too much. Man. My brother, uh, he out right now. My little brother, he at what nineteen? He out right now. He ain't here, so I don't want to say where he at and all that. But on on the real, I know exactly what you. Yeah, talking about. I mean, in Ukraine right now, um, you know they listen. We the the way that niggas they the, the U.S. colonized it and people can't pitch it in their head. But what you think happening right now? Especially if you, you niggas been to the army. Uh man, y'all know when y'all go in. Y'all finna do what? Y'all finna go set up a perimeter. Y'all finna go door to door in this bitch, nigga. And okay, we and, and we, where we, niggas from? Huh? <laughs> yeah, where where? Yeah. That's what nigga. They they do that right now with with the martial They've been doing it. They, we yeah, watched them. The Middle East had never been conquered, bro. The Middle East had never been conquered. That was the first time the Middle East got conquered, homie. 
let, let's talk about the fact that niggas with money is already down there, Uruguay, and in Costa Rica, bro, and how El Salvador is inviting people down there. Literally, well, it's Salvador happening right is, now. El Salvador is building that huge prison. And he, have you seen it? They're doing, like, prison cities. So they I don't know who they putting in them. Yeah, see, see they, they, they that's probably what the, that's probably what they trying to stop us from seeing. Indigenous people. Because what they said is, if you have a degree, if, if you have, like, if you were an engineer or something like that, they'll pay your whole way down there. And what a lot of people don't know is, uh, we'll, we'll go back to uh, 1780, uh, I mean, 1680, when um, William Penn got Pennsylvania. Well, he went around um, Germany, and he was asking people, he, he brought in most of the people that was protestant and not because of that but because of their skill so niggas is always so when we look up and we see the daca program and them niggas coming here training your ass in america and sending you back for your skills understand that all of these places that these uh they're bringing over they brought over what we just watched the afghans and all of these niggas and shit come right and they bringing them in well these these are colonies to the americas now the niggas that are in control are uh, at the table. They're putting a look at uh, Haiti. I didn't even want to bring that up, but them niggas don't know what they want to do. When it when it gets so real that a nigga run in the leader house, the president hired a nigga and down him. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> so, well, nigga, this shit is real life, nigga. You talking about a it's power, bro, nigga? The right now, bro, there is a power grab going on in the world. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the representation of the U.S. have they been so outsourced, and the niggas was looking for personal gain. Cause remember, Hollyberg and um, what was that nigga uh, chaining them, and and you know the you know all at all, and what they do, they send the niggas out there to go say the poppy fields because them niggas was burning them whole nine. Them niggas was setting all and shit on fire. Them niggas yeah. sent them niggas yeah, out. Y'all don't want to y'all gonna try to take it. We gonna fuck it up. Nigga put a perimeter around this bitch. Y'all ain't blowing this up. We finna get that. <laughs> we come to get that. And so uh nah, and then they put they 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 uh regime in place. I mean, you go from Baghdad, I mean Iraq to all of these places. So these people that are in place, come on, bro. This these niggas are building college. Look at Ukraine. Why you think mm -hmm. US ain't let Russia smash Russia with a ran through them? Because they didn't want they, the they don't want to build NATO. They want to try to stop their Eastern European bloc, you know, building NATO up to take over the other part of Europe. And what Russia do? Russia said, okay, they so okay. right now that nigga going to make his own play. They they right. dropping the dollar to represent bro. You didn't I saw it so much, and that's what Trump was trying to save them. Trump mm -hmm. said, we're going to build our shit in America. Mm -hmm. Everything needs to be American made because we getting these niggas too much power and they not your friend. And he was trying to get us on his side so we are back. Everybody, they, your friend, these niggas trying to get money. Right now, they trying to uh, get a bill passed so they can sell uh, sleep jets and sleep fighter jets and shit. Why you want to get a, the, the game up? Because in 30, 20, 30 years, I'm going to be dead any motherfucking way. You really, you really, this how yeah. these niggas looking at it. But the 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 only thing keeping the U.S. alive right now is the technology and the military, bro. And they at odds. The military fighting each other, nigga. The motherfucking yeah. navy and the Back. them niggas don't like right. each other, right? Nigga, they can't get people the to they can't recruit and nobody. They don't fuck with each other. Even the agencies, FBI, CIA, them they don't fuck with each other. Mm -hmm. Man, man, the, this shit is so. And because every everyone has different interests, and everybody not sitting at the same table, how niggas that throw white supremacy at you and make you think it is, and mm -hmm. that's and that's a fucked up way to even because you you not even having a nigga looking at what's really going on because a lot mm -hmm. of these niggas are sitting at the table behind closed doors. And so mm -hmm. that's why they always came out to give us a direction. These niggas still using the same play that they used in the early 20th century. That's why I don't understand. And it's like, 
they time is, is is up because the corporation time is coming up. The representation been so bad, it wasn't even strong enough to to like you said, them niggas had to defund these these this African movement. Uh, right now in America, they can give a fuck if you think you African or not here in America. Nigga, there's so many immigrants in this bitch. They got so many Africans in here, they don't give a damn. And then None you can't of prove that you still right now. This whole administration has been dealt with foreign affairs through the whole administration, starting with the first day bringing over South American immigrants. Nigga, they didn't give a fuck about uh nothing in this administration had anything to do with America. I mean, nothing, absolutely nothing, nigga. They put out so much money. These niggas didn't put out so much goddamn money around the world so they can take care of. What they can take here in these little colonies where they're trying to build up their little plays at. And to them, it's them looking to the future, even with Africa. You feel me? Nigeria and all of these places, they are looking to build them up. They're going to have a world college there with all the information uh, niggas from around the world going to be there. Your NBA teams, NFL, all of them, y'all look at that. All of them have, they, all of them have plans of moving it over there. They're calling uh 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 um what was that? Not is it Nigeria or Ghana? The new Miami. I think it's Nigeria. I think they call Nigeria the new Miami now. Huh. Because they, they 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 implementing so many the way that we hold our clubs, our hoopers, the parties, put it on the beach. Uh yeah, and so they're yeah, it's and they're trying to make it attractive for niggas over here. Yep, mm -hmm. it, that's Ghana you talking about. It's Ghana, yep. yeah. Because Akon failed. How the hell Akon get a billion dollar bag and fumble it? He was out there doing some electrician or light some shit. Brad was supposed to create a whole city and he fumbled a whole city. <laughs> Where they do that at? He should have came and got us. So we would have immediately had that motherfucker go to tourist there. We would have been that motherfucker going, going skiing and shit, coming back to America, talking big shit to these niggas like y'all ain't like us, bitch. See, I'm like us. something, man. What's so cold? All of it, cause uh the US still have a chance. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, everybody else yep. around the world, it's just like picking teams, bro. Everybody else around the world, if they had the opportunity, look how much money you can make overseas. I'm talking about being an American nigga coming from here. You know how much money they pay you overseas, nigga, to teach to anything. Or uh, what the people at out there? Do y'all know how much money these niggas will pay your ass around the world to bring in you and yeah, America? Just you, yeah, just you. They'll pay for your housing and everything. You got that same type of value. You can go to Japan right now. See, you can go to a lot of countries. Go, go to Japan with you. Listen to me. The UA, the UA, UAE gonna overpay you, nigga. And they gonna pay for your housing. Yeah. And they gonna pay for your meals. And My I'm talking about all that shit free, nigga. And they gonna pay you. And your salary, stupid. You get three meals a day. Stop and it. Gonna, and they like gonna going fuck to you out. Going see, to Alaska kind of like that, the same bro. thing. And he here, what you get? Like right sixty thousand. What they get? Teachers? What teachers making? Fifty, sixty thousand. Depends on which state you're in. Yeah, so and they it depends not even... if you have certification and all of that. But see, watch this here. A lot of the skills that they're trying to give uh the people that's not from here, and uh the people that are from here, well, it is no real value. You know they ain't got no they not putting no real value in it see back then one thing that america always had to their advantage was that they can unleash us on 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 niggas <laughs> you know what i'm saying they can always always had us to follow they will unleash us and and i mean from the building of it it was nothing when they was calling it you know you see the postcards from back in the day and the, the whole phrase, America, greatest country in the world, and what made everybody attracted to us and all of that. Well, that was coming from the hands and the minds of us, of our ancestors, of our people. If you want to fight, guess what they're going to do? They're going to send, they're going to unleash them niggas on your ass. When we get to the Olympics, they had all the pride in the world, even at a time that supposed to have been race, one of the most racial times, right? 
with the famous mm-hmm. black power uh pose and all of this type of shit here. But nigga go out there in the world and dominate. America always unleashed the niggas on the world. Well, it changed and after you know um that Reagan yeah, era, man. really I say. Mm-hmm. Really Reagan, really the after the era. Reagan era, I think shit went, you know, for as representation, I think shit went a while. Shit, shit went crazy, man. And it fell all the way apart. They stopped seeing the value of niggas because that's when they uh the school system took out vocation, it went from vocational skills and they wanted to break the nigga down the crack area of course and out of that three strikes right. come crime bill uh they unleashed and, on facts. us facts they right yeah us. yeah broke the nigga it's down like they used us up and now they hit us with right. crack. Yeah. Yeah. but you know what's real no I, I gotta i gotta get some pushback they thought they could replace us and they couldn't I, I remember being 11 years old. Let's talk about us with those mound builder genomes. When I was supposed to get on the on the bus for free, and I'm like 10 years old, and dude, like, where's your ID? And I didn't even know what the ID was. I never forget that shit. You know what I'm saying, nigga, six foot tall in eighth grade, talking about some bow, 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 <laughs> with the deep ass voice and all that shit. And then they started hitting us with the um the gang activity we we walk in from school in seventh grade bro and they pull up on us in paddy wagons talking about a get up against the wall you like like what are you talking about bro they, no was, reason. they they was not prepared for us and they tried to replace us that's why when you look at that west african music you look at fella kuti who's fella kuti studying isaac hayes Who's Mr. Easy James studying? Brown, you don't talk about James Brown. Who's Mr. Easy studying? Who's Wiz kids studying? They're studying us. Well, you mm-hmm. go back to they first when then then come that the, the first African to jump on wax then come into the 1920s. They couldn't That's how us. late they came in. You know and you had people that was coming from here who performed at the first Pan-African conference in, in 1897. They what went they started here, doing all over the world. They took these niggas mm-hmm. all over the world from here, and that's what they Julius? got theirs from. Why you Who is think it? All your Julius basketball Julius? players got white kids. Yeah. Have white kids. Why you think that they paid LeBron to have a baby with the owner of the team's daughter? They're trying to put those genes in their children, bro. They're trying so hard to replace us, and it's just not happening. Well, can I say something? I just want to inject for a minute. So. You know, we said that the shift started to happen in the 80s. I think that was when they started to bite on us. I think that came, and Chief, you talk about this a lot, during the 60s when you started to see these movements and, you know, the black power. And, you know, it was like after Vietnam, especially in, you know, the brothers held it down in Vietnam. And that war was very political because, um you know, black people, Muhammad Ali made that statement. And so you have this quote unquote black power movement going on. And then they was like, shit, we got to do something because they don't want to be American anymore. They're not proud to be American in their eyes. They are seeing who we are. Then you bring in the eighties, you know, with all of those wars on, you know how they have all these um, war on drugs, war on this, war yeah, the on Panthers that. and all that all shit. These euphemisms, but all of that was euphemism for war on Indians. You yeah. see what I'm saying? And so, the, and the, yeah. yeah. Now, when you mentioned uh, about Fela Kuti and then Chief, you said in the 19 in the 1800s, you know, singers from America was going over to Africa, and the first ones, you know, were put on wax in the 1920s. You bring it up to uh, the Rotary Foundation, right? where they were bringing over Africans. So what I had learned was that Oyotunji, right? Tunde Oyotunji, he's supposed to be like the father of African music, the father of African drumming. Do you know that he was given a deal, a six album deal in the 1950s? He went to, um, I think it was Howard University. So here you have like him and Krumah's coming over here other Africans are coming over here. They're learning the culture and everything like that. Then the next thing you know, he's the father of Yoruba, spirituality, African music, and this, that, and the third. 
And I'm like, well, where did he get that from? And yeah. then you have Fela Kuti, who use, studied under James Brown. And that's the same time where they tried to use the ring shout. There you go. Tried to use the ring shout as a connection with the Carolinas and Sierra Leone. Like, we don't know you niggas. Left from right. South Carolina, the Pequots, the Micmacs, the uh, Arawakans. Like, we don't know y'all went over there to uh, Sierra Leone. <laughs> It's crazy, man. My barber from Sierra Leone, and I be that's, him this shit. That's why the last time I went to Mississippi, I love Mississippi, bro. Niggas don't even understand. That's why I keep that. I swear to God, every time them motherfuckers say Mississippi, that's when I pop up. Last time I was out there, you know, I went back to um, Tupelo. I took that back road back to Tupelo. And I stopped it, you know what I'm saying, where the water meets. I don't even know what it is, like the Gulf of Mexico. And I went to the Natchez Trace, bro. And the, the first thing is, is they have maintained the Natchez Trace. And they built a jogging trail next to it. And I talked to my family that live in Mississippi. And they got my family scared to go down there because, you know, the white people still lynching and killing. Let's just be honest. We didn't all heard about that graveyard yeah, behind the, the Jackson, Mississippi um police station. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I seen that. I think uh, that was a game game. You know, I try to keep it authentic and current, but I gotta bring up one of the elders named Francis Wells Crescent was not lying. They really want to be us, bro. How they maintained our infrastructure and they still there, and it's no people that look like us living there. That's I man, LA is kind of starting to get like that, man. They, when I was a kid, it was all black. Now it's all masking. Chicago, Cook County, Harold Washington, 1989, majority black. 2024, majority everything else. Houston, Texas. Texas, bro. <laughs> come on, bro. Houston, bro. I grew up. I was cafeteria ladies. Uh, I mean, everywhere you go, it was we it was us. Now you can't go nowhere in this us, nigga. I mean, the Mexicans bu cooking barbecue, Italian food. They on every corner oh, with the tacos. <laughs> God damn. And ain't nothing the same. The food don't taste the same. Uh, it don't feel the same when you go out to eat. A nigga like me. Niggas I, don't be outside no more. I don't, I don't want to sit in this motherfucker. Table ain't clean. None of this shit. You hear me? You hear me? You got to tell these niggas to come. Clean the table, I was hey man. Why these forks got these spots <laughs> on it and all that shit? So, when we see back in the game, what niggas when we was doing it, and a nigga was dressed nice and neat, shirt tucked in, your you mama know, gonna whoop your ass if you not. When they pour water, all type of table manners, everything is to the T. Oh, uh, shout out to my nigga Black Fife and man. He said, Oh, uh, he was locked up with this white dude, and uh. I think the dude was a racist or something. And uh, and he was telling him about the old time, the Negro Leagues in baseball. And he told him that uh, they never, when they went and played and played them on their field, they he ne they never seen, uh, uh, you know, the earth manicured like that. You feel me? He said them niggas' fields and they grass and just how they took care of their shit was just different. Everything was immaculate when we was running this shit. Today, don't nobody know what they're doing. You walk in the room. I had a nigga yesterday at Chick-fil-A. This nigga got my little ice cream cup, had his palm on the top of it, got the spoon, started beating the spoon on it, just like a drum. Tapping <laughs> <laughs> on that hoe, walking up on his way to me. He got close to the car, I burned off on that nigga like he was alive. <laughs> oh, well, nigga, I don't want that. That's so ill. It's right. little, it, man, it's just not the world, not the same no more. And it's because it's not. we not, you know what I'm saying? We not in, in, in position. Niggas was talking about, oh, nigga didn't want to work. Now nah, we lucky we was working back then. You go to the cleaners now, I had a shirt, man. I paid $200 for this shirt. And them hoes that knocked the color out of it. And I'm like, I remember when we used to go to the black cleaners and all this shit. Yep, yep. You ain't had them problems. Like, motherfucker, sew your shirt up. Hey, take that shirt out. Come See, in what, take what you shirt. just said, we, we can't walk past what you just said, bro. Absolutely. We, 
we can't walk past what you just said because we was the hardworking people and they put out that propaganda and called us lazy and it was bullshit. Mm-hmm. My grandfather cried when they laid him off of his job. He didn't give a fuck about church. That's yeah, when he started my going to church. Just came up in this motherfucking no cap. God, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we the hard workers. We the one that built this bitch. Yep. Greg, how old are you, Greg? Uh, say the old Natchez Trace. How brother. old are you? Transportation routes in North America. This <laughs> granny I got right here is 74. Where you from, Granny? You from Mo- hold on, let me get close with the mic. You from where? Mobile, Alabama. She from where your mama from? from Georgia. Your mama from where? From Georgia. Hold on, let me let me turn my camera on for my granny, man. Yeah, she from where? My granny from where? How you doing, Granny? Hi, uh, who is that? Well, you on <laughs> you know, that's right. Right. my house. You know, you know, we grandma don't let nobody in the house. Peace, man. We on the chat, and everybody peace, on here peace, grandma. that we Indian. I want you to tell them who we are, because everybody talking about we African. No, we got no Africans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard it first, man. From right here. Yeah, yeah turn up. How old was your mama when she died? Ninety-seven. How old would she be right now? One hundred and twenty-four. Yeah. yeah, man. Stop playing with me. One hundred and twenty-four. The thing is, like that nigga. I was on No Boy Channel. He was talking all that high power shit, and I showed them my genealogy, gave my address, all of the high power stuff, because he was talking like that. But my granny's still living, nigga. You understand? That's and I got the paperwork. So what is y'all talking about? Hey, we don't even need the paperwork. We just need what she said. Easy. Just you like that. Me? You can't remember what grandma she told you. Her mother was. She know what her mother told her who she was. What, what's her mama yeah, say she was? Funny. She was Indian. What kind of Indian? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what kind of Indian she was. But my granddaddy was Indian and she was too. What was your granddaddy? I don't know who he was. What they say he was. Because mm-hmm. they show was talking about y'all Geechee when I was a kid. I didn't understand what that was at yeah, first. We yeah, yeah, he's coming out of Georgia. See, that was on her, her grandma's side right there, right? Geechee coming out of Georgia. That's her mama. Yeah. No, you her grandma. Geechee was my daddy. Okay, your daddy was Geechee. He, he, okay. he from North Carolina or South Carolina? Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, Charleston. Oh, yeah, he Geechee did. He Geechee Geechee did. No, he Yeah, he Geechee. He worked on the shipyards and all that. I showed him the papers and all that. Now, nigga, gonna tell me my granny fake. Nigga, don't ever dis. Nah, nah, man. She know who her mom is. He said we was is. doing fake genealogy, nigga. That tell that nigga to shut the we fuck up. Yeah. I mean, my my. Yeah, come on, come on, now. Now you okay. dug it. Now you dug it wait, in front wait of me. Wait a minute. Mom, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, Top Cat. Huh? Uh, she uh. uh he just he just brought prime uh, source back. Our sister came to get it. We finna move. Oh, that's a primary right there, man. That's primary. Yeah, we finna move. But we, we always move, say man. the primary is always gonna be the people. That's it. Period. And you can't get no more primary than the people. Mm. She that's know who mama. her mother and father is, and she know what they told her, and we know what our people told us. And, and it ain't the soul in this world that can tell us anything. They ain't never told me I was bad. What's wrong out. with them? And, and I don't be on here capping, nigga, nothing. It's always big love to anybody that want to fuck with us. But niggas that's against us, bro, they need to stay the fuck out the chat because you ain't doing nothing but cause of confusion. We trying to learn something. Nigga don't know the history of, out the books like you be putting it out there. That's why nigga fuck with you like that, cat. On the game, you do the way you do it. They ain't do it too, but he do it more in the school way. You do it more in the hood way. It's a beautiful thing because I'm a hood nigga. You understand? I'm from Compton. But at the same time, you from Houston and my daddy from Houston. So my mama's side is from Alabama and over there. My daddy's side is from Wharton, Texas. You feel me? All my death certificate. We got I got all that shit. Fuck is they talking about, man? I don't I don't like when niggas get the get. I don't care because the nigga was on the panel talking about you the other day, matter of fact. Now that I'm thinking about it. Dad was on there. Yeah, yeah. He was talking high power. Nigga talking about he looked up your granny and all of this type of shit. And it was, no, I'm like, boy, this nigga's being disrespectful. That's, um, what's his name? Uh, 
What's it? Lord Abba? Not yeah, on the on the oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he called the reservation Man, I, and, I, and, I, and I, asked I, him, did they know my grandma? Bro, you ain't got to do that, fam. I could just drive down there and show you Indian Village and pull up to our property still down there, bro, and show you the deeds how long we've been having this shit since 1837, nigga. Yeah, my people still on and my Stop granny it. on the reservation, nigga, right now in Texas, right now, nigga. Fuck is niggas talking about, nigga. My my people were slaves, but it was my my granny was the slave owner and my grandmother and them was the fucking slaves. So but I don't know why niggas know my paperwork in Texas. My grandpa yeah. is the slave owner, my grandma is the slave. That ain't a... that nigga, you know what that's called, Top? That's this called Ness, nigga. Since y'all want to play like here. that, I'm we know how to do it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me say this point. They own three towns. All right, so that's how we got a historical uh cemetery here. We got one of the oldest cemeteries, one of the largest at that time. Like he just brought up the Natchez <laughs> Trace down here. You had the uh um um boom 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 man. What's that uh the trace down here? You got the uh you had the uh damn man. I know my people here. last name for they got, got a, a cemetery out there too. Yeah, all the shit go right through the trace. Uh, it'll come to me though. Uh, but yeah, um, oh uh, y'all can grab a mic. Oh, I'm trying to think of this damn trace that it go through. But see, but man, isn't that I, what people do today when they open up a business and they have like their children as the employees? Exactly. Yeah, it's that's a slave it was, to them. It was just the system, and they, and they flipped it. Yeah, on in Texas, they had I think the wording. Like exactly. in 1840, they, they passed. Slave, a law. It would have been it would have been a worker or somebody who like your handmaiden or somebody so, who helped so you around. I, I say this here: Probably, slave right? laws. Texas was Texas was important because Texas, Mississippi, is big mama, but Texas became mama to a lot of people because Texas outlawed slavery. I agree, hundred percent. I agree. So because my people migration, from Texas, they came from South Carolina or North Carolina or Virginia. Right. So right it, during the migrations, during U.S. expansion, a lot of people came to Texas. 1791, Chief Bowles brought the Cherokee West. All right. After all this city hosting. After, yeah, they they war with the cattle for a couple of years, but then they ended up linking up with them. But uh, you had uh after the the Indian Removal Act 1830, where everybody started coming to Texas because they outlawed Texas in 1829, outlawed slavery here, and they always fought. That was their moniker. It ain't gonna be no slavery here, and you had so many Indian towns off the borders of Texas and Louisiana because Louisiana still was a slave state, especially after the war 1815, the Jackson. And cotton became king in the south, so it moves from deer skins and all of this shit here down to the cotton. And at that time, the 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 world and economics and that commerce, nigga, they they wanted that cotton, and we had the best dirt down here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. after fifteen, that's when those politics came in. So seventeen, we'll see Alabama and these places coming to statehood. Then we'll see the slave. Population increased from from goddamn two thousand to three hundred thousand, and these type of numbers start to happen, right? Because it's the people was on the land, but Texas became a uh, mama because uh, if you can make it here, nigga, your ass was free. So we see the shock tie. We see uh, the Cherokee in in eighteen forty five. What they on their way to? They they jump. They have a big war on their way here. Right. That same year in forty five, the Seminoles agreed. Uh, you know, to make a deal with the creek. They went to Oklahoma and ended up coming down into Texas. Um, a, a lot of Indians came here and found shelter here in Texas. You had a trade point in Jasper. Right now, my family, I done pulled it. Uh, they got a, a, a slave narrative. Uh, one of my uh, ancestors on there, he talking and he telling them that his mama was an Indian and all of this shit here. On, on record, they uh lived in Jasper today. They have a strip mall and they uh use the, the timber out for the land and they have to pay my family still to this day. That's my dead yeah. mom. They got to pay for that she because that was our land. And 
the a lot of the uh uh Indians uh had to join up. A lot of them fought together in Texas. Uh, so a lot of shit, a lot of man, Texas, we got all type of people down. Here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These niggas mixed up with a lot of shit in Texas down here. But it's a amalgamation of Indian tribes because this became uh uh this became mama mama texas goddamn cowboy and they what they called it the wild wild west nigga yeah that way hey it wasn't no law here you can't call the laws nigga <laughs> you feel me <laughs> and it was dangerous so Chief, I have Indian a territory so you said 1830 the cherokees went down into texas 1791 1791 yeah, they came, so that was they before the uh that was before Jackson's uh thing. Right, right, so, right. Yeah, all my so papers is saying. I know that he wrote that paperwork. Yeah, they, they said there. 1830, and then they started the removal like around because he this he um he had to go to the to the Supreme Court. Supreme they Court, yeah, they tried court. to fight it. Uh, Raul, right. And they said 1838 is when they started removing. But this is my question. When you hear about the Indian removal, right, in 1838, you mainly hear about them leaving from North Carolina and down south. But you don't ever really hear about them leaving from South Carolina. What was the deal with that? Well, because South Carolina, well, they actually made the first migrations because South uh, Savannah and Charleston, they always had that because 1733, Oglethorpe was a, a Jacobite. Oh, right, right. Okay, yeah, he was okay. a Jacobite. So King Charles and the is is charleston so they that was they they connection to get in and then from mm -hmm. there to kuwaita um they they came into kuwaita uh with the creeks down there and uh that's when the wars jumped off in 1811 uh okay. big uh big warrior was down there and um you had mcintosh on the other side yeah and that, that's what's gonna crank those wars up a lot even even then a lot of people moved into the alabama region some went to, went to the mountains some came down to louisiana arkansas arkansas was really high because that's where the cherokees arkansas and kentucky yep. yeah. Rick. yeah they really tried to go to arkansas but them tribes fought their ass out they went to louisiana end up catching the murder case they end up killing these niggas and so he had, they had to go back to uh tennessee to fight their case and once they left there, they came here to East Texas. And can, so, can I touch on that thirty seconds, Chief? Hey, and first off, this is blessed, man. This is this is what I fucking love. Okay, you can't get past the fact you said the village of Coweta. The village mm -hmm. of Coweta is an old village. It's a couple, at least a couple thousand years old. In modern times, that was originally Muscogee Creek land, Coweta. And and I want to say the eighteen to nine. I want to say the eighteen hundreds. The Cherokee took it. That's why it took so time. And I know you watched it, Dulce. That Cherokee bill took me a long time because the Cherokee came south kind of late in the game. The Cherokee came south, and they were still claiming territory at the time when the Carolinas and the Virginias were being formed. You had tribes like um the Ricka Hawkins and them that was still coming down from towards Lake Erie, coming down, joining the Anakitawa and the Chickamauga in them and taking that name Cherokee, right? So that's that's the tribal side of it, is that Coweta was always an area where, at that time, 16, 17, 1800s, that was not a settled area. That was Muscogee Creek and Cherokee. And then you look at the fact that when the settlers came in, they wanted that shit too. That's all I wanted to add to it. The South Carolina, and then you had the Goose Creek men coming in, the Moors from um, what's that shit? The fucking where where Rihanna's from, Bahamian, Barbados. Yeah, Barbados. Barbados. Yeah, like South Carolina has ve is very particular to South Carolina. In yeah. in seventeen thirty three, like what Chief just said was. South Carolina was also very Protestant. It was very Christian. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what they told the they told the Indians, they told the Africans, they told everybody, if you accept Christianity, you can mm -hmm. be free, but you got to get the fuck out of here. Okay. Well, well, Carolina was uh they were Protestant. It, it was open. You could be anything as long as you went 
Catholic. Exactly. So right, right. Now, what's what's interesting about that is King Charles the Second was Catholic. Now you had Spanish down in Florida. So that was was interesting. And so the Jacob Bikes is gonna play a major play in it, which is gonna have a connection from um Scotland to uh France, right? Because his mama is Henrietta Marie, which is also of the Medici family. We know these are niggas. Look up Catherine Dimitri, Lorenzo Dimitri, uh Alessandro Dimitri. Dimitri's was niggas. They are the niggas, they are the ones who gonna put the money up. They were bankers. They're gonna put the money up that and create the civil war in Europe, which is gonna cause uh, a large migration over here of indigenous servitude, things that they don't really talk about. But um you have the in, in 17 um 17 no, sixteen in the late in sixteen. I want to say it was sixteen six. No, after that was that was Bacon Rebellion sixteen sixty. So it had to be a couple of years after that. The the Westos moved down into what's called the West Stabo River, where they became the Westos on the West Stabo River, and it'll be called the Savannah River. Right, so that's those are this Erie corn branch that's gonna come from the Rick of Hogan's that's gonna connect with the Erie, the Shawnee, who's gonna come out of the Beaver Wars. These are gonna be uh people that's gonna go through the Beaver Wars and it's gonna transfer from the Beaver Wars coming down into Virginia. They're gonna overtake them nations down there. Like I said, the power ton got overtaken even by these people, right? They fought them, um, killed their chief. Um, you had an English nigga come in and and play Indian. You had um Kaka Kaka Kuchu, Kaka uh whatever her name was. She's gonna be mixed European lineage. Uh, she's gonna help out. They gonna down her, get her out. The, you, sh you should lose her her power after Bacon's Rebellion. Um, but um, you will have um. You'll have them come down into Savannah though in the West Coast. And these are Iroquois speaking people, you know, so they were a foreign language to the Muscogees down in that area. And that'll be early origins of that Cherokee line coming down to Cherokee, which being of the Iroquois stock. And that's how it's one of the markers we can find them. We could we can uh, follow them through the Sherrod, different names like that. Yeah, uh, the yeah Cherokee. Yeah, the Cherokee in in, in um in, in Tennessee will be different. Right. They're gonna be different than these people that's gonna come out of that era corn stock. Cause some it's of them the are, well the Chickamauga will be those that broke loose from the the uh the 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 Cherokee and went north mm -hmm. to North Georgia with the creeks uh okay, right, right. to fight against, yeah, because so after the meeting, you know, they go over the British, make their alliances with them or whatever. The Cherokees went down in North Georgia. Um, and that's how we see them in Atlanta and, and whatever. But these are going to be the people that's going to fight against this U.S. expansion. Um, and they'll later be involved in what they call the Pan-Indian. Um, the the Pan-Indian Pan -Indian Alliance. Yep. Yeah, the Pan-Indian okay. Alliance. Because yeah, the, technically, the, the, the Cherokee in Tennessee is the original Cherokee. Correct. Correct. And Annie mm -hmm. Kitawa and Annie, the people of Kitawa are the old settlers. Those right. are the yeah, ones that's Kitawa. been there for like 10,000 years. Right. right. So, the, the, um, the, but see, so what, what's going to happen is they're going to, again, because you had three, you had uh, three different branches. What's going to happen? just like all other nations once they when they go from multiple chiefs in the chiefdoms to mm -hmm. one one nigga running the show then right. you know they got them so we get turkey but a person that was real key and um he was he was mixed he was mixed race indian and irish um um his name was john i can't think of his last name um 
It's gonna come to me. His brother got killed with to come some brother in the raid. But uh, after that raid, he ended up signing the treaty, uh, hosting. His name will mm. come to me. Um, Scott or some shit. It'll come to me. Um, but he was, he ended up getting a lot of power. But because in that in this conflict that happened, a lot of the 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 figureheads, the the OGs, got killed in that raid in the little battle, and he survived. He was wounded, but he survived, and he ended up signing the treaty. And um, basically, that's when the power will see it turn over, and then we'll see Turkey end up taking over. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, in '71, after hosting uh, Bosnia, moved west, so they became the Western Cherokee. After uh, the the Treaty of a and they sent them niggas ass to Oklahoma. They agreed to go to Oklahoma. They made them. Uh, basically come together where they fought separately still you had the, the ridge and the Ross fraction fighting after mm-hmm. the Civil War, when they came to the treaty of 1866 then in order for them to receive whatever benefits from the u.s and for their um unloyalty breaking the treaty of hope will uh going into the confederacy um and coming back into the united states they um they made them niggas come together and Ross actually signed on that. Um, and he, he, he passed later. Some people say he didn't sign it. He was already did. Um, but whatever, but, um, we, uh, the Cherokee, we were supposed to get a different inheritance than what took place there. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, we, we supposed to got a different inheritance. Um, and it was the Cherokee had spread so wide at that time. I mean, Alabama, Georgia, Alabama, they weren't even from down there, but Georgia, Alabama, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, I mean, uh, Arkansas, Texas, Texas, especially then everybody coming out of East Texas was Cherokees. Uh, gonna tell you they Cherokee. So, uh, now nah, it started to spread, and that was because. Again, in 1794, they created their government right mm-hmm. after the, the, the U.S. Constitution. And so that's when they moved into Georgia, that branch. Now, you had the Chickamauga come down uh, around that Revolutionary War period. But now here comes this government of the Cherokee, and they wanted to take the old land of Mayan land because they knew where the gold, the gold and these um you know this was um ancestral territory and that's what uh ross and them fought so hard because remember the removal didn't come into 1829 when they found the gold down there right. guess who was sitting on, on the land the cherokees <laughs> on the key to yep <laughs> the on the was sitting on the land when they find the gold <laughs> the cherokee but guess what the cherokee just moved down there just got there and we in the greens because John Ross, that's why he was able to go to the Supreme Court and able to actually get that the the end of the removal overturned is what a lot of people don't know. So that's why they had to use muscle because his political ties through his dad and George Washington, right? Mm-hmm. Daddy, his daddy, he fucked with George Washington. He had a code name. Was the his code name was White Swan, so he was the Swan. And uh, can so remember the Washington, the Washington yeah. chief. Uh, Washington, so when he was Washington. Was Washington. Washington. Is the is the surname Washington an indigenous Indian name coming out of Virginia? I I wouldn't I wouldn't know what territory is coming out of, but it's a what I say is a indigenous name, yeah. All of the popular names here are really indigenous names and that they call European names. So All before, before 1600, do we see it? Do we if, see if, it showing up? If, if, if those people name was that, then they should be able to take us back to the grave sites back then and show us. Right, but you don't ever see any Caucasian people with the last name Washington either. They say that's an old nah, southern nah, joke. Johnson's or none of that. You know, right, right. Texas, yeah, most right? of the people is named after people. All that type of shit. Yeah. Man, I, I, here, I got pe- <laughs> they should be able to show us uh these they should be able to show us uh you know the cemetery now certain coats of arms and 
where these names come from, a lot of the times you'll see that they were spelled or pronounced a different way than a what you, way, you know right. what I'm saying? Well, how we talking now? And right. that's one of the number one um 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 identifiers. But I will say this here. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times you can trace those, especially in Jamaica. They mm-hmm. trace their lineage to Europe so easily because a lot of times those bloodlines are the same. It's the same people from then. You can, you can trace Ebonics too, just like we talk slang. Now, okay. hold on, hold on. Before you know that, that, I'm bro. talking about the blood. I'm, I'm going to get this. I'm going to say this one point. So uh, it's a nigga named Ladanius Thomas, right? Thomas and runner back, right? For the charges. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That nigga. He, his his story is I grew up on a slave plantation. So they did a joint where he met the white people that was, you know, he met a white boy and they the Tomlinsons and and they family say that they enslaved them. And they told him about his grandpa. Uh all the men in his family were influential and um 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 very important people in a um area in their community they were also were masons they were mm-hmm. builders and that nigga sat there and cried in front of that white boy and he didn't even know that nigga you here because you you are the tumblesons nigga that's right you feel yeah, me right, you, right, you, right, this right. white boy didn't come before you and the and that's why they, is, they ain't got the nothing bad to say about, about none of the people all the all the people the they ain't have nothing bad to say about, about them, and he didn't yeah, know that a, yeah. that that white boy should have been crying, right. and he's sitting here in the inferior place, nigga. And you got to grow up on your ancestral lands, nigga. You come hey, from you know, a powerful bloodline, and these true. white folks just got the inheritance. And I found mm-hmm. out a lot of our shirts they take back to Europe, man, like the name Neil. Which Nell, Nelly, that just means, bro, listen, amongst the Muskogee tribe, Nell mean dark. All right, check it, fam. All right, my seventh great grandfather, he had two, he had two names, right? Check it out. I'm finna rock, watch this shit. This shit gonna rock you, right? So the name, according to us, tribal history, Elias, Neil, Elias to them meant dark. This, the name Neil, or what you say it in Nell, like I got a cousin named Chanel. Nanel, Nanita. She like, bro. Uh, Homie named Neil. Bro, those pimp, those people come from the Southern Creek Muskogee. Neil just means dark skin. So the mm-hmm. trick they put on the crocker was boom. So he gave himself the same, the first and the last name. To them, Elias meant dark because that's the people they had been in with. But the name Neil, like I said, like we say, hey nigga. Now we be like, hey Neil, Neil. Neil means dark, but they say Neil. To try to hey Tom, it. Tom, Tom, say correction. Ross was not mixed, but educated by whites. That's not true, bro. What white people had education back then? And John they come Ross, on the boat all together. John Don't know Ross, about over here. John bro, Ross was mixed. <laughs> I'm finna show him something, right? John right, Ross. They didn't have a language. John Ross' dad name is Daniel Ross. Okay, mm-hmm. he's from. He's from mm-hmm. um, yep. Ireland, nigga. He came here as an indentured servant. I can pull up the ship manifest with him on there, how tall he is, his complexion, and he was listed as a dark-skinned person. All right, let me tell you that off the top. He married into a dude, a guy named James McDonald, who was a British agent, all right, who, who was in Tennessee, Stationed in Tennessee, he also came here under ditching serving nigga who out of the wars. They had, he had lost the wars in England, nigga, and was sent here. He lived amongst the Cherokee. All right, his wife was Cherokee. His daughter ended up ma- um, marrying to have a baby with Daniel. All right, Daniel had John Ross after the war. Uh, um, and the British end up losing losing that area. Uh, McDonald went down, and now he hung with the Chickamauga Indians. He went down and made a deal in Florida, in Spanish Florida, started hustling down there. When he did that, his son-in-law, which is Ross' daddy, Daniel, 
he made a deal. He went to Philadelphia and sat down and made a deal with Washington them and them niggas up there. And that's how his son ended up becoming chief for 40 right. years. That's, that's how he was able to go to uh Washington nigga and get uh the Indian Removal Act overturned for the Cherokee nigga. But his mm -hmm. army wasn't strong enough to hold them yeah. niggas out. And he was at war with um yeah. the, his underboss, which was Major General General Major Ridge, who was a killer. All right, and Ross was no killer. John, he was no killer. So he he had political ties and power, and he hung around us because you gotta understand his daddy was no white boy. That Wikipedia article say he he was a white boy with blue eyes. A motherfucking lie. I got we have the record on his father and his mama was a Cherokee Indian. So we know how she that was a nigga. I ain't no white boys around at this time. Ain't no white boys nowhere around at this time. No such thing as a white boy. And he did a lot of uh treaties like the Cherokees have the most treaties with the quote unquote US government. You know, at that time, do you think that's the time that they set up the play to hire and commission uh, Sequoia to write the Cherokee syllabary? Well, all of that because they came, needed like a change. They needed well, a trade language. The time when they moved, so the government came in '94, and mm -hmm. this is their allegiance with the U.S. So they're gonna go down here and act as, and operate as the Indian government because in the Constitution. They ought to retain the Indian. Uh, 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 um, they are the, the government is to retain a relationship with the Indians. So they created this five civilization government system to act as a the, you know uh, authority governing body with them. So if you want to talk to us, you got to go through them, and then they'll come holler at us, right? <laughs> so if you I don't give a fuck what tribe you from, you have to sign up to one of these tribes. And if you need any legal or any Indian type of shit, and that was the only thing that the U.S. was going to acknowledge, especially after they came in the statehood. And so uh, Sequoia and them, they came down there, they got comfortable. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, they went down there and got comfortable and had to move out a couple of years later. <laughs> yeah, they went down there and got comfortable. But uh, to be honest, though, that language that they said he wrote actually was an ancient language that was already there now that's a fact if, hey not once again well, that's not why to I cut you off celebrate. I'll let you work cause, uh, but if you look in the caves if you go down to Manitou Cave and if you literally you can go to these caves in the Carolinas the language is written in the caves so he definitively didn't come up with that shit yeah, because it was like, what were you speaking on? Nah, all the way up to I'll say this too, though. But I... <laughs> go ahead, sister. I was saying that makes sense because what were you speaking up to 1828? That's when the Cherokee Confederacy um, made that the language for everyone to learn. Right. Um, yeah, you know what I believe? You know, what I think and I see is that the Cherokee, right, the original one, like they coming out of the Midwest. And to me, that's that tribe that was, um, that's that amalgamation of people who have quite possibly come from um, the Shawnees that ruled that area, some of those Western, um, Eastern tribes that was caught in between that. Because when you look at the history, but they don't talk a lot about it, um, when you see how they begin to form and where the, 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 the people that follow, um, the, feet of, the people that follow, um cornstalk right those those oh, indians God. in that region that followed cornstalk and, and and sided with the delawares right, right who eventually um whatever lenape and was peaceful indians with the people you see those people but when you look at people like uh black blackfish god damn it uh or uh, or uh, or uh, or uh, or uh, 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 the other chiefs and shit, the mm -hmm. ones that was going down in kentucky crossing that Crossing that out, crossing that Ohio River, those are the people that I see through my genealogy. Those are the people that ended up either um, spreading out, crossing the Mississippi, 
going through um with with, with the um with the kicker pool and all that those people ended yep. up yeah but see, i'm gonna tell you that's cool. and the germans took them over i'll, I'll let you work it chief. that they gave them let's now touch called this kansas one. you feel me um the people that stayed true that was more southern those are the people i.e my people right that came down and said Fuck cherokee it, family. alabama that's the Go problem ahead, those was not cherokee yeah those went the cherokee watch this here i'm a Cause I'm, I'm not saying you. they were Cherokee. No, 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 I'm got saying that they, later go ahead, they go ahead, go ahead. Cherokee. I may be wrong. Go ahead, fam. No, no, later they became Shawnee. Definitely was an Iroquois branch, and were a part of what became the Cherokee. But um, one thing about the Shawnee what made them different because the Shawnee gonna go through a war, and after that war they gonna become another people. So I'm gonna, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say that, right? So you had right, Shawnee right, was right. at war with the Cherokee. For years. Years. What do Shawnee mean? southerners and what did they okay so now the cherokee not from the south right but right, the shawnee right. is from mississippi yeah shawnee yeah. is gonna have origins in mississippi so right. when they came back the southerners the ones that came back that's why they went to mississippi come you on man <laughs> society, hey chief chief my people Listen, bro, my daddy's side, right? My daddy got killed when he I was two, bro. And listen, the exact same thing what you're saying, bro, I, we could go across U.S. Highway 82 East, and I can trace that migration pattern and show how my people come from Montgomery and go into Mississippi. But the bulk of my people, just like you said, remember you said this a long time ago when I, I used to mention Sean, and you was like, what did it mean, Superior? I was like, Southerner. You was like, all right then, but you never went, you never went into it. See what I'm saying? So I took that nugget. I hey, said, well, mi- mi- hey, famo, I I know we Mississippi. Rickahawk means those who went south. The the Cherokee okay. that in the Cherokee that inhabit our ancestral homeland, they came south. Those were the people that got pushed down from Lake Erie from being at war during the beaver wars at one point the beaver wars right the fur trade right right but it it wasn't just the beaver wars see this is deep bro you got to go into the algonquin history the out let let me do this and and you know anybody know i'm a humble nigga bro i don't i don't be wanting to take nobody's panel bro but um the algonquins came from the west the algonquins came from the west like northwest like fucking Alaska. If you but follow, but the old Northwest though, hold on a sec though. The Northwest Territory I mean, I before the Northwest, yeah. Oh, I, I see. Right, it was it, right. Yeah, so what they yeah. considered West was not what became, became the Northwest. Right, right. Became, I can like, tell you why. I can tell you why y'all know this is because no, no. I'm, whole, I'm talking to Superior because he probably referencing the Northwest as in like top battle of tall timbers and shit. But at no, that I'm time, we got to remember Florida was was what the South then. Uh, yeah, yeah, Florida yeah, was, was the like, South, like North and South. Was, Florida was big, right? right. Yeah. So according to the others, the uh, West, uh, it, 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 West to them is the Ohio Valley. It kind of went all the way into like what, uh, not St. Louis, but uh, the Algonquins interacted with the Cahokians in the 1300s and the 1400s. To, to anybody that doesn't know, which right now what I'm talking about is the Illinois Confederation. I'm talking about Kaskakia. I'm Kaskakia, talking about Detroit. Tamaroa. I'm okay. talking about Cahokia. And the Algonquins tried to take it over and they couldn't because Cahokia was too powerful. So the Algonquins moved east and they pushed the Iroquois south. The hot and the shiny. Hot and the shiny. Once again, shiny. And they they pushed in particular, I, I don't know what they did, but it was something about them Lake Iroquois Indians that the other Hot and the Shiny didn't like. So the Hot and the Shiny actually joined with the Algonquins to push them Lake Erie Indians south. So yeah, we, yeah. Right. No, right. The Indian right. Indians uh, ancient. Yeah, they were ancient. Mound builders, the, that's that's yeah. Iroquois land. That's hot in the shiny land. 
Now, well, but yeah. it, 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 hold on, Iroquois Iroquois land, land, though. Iroquois at first. It wasn't always Iroquois land, though, fam. That, now, hold on, that, I'm going to say this here. The, the Iroquois ahead, conquered the Erie. They fought for two years. For two years, they, yeah. They yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so they the Erie fought against them niggas' ass. And that was really the Iroquois' oh, uh, toughest oh. challenge up until that time. But when they overtaking them, the Iroquois, when they overtaken, you become part of their tribe. Right, so right. Women, Morning wars. Yeah, Morning they women wars. will bring you in. The ones, right, the warriors right. that'll make it. They'll bring, right, once they come right. to you, you are a part of their nation now. Right, right. right. Women, you Iroquois now. And right. that's why they look alike now. Now, I know who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm talking to a Mississippi nigga. <laughs> so that, that's real. That means something to me. So nah, nah, like big facts, big big facts. Y'all you're big talking facts. about is the over the paddle. Cherokee, the Cherokee, yeah. and the overhill Cherokee have a lot in common with the Homa and the Sashima. Yeah. What I'm saying, and, and the Anikitawa are mountain Indians. The mm -hmm. the Anikitawa, the the Nikwasa, even the Okanichi. We're talking. Have the chief, I, I don't know if you've done it yet. Nobody talks about the Appalachian Indians. The, the Appalachians, Appala that, come on, man. The, the Appalachian on, man. Indians were the most the most powerful. Yeah, at that on, time. Man. Nobody talks about the Kusa. When you're talking about Georgia history and you're talking about Itaba, which became Itawa because the 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 Cherokee took it over and it became Itawa. That was Kusa territory. Nobody see. Yeah. That's why yeah. we kind of yeah. need to start talking about pre-colonialism. We need mm -hmm. to talk about the Appalachians. We need to talk about the Kusa. We need to talk about what was happening before the Europeans got here. Yeah, uh, but but then yeah, we the got to remember too, though. Uh, hey. got to remember too, though. That wasn't always North Carolina. All that was Virginia. All right. that all yeah, that territory yeah, was yeah, Virginia. Yeah. What up, what up, what up? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely correct. The Appalachians were uh were very, very important in American history. They do get overlooked. Mm -hmm. Uh so they were powerful that, how they built their fortresses. Uh mm -hmm. they were known uh for their for their military tactics, which was adopted by a lot of Southeast Indians and implemented into yes. the US. Only. Last name. <laughs> you want to yeah. acknowledge that. Let me yeah. tell you, they were some of the coldest ball players. Uh, yeah, baseball, right. what niggas call baseball today. Yeah. Appalachian games. Yeah. Nigga with the ball yeah. and the stick, the niggas down in Charleston. Uh, they call it a Gullah Geechee game. Try to say stop it with the African stick. Now watch this here, because you brought up uh, uh, the relationship with the niggas in Cahokia. The niggas down in, in uh, from um, central Mississippi, and they uh they came from there and went into Cahokia, from Cahokia down through the uh Appalachians into Ogmogi. All of them nations right there stretched them was a uh that was an empire. All of them was connected. Central Mississippi is very very important to the story to, to because the story. Yeah. yeah it's 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 it's, a, it's I don't want to get too much up. Man, but I just say Central right Mississippi now, I, I, <laughs> into the story, bro. It's, Family, uh, but, when, yeah, when I figured that shit out, everybody thought I lost they, my mind because everybody in my family thought I had lost my mind because it fucked my head up when I saw that shit, bro. Because they really got us thinking that we not the Indians. The book fucked us up. Being going to school fucked us up. Well, at least it did for me. No, that's real rap. But this is my question too. You know how a lot of people say we Blackfoot Cherokee, Blackfoot Creek. Which, yeah, my grandfather you know, Blackfoot. But when you look, mm. how we're taught is that the Black feet are out in Mant um, Montana. No, and he ain't Dakota right now. Yeah, yeah man, I got it. Yeah, they can't the Dakotas, Whatever. That's the Dakotas. That's that's actually Cahokia. What what yeah, you're yeah, talking yeah. about? You got to remember Cahokia and Kaskakia sat right on the Mississippi River. So when you talk yeah. about like me, literally me in particular, I have my great grandmother that's Blackfoot and Choctaw. And okay. I, I never knew it because you remember they also use Blackfoot as a derogatory term. They right. say right. the Blackfoot right. Indian is a mixed <laughs> Indian with a Negro. But the reality is the Blackfoots are from the north. And 
Okay, but once so they again, moved like east and they south. They came down through the, the rivers. Listen, Dulcy, I know who I'm talking to. I know you've watched at least two of my videos. Believe me when I tell you, when I tell you that the Indians use the rivers and the creeks as highways, I mean that shit. Up and down them rivers and creeks like niggas was on I-94 and 290. Yeah, because we was yeah. real niggas to the land. You feel what I'm saying? Nigga, we ain't using where y'all finna go. Y'all finna go through some trees and y'all y'all want to cut them down. No, we know how to jump yeah. on some, make some out of some, float down this motherfucker, get here real quick, go see my people. You know, oh, these niggas tripping. Exactly how top be saying it. Just put it in the hood way. It's still happening right now, except for now we using date commercial shit. Everything hey, is industrialized. And, 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 that's, that's what and, happens. And Sarah, I and, uh, still have Dr. a question. D. That, that Dr. shit D like D the black like, like, shit right? on the block. I, I yep. remember back in the uh People the Tuscaloosa, how they, they found out the soda and then was coming through there. They it was through the through the river system. Niggas passing by every day, bro. That was traffic, nigga. In I mean traffic. We you know what we can tell you what's you going down I over there. You know for if the, these niggas have a the over there. You, you know if they got it over, they got it for the low over there. You know if it's a plug, everybody moving around, bro. That was that was how information traveled the fastest through the water, through the stream. That's how you that's why they try water. to control that. That's the main yeah, thing that so, they, they yeah. try to take so, over that first. And so it's when niggas talk about the water and they talking about that being the word. You feel me? Uh man, uh nothing passed, nigga. Uh if a nigga wants to know what's going on in another country on another, he would have to cross the waters. The water's always been, you know what I'm saying, the number one way mm -hmm. goddamn me to get communication. But that's where you're gonna bump into some of everybody coming Come through. And yeah, you that, that, that's the town, basically. But watch them taxes. <laughs> watch the taxes. <laughs> Nah, that's real talk. Because if I gotta come, I gotta come see y'all. I'm gonna bring up on one of these riverways and come out at my nigga. Yeah, nah, y'all talking about that shit, Mississippi. That bro, that's how I found out me and Whirling Thunder were cousins, bro. It wasn't nothing about no school books, no none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that's how I found out, and he said he's like, bro, we family. Yeah, my last name Taylor. Genealogy, bro. We my last name Taylor. We all might be family. But I'm saying surprised, bro. It's about I know be a lot of us is related. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I know African story trumps the shit in real life. You know what I'm saying. We met through Top Cats. Whoever would have thought in their mind that I don't know this brother, he don't know me. Whoever would have thought that you understand what I'm saying? We didn't even be talking. Come on, bro. Yeah, you could. I had to slide on you. We ain't use the waterway. We use the YouTube way. You feel me? The airways, man. Now we in the air on they bitch. Oh. <laughs> we on the air now. Yeah. Yeah, nigga, we in the air on y'all bitch ass. Y'all trying to take the water care? We finna get the air in. TT, what's up with it, T Warren? Back to the wind talking channel. Yeah, TT. <laughs> TT. I think someone had a question, but I had a question. Every now and well, again, I sometime, sometime I'm gonna come fuck with the chief. Sometimes a question. Man. Yeah, well, I had I'm a drop question. Down from the panel, y'all, so someone else can come on. But peace and respect. I'll jump down. Thank you. Yeah, I'll yeah. jump down I'll too. I didn't even everybody know everybody stories too, man. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even know that uh, it was a limit. My bad. I'll we jump down too. Because I got to hear the corner, man. I got to get ready for the fight tonight. It's fight night. And I got to get a question up before you leave, Chief. White Black Jesus. Oh, uh, go to work tonight. Hey, Chief, when you hit Texas, man, tap in on the channel, man. Go on the real. I'll be out there too, man. We we wiggling out here. In the real way, in the real Indian. Big old Indian business, bro. You already know. And I love everybody on the panel. Love everybody to the chat. You know what I'm sure. saying? Tell these niggas stop disrespecting the heritage, man. Hey, we gonna make we gonna step on them. That way. That was it. What you what you forgot? You left your keys? No, no. It just knocked me down. Oh, yeah, yeah. You got your, okay. So you got your phone and everything. You got your purse and shit. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to go get my keys. Yeah, I'm going to go get my keys. Yeah, I'm going to go get my keys. Yeah, I'm going Oh, uh, uh, what's your name? Um, um, uh, um, damn, what's the homie name with the cloud and shit? 
All right, uh, we got uh, who is that? Papa Naga. Yo, what up, Chief? What's up with you, fam? Where you calling from? Philly, the Jaguar God. I, I good to talk to you, man. Well, go <laughs> turn up. <laughs> Hey, I'm, with... hey, I'm, I'm chilling, man. Get ready for this fight tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I finally got to catch one of your lives, man. I wish I would have caught you up in Philly every time I go downtown. I, I think about you. You was in the wrong spots. There's a couple spots I would love to take you to. What's the name of just in case I'm out there? Well, you got Fifth Street, which is the uh, the subway. It's the pictures down there. It's a black Indian down there with a, a suit on. Uh, Can you take some pictures. Uh, send me some videos and shit. All right, I got you. Yeah, yeah. it's a couple. It's a couple places. Uh, city Hall on top of the uh, City Hall. You got Indians all on top of there. So I think I passed by City Hall. I think I did. I shot. Yeah. Up. Huh. If you if you if you look up, there's Indians up there. So so them little uh joints that was I'm cause I was standing shit just fucked me up. It was like a uh but you know what I, I said I say man I feel like I'm gonna be here at Christmas when I was going <laughs> Bro, it, I just seen Christmas lights and everything, and I say man, this shit, I bet this this they cheating like for Christmas, bro. Like yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. Down there, they they have it all lit up down there. It'd be real litty down I, there. I ain't never seen the picture of it or nothing, but I seen it when I was. I said, man, I fuck around and be here yeah. around Christmas time for some reason. But uh, yeah, I could I could take you all up in the uh the boulevard. We got creeks and everything named after Indiana. I'm from I'm from Houston, Texas, bro. You got yeah, I know, I know, bro. I ain't never seen no shit like that in my life. Well. You hear me, man? I ain't never seen <laughs> like in my life, bro. That shit. You talking about a culture shot, nigga? I was fucked up. Yeah, I, mean, I was. I was, I was watching I, you. Yeah, trees, different, everything, man. Like, <laughs> man, I was, no, we... I was fucked up, and then I fucked around and went to Mexico City, bro. I fell asleep on the goddamn tour bus, and I woke up, nigga, and I felt I was in a whole different world, nigga. And all Where? I could think about was when I was in Philly. Yeah, yeah, and I seen the video Philly. when you was out. Uh, what was that? Fame, like, bro, that shit felt like a dream, man. Like a nigga was like that shit didn't even happen. Yeah, like, went back in the time machine type of shit, and I'm just walking around that bitch, and I'm like, this the same feeling I had when I was. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I seen all the, the, the I watch you every day, bro. I, I I get up and make it my business to watch you, man. Me and my wife be in here tripping. Yeah, yeah, turn up. <laughs> you yeah, should have you, yeah, man, you should have your own radio show, show man. I don't eat Philly cheesesteaks and shit. Yeah, I was so soul food out there, man. I oh, was, oh, it's a couple spots I could have took you to. It's a joint around the corner from me, Jamaican joint that I eat at all the time. Food. I ain't gonna lie, I don't, I don't want the rice and peas. I want beans and all right. rice. Oh, yeah, all right, all right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a um, if you go on Instagram, it's called Country Cooking. She's from Philly. Oh, she, yeah, she was, you know yeah, what? she well I, known. Yeah, yeah, I follow. She'd be like, call me back. No, I call you. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I said, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Up. She down, she she down the earth too, man. She a lot of That's an Indian, bro. She got yeah. some in her, but that's an Indian. That she's <laughs> like, she about, bro. Nah, Word. she had a soul, her spirit, like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like a motherfucker. I, yeah, I go eat over there. But but since I'm on the line with you, I, I share a lot of your stuff on my my TikTok. And it, 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 I usually put Jaguar guard up on there, so I, I just want to make sure it was cool to share yeah, a lot of your information. I love, man. Yeah, just let them know. Come over here. Let them know where we at. You yeah. Know, um, you know, let them know where they can come find the show with this shit, man. We get more people, man. We want to shit. We want to throw a big trip out there, man. I ain't gonna lie. They showed a lot of love when I went out there, to DC. Oh, uh, yeah. Philadelphia went crazy. Them niggas was like, oh, <laughs> wait. I, yeah, said, I seen the video. I was mad. I was like, damn, I wish I would have known. Talented like that. They act like, boy, yeah, them nigga, man. Oh, man, Philly was the most. I got the most inboxes on Philly, bro. They were like, nigga, where you at? I'm on the way. 
Moors and all type of shit. Nigga, what yeah, you yeah, we got the cowboys out here, all in West Philly. I, I seen you with cowboys. Yeah, you seen that little clip? Yeah, yeah, I was watching it. My cows and cowboy, fuck me up. That, that's why I was like, damn, I wish I would have known. I would have took you to the other side of Philly. That that's downtown. You need to come to the hood. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I was. I hit a few corners. Uh, yeah, I was on the go that day, man, like a motherfucker, man. And uh, but I definitely can see us doing something in Philly in the future. Yeah, you, know? you got uh, got to go down to like uh, Wissahickon, like all these is like creeks and and, and rivers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, what I want to go to Allentown. You know what is it? Oh, Allentown. There's a lot of Mexican, Puerto Ricans out there. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's, 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 yeah, so, it's hood, hood out there. Like, like for the U.S. and them niggas going into their uh, um, um, decoration and independence in that era where them niggas was figuring out how they wanted to run their own play, at the time popping, that was all niggas out there, man. They didn't, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, a lot of uh. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of Mexicans and there, man. If you go yeah. back to the 1700s, nigga. That was a Mecca, nigga. That's where all the hoes at. Yeah, you know the. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, in the night, in the nineties, yeah, we was going out there on a different level in the nineties. You know that was that was okay, a. So much, it much, used to be. It used to be a different coach in the nineties. Yeah, that was a money grab out there. <laughs> yeah, in the real way. But I had a question. I, I yeah. had a question. Um, cause I, I've been doing my uh genealogy and I hit a wall. We can't find my uh the mother of my one of my great 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 aunts, which is the bloodline that we come from. She had twelve children. But on the certificate, it, it, it has the mother unknown. We had a dad. He was full-blooded Cherokee. That's what it said on the census. Yeah. But the mother, it says unknown. So we try to figure out, like, was she adopted or, you know what I mean? Um, we, have, we have no record. Um, so, so when you went through that, just sometimes it's an, uh, when you, that's what. I, that's w one of the things the genealogy look you look through the siblings too so try that out so a lot of times i know we'll get stuck on following our um you know what i'm saying our our direct lines you know okay. our mother and father and their mother and father but then they be having siblings <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we gotta look at their siblings too you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? put everybody on yeah we they now, now I, I have all i have all them I have all the children, okay. but the last two left is the uh, Lawrence and the Arizonas, and I, I come from the uh, the Arizonas. Yeah. So how? Uh, so um, do her siblings? Do they have any? Um, can you find any senses earlier on them? Maybe they was in the household together. At uh, now the further we, we we got back to what was it eighteen seventy two. No, no, no. I'm just saying before. Uh, so, so the last census that you find on, but it say unknown, right? Yeah. So yeah, that was that that that. Um, have you looked up? You say you found their their siblings, but they're coming up unknown. No, the all the siblings come from. Uh, her name was Jane. Okay, so so, so Miss Janie had kids. Who who coming up unknown? Her mom. So Janie's mom coming up on now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh so we we trying to find name. out yeah, we trying to find probably, out where the mother we, come from. She, uh did did you find any like marriage records? Did she like sometimes they get married and their they name will change and oh, okay. the whole thing out because the other census got them listed as you know what I'm saying, the the uh the original name, you okay. know. Uh, Sometimes it it'll be the, in that situation, um. But so I so I would have to look um again <laughs> look through your your siblings, I okay. mean through through, oh, through, the, through her siblings, and see if they can if you can find records on them. Maybe the oldest one 
you know, was born and the grandparent was still alive and, you know, maybe they stayed in the house and that was here the household and you could find them and maybe a, a, a one or two year old, three year old on there and, you know, different yeah. ways like, yeah. Yeah, so we was reaching out and mostly everybody was saying she never spoke about the mother and like it was starting getting weird. Though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, probably, probably some trauma back then. Probably got separated. Oh. Uh, yeah, probably, that's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Shit, but yeah. yeah. Now, what? What? Uh. Now they was from uh Shelby, North Carolina, and um, she retired. Hey, she retired. Uh, and, 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 came out of Shelby. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then they she she re, she passed in uh what's that uh Winston Salem North Carolina she used to work for the tobacco factory areas my family was around yeah, yeah she worked there for the uh what's that Reynard's Tobacco Company yeah see this was back in the seventeen hundreds okay my family's back there yeah yeah that's the eighteen. But yeah, I, I appreciate uh talking to you, man. I, like I said, I watch you out there. I learned a lot from you, brother. Man, appreciate it, man. In a real way, you see. Hopefully, I come but the up next next time like, you come to Philly, bro. I'm in Philly type of shit. Go on tour. Oh, um, if you if you want to do that, uh, go on Instagram, look up uh Black and Nobel. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm, yeah. I know Black and Noble. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. He 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 a good brother to get with for his like book signings and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah his name his name we call him Hot. That'd be, that'd be Hot yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right on South Street, Fourth and South. Yeah, I remember all the lectures they used to do all the lectures up there. Um, yeah, I, I grew up off of one of Umar classics that that really the one that made him turn up when he got to talk about. Barry and you know what I'm saying Obama shit. Uh, he did that with that Black and Noble and um, you know? yeah, uh, uh, Bobby Hemet been down there, yeah. like like Black and Noble. Is everybody well known, been down man. There, you know what yeah, saying? yeah, the rappers, everybody been in there. Yeah, that'll be a good. Yeah, one. I, yeah, I grew up in that. You know? In mind, you know what I'm saying. I'm keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, you got it's a uh, uh what's that in the Shamity Mall is a big Indian statue in there. And that's in the northeast part of Philly. Yeah, that's a bad um uh, man. I'm gonna go jump out here to corner and um Oh uh, yeah, do your thing, bro. Again, I appreciate it, Jaguar God. And uh I'm gonna keep listening to you, bro. And uh it, uh one more question. Uh, genealogy, do do you help with that, or do you have somebody that help with that? For yeah, like yeah, we have taking... genealogists. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. not necessarily, you know, what I'm saying I don't do genealogy, but we have people that do. So, uh, okay. website. So do I, I go on the web? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cheap, you know, kind of shit. Um, no, I, I I was up on there. I checked out a couple of things. I, I wish I could make it to that Mexico job. Man, that'd be live, nah, bro. I want to yeah. get people as we can, bro. People don't understand how important it is. And I mm. just be talking about like a, like we got a window. Like I, I was out there, but I was in uh, Los Cabos. I was on the, like on the far side of it. Which side I, you in the Los Cabos? Uh, uh, that's like the, that was like the bottom. Uh, which, which side you was on though? That's the bottom. That's like more like with a uh, resort. Yeah, yeah. Stuff I'm there. saying when you was out there, we we saw you know it's two sides of those Cabos. We saw. Oh, okay. Uh, what side was that? I don't even remember. Oh, I don't know that. That. You get in the, the water. water yeah, yeah. I was near the right. water. You was you was down there by the marina and all that. Then. Okay. No, I'm not I'm asking. Uh, you stayed down by like the marina. I was in the uh resort. It was like a uh what they call like the it's, little what was the name? Like a private, it was like a private resort. Okay, you probably was in um, But I was like I was like with so the water. You know the beach at then they had Yeah, uh, yeah, the beach they got the beach parties and, and the volleyball now, now, games and all that out there. Yeah. Strip of hotels go down. And then they have like um 
See, you probably was in, in um, I can't think of the, the, the other side. It's two different sides. So you come in, they got the rejoice. Most of the time, you can't get in that water because the waves or something like that. Huh? One yeah, side, you be surfing on this shit. And uh, and then you go down in the in uh, a little deeper. Yeah. I can't think of the name of it. Right, right. But yeah, that's what right. probably in the bathroom. Yo, what, what part of uh Los Cabos we was at? She don't remember. Yeah, that's I can't remember. She, yeah. you know. What I'm but but I know when I was walk walking along the beach, the further we went down, I did bump into like they start getting into like a park and all this stuff. But we was like way in the bottom of it. And yeah, it, it yeah, took exactly. a minute. We yeah, we was away from everybody. Yeah, we went to like the little the little island on the little cruise to go see the yeah little, yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I wrote that little. It was little, nice though. It was they nice. took it out, but it was cold. It was cold because it started raining on us. But I got my little picture. I got my little picture by the little rock, the little lovers' rock. So you know, usually they will park, let you chill and shit, and it'd be like, yeah, yeah. Or uh, it, it rained that day, or the waves was too high, or some shit like this. So we had mm -hmm. we just rode out there, ate, you know, you eat on the little boat and shit, and then they take oh, okay. you, bring you back. Little glass bottom joints and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see the fish and shit. Yeah. Hey, you know what was interesting about that though? Uh, the dude, the guy who was who was the driver, he said that they filmed the movie Troy. You seen that movie Troy? Yeah, yeah. The uh, yeah, Roman type it. joint. Yeah. He said, "Hey, okay, so on the point with that they, Brad Pitt." Yeah, with Brad Pitt when they they stormed yeah. in with the horse and shit. Yeah, yeah. Shot right there in Los Cabos. All over a girl. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, staying at the beach. And then, yeah, they said it was, it was, uh, that's where they shot that movie right there in Los Cabos. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. That's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, I, I do want to get to Mexico City, man. Mexico City? I don't know, man. That's going to be a hard trip for us to make, bro. I'm man. telling you, it's a different world. Man, Cancun. Where, where, where the, now, what's we the next one you're going to? Now, we're going to go to Cancun. Cancun? Oh, y'all trying to party. <laughs> yeah, I, I know my way real you well. to turn up. Mexico City. Woo! That's a different beast. That bitch oh, right. Yeah, tell you trying to turn up. Bro. That's a whole yeah. world by itself, bro. That's that's That bitch too big. And, and then... You'll see, come on a trip with us. You'll see these niggas like to walk off without telling nobody where they going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, yeah. we be used to that, man. We got to all be moving as one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was, yeah I'm, I'm one of them dudes. I be the same. I was like, the, when I went to Tijuana. You ever been to Tijuana? Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, nah. Oh, yeah. That, that shit is like Beirut, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna let you go ahead and do what you gotta do, God. I'm gonna uh for sure, for sure. appreciate you coming. Ahead. Oh, no problem. All right, so I'll shout out to everybody that pulled up came to rock out. Man, we are going to Mexico in July, bro. We going to Mexico in July, man. Y'all gotta pull up, come fuck with us, man. Y'all gotta pull up and come fuck with us, man. We're going to Mexico in July. So, so y'all pull up. We gonna thug it, Mexico, twenty twenty four. Let's start playing, bro. It's a lot of people, bro. Man, listen, ain't we? Is nobody else to debate? We ain't gotta debate nobody. We ain't gotta do none of that other shit, bro. We just gotta do us. After I finish this, make it up Native American for anyway, bro. Let me tell you something. Uh man, ain't nothing to talk about, it, bro. And uh when it come down to any of the other conversations, see, a nigga can't come to me and and tell me that the Aztec what niggas. You can't tell me that because I've been the Aztec land. You can't tell me that the Totec when niggas I've been there. You can't tell me that the mines when niggas I've been there. Fuck is you talking to you can't you can't talk to me like that, nigga. Watch your fucking mouth, little nigga. So, 
we ain't debate. We ain't got to debate none of these niggas no more, man. These niggas don't know what they talking about. What we can do is goddamn me live like our ancestors live, man. We 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 finna pop out 2024, man. Listen, we gonna be on the beach side. So we went last time, we was landlocked. This time it's gonna be wide open. I see. Whoo! I see some. Listen, what happens in Mexico stay in Mexico. We don't sign NDAs and no shit like that. And we ain't going out here on no reality TV type of shit either. You know what I'm saying? Um, but um, uh, we know how to have fun, man. Uh, that's all I'm say, man. Uh, come pull up, bro. Once in a lifetime thing. That's how you gotta look at it. Once in a lifetime, bro. 2024. Let's get them. Let's stick it to these motherfuckers, man. Let's show. Let's show the whole world, bro. Listen. Let's show, let's show these motherfuckers. Every time I'm down there, bro, I'll be looking around and you'll see motherfucking niggas, Chinese and shit. They deep. I'm telling you, bro, I went to Tulum, man. I recorded it. I showed y'all, man. I'm talking about, and they all had on orange shirts and you could see that line of orange, man. It was, bro, they were so deep. And I said, man, wow, people came. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you got fucking niggas coming all the way from Nigeria, bro. And they uh, nigga, they ain't making no excuse. They ticket way higher than yours, nigga. Nigga, uh, Nigeria, this nigga coming out the village. This nigga, nigga, I'm going. If y'all going on that day, I'm going. But, man, we got to stop acting like we just got all this time, bro. And let's just fucking do it. Like, it ain't, it ain't hard. All we got to do is do it. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, let's stick it to the motherfuckers this year, bro. If we don't do none of the other ones, bro, I, I really would like to see like all of it, you know, everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know, promote. You feel me? And it ain't even like a um, you know what I'm saying? For the you know what I'm saying, like on some nigga, if you really about this shit you know what i'm saying because everybody got a little revolutionary in a message you know what i'm saying uh, you know everybody um you know whether they conscious of it or not um owe the people a form of solution um and they have a responsibility to want what's best for the people. Um, I think it's a power move. It's a sign. It's a statement. It's a statement. And, you know, and let me tell you the, the, the upgrade let me tell you the connection to the ancestors, nigga. Man, I don't have to listen, bro. I can't explain it. I, I'm, a, I'm. Let me, let me chill because I can't explain it, nigga. I walk, nigga. This year I learned how to walk pyramids. I, I didn't been there. I didn't walk a few of them all this year, nigga. So I'm, I'm, I'm real confident. And, and, and you know what's so cold? Wow. Um, while I'm walking the whole nigga, I'm feeling like I can't, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, people climb them. People climb, literally like get on their knees and hands and then you got to go because, you know what I'm saying? You really can't miss a step. Nigga, I'm running up them hoes, nigga, like Rocky. Yeah, nigga, I'll, yeah, I'll praise to the ancestors, homie, because, nigga, I'm, I'm here, nigga, I'm back type of shit nigga i do this type of shit nigga yeah so man no type of feeling man i got up there bro dropped the tip man for the game you feel me like you know um like it's real bro that connection homie that when you get that that stamp man from the ancestors man you know um keep it real with you homie i'm i call my grandma 
and I'm on the phone. I'm asking her questions. Like, I want to ask you some, you know, questions about your family. Uh, she said, okay, come see me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nigga don't want to talk, bro. Don't You know what I'm saying? I don't want no fake love. You feel me? So the ancestors feel the same. You know, a lot of the lot of y'all, a lot of people teach about it. You know what I'm saying? Man, come fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? You using me, you sourcing me and shit, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you sourcing me and all that, man. If you mean that much to come fuck with me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Come fuck with me. And oh uh, nah, man, we gotta get back in in, in connection. Mawani. Mawani. Yo. Where you calling from? I'm calling from uh Baton Rouge. I'm from Vegas though. Okay, okay. Uh what what have you got? A baby mama out there and they got some of that Louisiana. <laughs> oh yeah. Nah, got bro. Okay. Nah, bro. I, uh, I go to LSU. I play basketball for LSU. Oh, yeah. You starting? I used to, but not no more. What you got? The smoking weed and fucking up, huh? Take nah. <laughs> Doug, you, nah, you showing up late. You on your uh, Kamani McClain shit, huh? You don't want to come to practice. Nah, bro. We had, <laughs> we had a culture change. And then yeah. I had to deal with some, some extra stuff. But I did the best. But I you maintain it though, huh? Yeah, for sure. Okay, for sure. okay, that's what I want to hear. But I ain't, worried about that shit. I, ain't, I ain't worried about that shit. I just, I was on here because I don't know. I just like, I like what you do, bro. You inspire me, bro. For real, for real. Appreciate you. I, Appreciate you, homie. I'm from Vegas, but like the way I kind of came to LSU is like my ancestors brought me out here so oh yeah you ain't out there for nothing oh you better nah, believe yeah, no. you, know, you back at home yeah nah you back at home and you know uh uh nigga ball that's our we we created this shit you know what I'm saying nigga we the rubber bro people. I went to I went to uh I went to Mexico last year by myself after the season after the season was over I seen what what's it called? What's that shit called like handball. I don't know what. It's okay, called, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, the ball game. Uh, they just called it the rubber game. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh -huh. we, we just called it the rubber game. And it's crazy because when I got out there, bro, I landed and I, I walked off the plane. Them niggas talking about welcome home and shit. I ain't know what they was talking about, but just like, just after finding out so much stuff this past year, them niggas not bullshitting like. They was not lying. Hello? Yeah, my bad. My daughter called me. <laughs> yeah, um, now, now, uh, and you know, that's a, uh, you know, um, LSU got the, the, uh, Y'all got the mound out there. The LSU yeah, mound. I'm already knowing. They right, yeah, they right there by where I stay. So, so, uh, how do do the people there know about it? Or you be like putting them on game? Like, man, do y'all know this is? You, you feel me? That this is our people. Them from here. Do y'all know we the we the people that built this shit? Some people do. Like, it, it's a mix. Like. Cause I'm an athlete, so I, I be in the athlete world. So like a lot, yeah. a lot of these niggas don't be worried about that shit. They just like, yeah, yeah, they chasing white hoes. But Louisiana <laughs> got them white hoes. Though. <laughs> Man, you probably got you one of them. Look, that nigga, that, yeah, hey nigga, oh. I know, nice. nigga, I know, nigga. We had the uh, Mardi Gras nigga uh, last year. Geechee gonna turn around and tell me, damn, all these white hoes fine. These <laughs> find the white hoes. I, them hoes finer than Texas white hoes. I say that. Yeah. Now, nah, what y'all feeding them? Alligator and catfish and shit out there, man. <laughs> Crawfish. Yeah, them hoes. Them. Dig. But nah, anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> nah, nah, but uh, what, what, uh, where, where, where your uh, family from? Y'all migrated to the West. You say you from Vegas. Did y'all come okay, from so the South? My on my daddy's side, 
he was born in Vegas, but all his siblings was born in Baton Rouge. Oh, so, oh, okay. So my my grand my great 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 grandfather, I could trace it all the way back to there in Spillman, Louisiana. It's kind of like 15 minutes north of St. Francisville. Uh, it's this cemetery called Minor Town Cemetery, and it's miners there that's buried, and Wilkinson's that's buried. And this this is it is land up there, and my it's my great 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 grandfather's land, and all my ancestors like. Did you know this? But was this a part of your decision on going down there to? to yeah, nah. Then so nah. so did you know before going? I knew like like I went to the land, and I knew it was up there. But like I wasn't I wasn't worried about that shit when I made my decision to come to LSU. I was a seventeen year old kid, like. And you nah. balling, balling. Yeah, yeah. LSU a good program, man. Oh, so you know Angel Reese, then nigga, huh? <laughs> nah, not for real. Nah, but you seen it though, huh? Yeah, I'll be seeing it in real life. You know these niggas out here jacking <laughs> off to the TV life. screen. Yeah, these niggas out here beating beating on their dick to the TV screen. These nah, niggas yeah. jacking out. This young nigga seen Angel Reese in real life, nigga. <laughs> yeah, y'all can only imagine what that ass look like in real life. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucked up about this nigga seen Angel Reese, nigga. Oh uh, yeah, but oh uh, <laughs> now nah, what uh uh football so uh you were there when chasing them with there uh nah that was the year uh before okay okay but, but y'all got a cold ass program though and y'all fans based off the off the chain out there though oh uh, nah, yeah was it a culture shock coming down there coming from Vegas uh Kind of, but not for real, because, like, all my family, like, I ain't really have no friends. I just have my teammates because I when I play sports. But other than that, I was around my family. So, like, I ain't really – the only thing that I had to adjust to was, like, the fact that Vegas is a 24-hour city. And you, like – Yeah, and it get quiet in the country, nigga. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear the, the goddamn uh, uh, crickets outside and the frogs. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Yeah. But it wasn't really that bad. I'm I'm happy as hell I made the decision I did. I, I like it better out here. Too. So what what you think you learned out of the, you know what I'm saying, so far? You know what I'm saying? Seeing, like you said, you was a 17-year-old kid, and uh, you got there from, from, from that time being there. Like, you think you, you, you learned a lot. It changed, you know. Uh, you see shit different now. Oh hell yeah! Uh, I think it taught me that nothing happens for no reason. Like a coincidence is not a thing. Uh, that shit coming out here helped me find God. So that's that's the one thing I learned coming out here. I feel like it's kind of like a a starting part of my journey. Yeah. Um. Like you said, ain't no coincidence. And then not only that, you back home. Not only that, you get to represent home. You feel me at home. So, so nah, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, nah, nah. Uh, you there for a reason. And nigga, uh, nah, man, you, you really work hard. And in the line, man, bro, you gonna go to the league. It, I mean, your situation is made up, homie. How you, man, ain't nobody gonna get it that good, bro. And you back home, like ancestral, nigga. That shit, y'all probably been there so long and meant so much to the infrastructure, you know what I'm saying? And then you back in representation of it, you know what I'm saying? So every time you go out there, man, you gotta really feel like, nigga, you protecting the home, nigga. Yo, you got, yeah, you from the dirt. You know what I'm saying? My people buried in this ground, nigga. Y'all coming here, yeah, bro. and them niggas yeah. were ballers out there, man. You know the culture for us balling out there. That shit, they take that to heart. They call that shit a religion in Texas, Louisiana. They say them Florida niggas better than us, man. Them niggas, them niggas can't fuck with us, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they ain't got nobody but the uh, nah. Them niggas cold, but uh, nah, nah. Uh, stay focused though, um, homie, man. 
Uh, keep it in the end, man. Know who you are, bro. That's where your power and your strength gonna come from, bro. Your ancestors ride down there to where they at. You know what I'm saying? And go tap in, man. The grave sites and all that. You know, go pay your respects and you know, uh, let them know that uh, you know, they brought you here, homie. You chosen, nigga. Niggas like that, niggas. We don't get to make it to them we don't get them situations not everybody you feel me so definitely take advantage of yours you know what i'm saying and and, and, and go out there and, and give honor to the ancestors because you know they they put a call in for you you know they seen something in you little homie yeah they put a call in for you man bring them home you feel me and uh so when you step out there they with you yeah you got the teammates you ain't have no friend but nigga, you had your fan they was there with you too you feel me? Everywhere we went on all these trips, nigga, the ancestors showed us some type of sign that they was there with us. You feel me? So you got that protection around you. Yeah, man. And uh, and they guiding you too because, see, like you say, you ain't put no thought in it. You ain't look at it like that. But they had a plan for you. You feel me? And so... But to, to be honest with you, to, to, like, it, it, to make it even crazier, bro, I came out to Baton Rouge when I was in the seventh grade, bro. I was playing football. I, I ain't even, wasn't really playing basketball for real. I was out here visiting my grandfather with my dad. And we had a – we came to a Saints game. And then we were visiting my grandpa. We was in BR. We drove to New Orleans. And we drove past LSU campus. And I told my dad, I was like, Dad, wouldn't it be crazy if I got an offer from LSU? But, like, I wasn't even talking about basketball, bro. I was talking about football. Yeah. But just still, just, like, all that shit transpired is just crazy. Nah, you, you were chosen, homie. Uh, shit. Yeah, you, 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 you're a powerful uh, individual, man. And, um, and, and shit, like you say, this shit here is... is you know the the ancestors put a call in bro they feel like you the one so you got to bring them home and you got to understand uh family first that importance and that's where your strength gonna come from so man get into your genealogy little homie get it stay in them books stay focused stay on top of it take advantage of this opportunity bro and represent your bloodline that name on the back of that jersey Nigga, because nigga, y'all that y'all blood in that dirt. You feel me? Y'all sweat in that dirt. Nigga, that's your home in the real Indian way. Appreciate you, little homie. For sure. I love, bro. In the real way. All right, shout out to y'all pulled up, man. They say the boss on. I gotta get up out of here, man. I gotta hear the corner, man, and hear up and get back. I'm really ain't tripping on the under the cards. I don't know. I don't know them niggas. I just I want to see Black Jesus, Devin Haney go to work. He's up there and he's stuck there, man. Long got each other, we don't need nobody else, man. Big old Indian BCU shit. There go, there go. Usually my ex is enemies. Yeah. But this is good for him. Top 10 mistakes that I see beginner videographers making. Number one is using the wrong camera settings, not knowing how to properly. Cause feeling got closer now that you ain't been me. All that love that we had. Ain't no way we gon' forget that. In your family. Love me like a family. You know where you stand with me. So when they ask, yeah, tell them. Right one. Right one. Yo, yo. Yeah, yeah. You always been a real one, even though we ain't together. It was real love, and maybe it's still Let's love. Let's go. I hate that we make it to forever. And yeah, what? Probably ain't getting back together. But that don't mean that I can't show better. Yeah. Getting good, good, but we still love. Let's go. Let's go. Turn your bitch up, bro. Let's go. All these streets can't cross it. Cross it. All these streets need bosses. Cross it. Turn your click up, bro. Let's go. Turn your bitch up, bro. Let's go. We still going down the 